Are you always on social media, scrolling through your feeds for hours? If you enjoy spending time on social media, then you might want to consider a career in social media marketing. Social media marketing has become an essential part of modern day marketing strategies. With the increasing competition in the online space, businesses need to leverage social media platforms to build brand awareness, engage with their target audience and drive conversions. This has led to a surge in demand of social media marketing professionals. Social media marketing jobs include strategists, analysts, managers and advertisers. Some of the top hiring companies of social media marketing include Accenture, Amazon, Dell and Freelancer.com, etc. Salaries in the field of social media marketing are a promising with an average salary of social media manager being 50,000 per year and social media advertising specialist at 60,000 per year. So, if you have an excellent communication skills and enjoy working on social media platforms and are passionate about marketing, then a career in social media marketing could be the perfect fit for you. So why not turn your love into social media into a fulfilling and rewarding career? Check out Simply Learn's postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. With this program, you will learn everything from fundamentals of digital marketing to the latest trends and techniques used by top marketers worldwide. You will explore SEO, SEM, content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing and more. This program has, is led by industry experts who bring their real world experience to the classroom, giving you an insider's perspective on what it takes to succeed in the digital marketing world. So if you are looking to jumpstart your career in digital marketing or take your skills to the next level, then Simply Earn's postgraduate program in digital marketing is the perfect place to start. To learn more about this course, you can click the link in the description box below. Now, let's check out what we have in store for you for this social media marketing bootcamp. We will start this video with a 5-minute segment introducing you to social media marketing. Then we will discuss exactly what social media marketing is. Following that, we will learn how to create and grow YouTube channel. Following that, we will learn to execute SEO operations on YouTube. Then we will go in depth on how to work with YouTube ads. Then we will dive into a discussion on how to increase Instagram follower and how to create Instagram ads. After that, we will check out some strategies and tips to Instagram marketing. Post that, we will explore digital marketing through Facebook. Later on, we will check out Facebook ads and how to create them. Finally, we will wrap up this social media marketing full course with some tips and tricks on social media marketing. But before we begin, let's check out what one of our learners has to say about our courses. They say virtually nothing is impossible in this world if we put our mind towards it and maintain a positive attitude. Well, I focused on my passion of becoming a digital marketer and with the help of Simply Learn, I was even able to crack a job with 30% hike in my salary. Hi, I'm Karthik Srinivas, currently living in Bangalore and working as a key account manager at Green Honchos. I was working as a BPO executive for almost two years after my graduation and uh, during the lockdown one of my friend introduced me to digital marketing and after that I got really interested towards it. I learned basic digital marketing courses online then I joined a mid-sized digital marketing agency in Coimbatore as an intern and after eventually completing my intern I learned to run ads and I was promoted as a performance marketing executive in the same agency but I felt that like I lack knowledge somewhere the knowledge that I had was like bits and pieces so I really felt that I need a proper certification course to understand in depth of like digital marketing. After my basic research online, I decided to go with professional certificate program in digital marketing with Purdue University. I think it was a great decision. I was able to learn the fundamentals of digital marketing from basic level to the advanced level. The course was divided into six modules 
and each modules explained about different aspects of digital marketing and it was what just I needed. So after completing the course, I was able to perform well in my company and I got promoted as a team lead. Yeah, after a few months, I got a better job opportunity in Bangalore as a assistant manager for account management at Green Honchos with a decent 30% hike in my salary. I really feel happy with the trajectory of my life and the career so far. I feel that like everyone should keep learning and improving their skills on a regular basis. Following that philosophy, I am taking another course with Simply Learn. I advise every professional out there to keep looking for ways to upskill themselves. Imagine it's the year 2004. This is Phil. Phil's looking to release a book and set up a blog. He's sure that it'd be successful, but he's only worried about one thing. He doesn't know how to ensure that his book reaches the right target audience who could enjoy his book. During that period of time, however, there were only a few forms of advertisement available, like print ads, billboards, radio, direct mail, direct sales, and the television. All of these options were pretty expensive. Their effectiveness couldn't be accurately determined, and they didn't let him advertise his content to the appropriate audience. Phil's book would never find the audience it deserved. Now, let's have a look at the same scenario in the present day. Alongside traditional forms of advertising, Phil would have access to digital marketing, a form of marketing that's a lot more lucrative, inexpensive, and configurable. Marketing that would enable marketers to advertise their audience digitally using channels like search engines, websites, social media platforms, emails, etc. Among these types, social media marketing caught Phil's eye. Social media marketing would give Phil the opportunity to take advantage of social media platforms to advertise his content to a highly targeted audience. It would help more people learn about his book, increase the interaction with his audience. It's relatively inexpensive, unless he goes into advertising, and will help him get marketplace insights that might help in understanding his audience preferences better. Phil started by taking up a certification to learn about social media marketing. Since he was already familiar with the concept of social media marketing, his next step was to learn about the different types of content he could post on social media. Some of the most common forms of content that Phil could post would be images, text posts, polls, and videos. But over time, Phil began to notice that not a lot of people were being exposed to his content. Phil needed to advertise his content. For that, he would need to use the advertising options provided by the social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Most advertising platforms offer users with a number of different options, like image ads. These ads involve the use of single or multiple images that are attractive and have the optimal amount of text. They also have a call to action that encourages user interaction. Phil could use images from his book, advertise websites that sell his book, and more. Then there are text and post ads. These ads could advertise posts or excerpts from Phil's blog or his book, further garnering interest from an interesting audience. He could also use video ads. Phil could use video ads that feature favorable reviews and customer testimonials to advertise his books. Phil could also use lead ads, through which he could collect information from users who are interested in a weekly newsletter or regular updates from his blog. But that wasn't the only thing Phil could do with social media platforms. He could create a brand for himself and drive audience interest to it. Engage with them, create an identity, engage with content, finding content that works for him. Social media platforms also allowed him the opportunity to target audiences based on demographics like their age, location, gender, and much more. And in time, Phil began to see an increase in the number of viewers coming to his social media page and by extension, his blog. He also saw an increase in the number of people who bought his book, greatly increasing his audience. Here are some things he learned. One, to set goals that were quantitative, smart, and follow a constant deadline. Two, to understand his audience by engaging and connecting with them. Three, to set up a social media calendar to plan competitions, polls, surveys, videos, and more. Four, using tools like BuzzSumo, IFTTT, Buffer, and more for lead generation, creating email lists, setting buyer personas, and more. Five, to perform visual storytelling with the help of images and videos. Hey there, learner. Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. 
Welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to talk about social media marketing for those people that are not really familiar with what social media can do for you and for your business this is the course that you want to uh, want to watch so we're going to talk about what it is what you need to know uh, where is social media going how do you felt do how do you develop your own social media strategy and we will also do a quick rundown of the most important social media channels but before we start let me introduce myself i am mark kempman i am your digital navigator for this video and if you like today's video why don't you like the video by clicking below and also if you want to subscribe to our channel click on the subscribe button below we would love you to be part of our community so let's get started are you ready for this let's check out the topics that we will be discussing in a bit more detail yep we're going to be starting with discussing the trends in social media what is happening where is it going what are the most social media networking platforms and what do we see happening in the future we will also look at the definition of social media marketing. It is important that you understand what social media marketing is and what it can do for you. Yeah, and we look at what is the importance for your business. Um, and you will also learn why you basically can't go without social media marketing these days. Yep, so that's what we will be looking at. And next, we will be looking at how to develop your social media marketing strategy. Yeah, we're gonna look at a very simple five-step process that you can follow to develop your social media marketing strategy for your business or for your personal brand. Next, we will be looking at the different social media marketing platforms. We will be looking at Facebook, at Twitter, at Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, etc and we're going to look at where are they where are they what people are using the platforms and i'll maybe cover some of the cool features of the various social media platforms that you can use as a business we will close this with looking at the pros and the cons of social media marketing there's lots of benefits you can get from it but hey of course there are some negatives to it as well and then i will close with giving you some answers to questions that I get asked a lot when I run this social media marketing introduction. So that will give you a full overview of what social media marketing is and how you can benefit from it for your own business or when you are a, um, a freelancer for your client's business or for yourself as a social media expert or any expert that you um, that you are positioning yourself as so that's the introduction let's get going into the action so let me start with a simple question out of these four social networking apps which one do you think is the old one out yeah when you look at Facebook Instagram YouTube and WhatsApp which one is the odd one out from a social media networking app perspective? Yep, and the right answer, of course, is WhatsApp. Because WhatsApp is a messaging platform. Yeah, and what does a messaging platform do in between social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube? Well, very simple. The answer is that WhatsApp and Messenger, Facebook Messenger, for instance, nowadays are considered social media apps as well. Yeah, so in WhatsApp, you can communicate and engage with your friends and with groups. Um, you can promote your business in there. So they are fully blown social media networks. Yeah, just a little trivia to get the, uh, the juices going. So there we have it. So. What I always do when I talk about social media marketing, yeah, I've, um, uh, I'm talking about trends from a, from a quite a generic perspective. 
I've been in digital marketing, social media from the very early days. Yeah, I was one of the first to demo the internet when I worked in uh, Silicon Valley in 1995. Yeah, we call when the web was launched in 1995, we talked about a presentational web. Yeah, you created a website for your business to present your business. And that was what the web was. It was very much like one way you could go on the web and you could find any information that you like. Yep, and that you needed. Now, in the early 2000s, we saw web 2.0 emerging, which is the conversational web. Yep, and in the conversational web, we saw social media coming. Yep, so was Facebook, was Twitter, uh, there were some, um, some other social media networks that no longer exist. But it was all about getting into conversations with your clients or with, um, with other people that share similar interests. So that was the conversational web. And that led to the growth, the phenomenal growth of social media. And then nowadays, today, we're talking about Web 3.0. Yep, and Web 3.0 is what we call the virtual reality web. Facebook bets heavily on the virtual reality web through the metaverse. It's that important for Facebook that they even change their name as a company. They are now called Meta as a company. So the metaverse is Mark Zuckerberg's vision to actually meet people in a virtual world and you can see each other in this virtual world. Currently probably still with virtual reality glasses or a virtual reality headset, but where will the future go? Yes, yeah, so instead of typing text or sharing photos in your newsfeed, you're stepping into a virtual world where you can meet your friends anytime anywhere. So really exciting, still a long way to go, but consider that web 3.0. And social, being interaction, engagement, is a core part for that. Yes, yeah, social media, although social media websites, social media platforms may come and go, the basic concepts of social media, they are here to stay. Yeah, social media has led to a fundamental change in the way businesses engage with their clients yeah, and how they interact with their clients. And we'll get deeper into that when we go into the definition of social media marketing. For now, let's look at where we are today with the social media networks. And I always use this slide for that. It is the most popular social media networks worldwide by monthly active users. And I want to emphasize the monthly active users because that is what is of interest. I'm not interested in how many people have subscribed to a network. There may be robots that have subscribed to it. Yeah, what I am interested in is that how many people are actually using it on a monthly basis. And you can very clearly see, yeah, Facebook, of course, is the biggest social media network platform. But if I look at this slide, I see three major trends. The first trend I see is the sheer size of Facebook. Yeah, because Facebook is not just number one when it comes to social media networks worldwide, but there is also WhatsApp on number three, there is Instagram on number four, and there is Messenger um, as well. Yeah, so you see the sheer size of Facebook is enormous and they are driving the changes in social media land. Although some of the innovation may come from other social media networks, yeah, the, um, the big drive is from Facebook. The second trend that I see here is, if I look at number two, which is YouTube. Yeah, to me, that says video is one of the most important types of content being used in social media these days. If I combine that with the importance that Facebook gives to video, yeah, there's no doubt 
that video is the preferred type of communication on social media networks. And let's look at ourselves. Yeah, we prefer to watch a video than read a lengthy article yep, with, um, about a particular topic. So if you are not on uh, video in your social media marketing strategy, you're really missing out on a tremendous opportunity. Yep, so that's trend number two, the importance of video. And the third trend I see is the importance of messaging. Yeah, you see number three is Messenger. You see number five is um, there is Facebook Messenger. There is also WeChat from China. Yeah, so it is very important these days to understand that Messenger is considered a key social media platform and that businesses use Messenger in their communication. And the power of using messaging in your marketing outreach is that it allows you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with your customers. You can reach an audience, yeah, you can reach a big audience through Messenger, but once they respond, you get into personalized conversations. And that is how Facebook is seeing Messenger yeah, as where in Messenger you have your one-to-one -one communication with your best sort of friends, where on Facebook platform itself you more have like community style, style conversations. Okay, so another few things that you see in this slide is the, of course the emergence of the TikTok. Yeah, you see the presence of um, uh, Snapchat, of Twitter, of Pinterest. But the main thing that I miss here, actually, is where is LinkedIn on this chart? And if I look at the original graphic of this chart, you see that LinkedIn isn't there. And remember, LinkedIn may probably have more than 300 million subscribers, but not all subscribers are actively engaging and using the platform on a monthly basis. So from a monthly active user's perspective, LinkedIn does not feature on this chart. And that is one of the biggest challenges that LinkedIn has yeah, to get people to engage with the platform. We'll come back to uh, all these social media networks later, where I'm going to give you a quick overview of what it, uh, what it is and what it does. Okay, so let's have a look at what social media marketing actually means. What is it? Yeah, and we got to put this in the context of the definition of marketing. Yeah, I studied marketing in the very early days in the 80s. And um, my main sort of uh, guru in marketing was Philip Kotler. And over the years, marketing has sort of developed from traditional marketing to online marketing. But the basic concept has not changed. If you look at the definition of marketing, it's the activity of creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offerings that have value for customers. Yeah, so you supply, you deliver, you exchange products or services that have a value for your customers. So two very important aspects here. There is value and there is customer. And that is what we capture in the marketing concept. You put the customer at the core of what you do. Yeah, because when you do that, you automatically will look at what value are we giving to the customer. Yep, so take social media marketing in that context. Then the second part of the social media marketing sort of term is the word social media. What is social media? When I explain social media, I'm using the three C's, the three C's of social media marketing. And they are content, the community, and campaigns. Content is the fuel of your social media. Content is the, um, the currency of social media. If you have really good content that you can share 
on the internet, yeah, using various multiple multiple social media channels like Facebook, like YouTube, or like video, or like Instagram, or blogging, you name it. Yeah, people will engage with your content. And then when people start engaging with your content, they may come back for more content that you supply and they will then become part of your community. So community is a very important aspect of your social media definition. With really good content, you can create communities and then you can push that process by running campaigns. Yeah, and a campaign makes it relevant for businesses. Because when you run a campaign, you have a goal for your campaign, you have an objective, you have a start date, you have an end date. Yep, and that is what social media marketing is. It's all about running campaigns to develop your communities with really exciting content. And then you put it into the marketing context, you do that if it's a customer at, in the core of what you do. Yes, yeah, so if I then take that to a definition of social media marketing, is very basic, it says the use of social media to develop a company's brand, increase website traffic and boost sales. That is what we call social media marketing. Yeah, the most important aspect here is that you need to have an outcome. You need to have a result which is customer related. And that is where the sales element comes in. You do this to get the customer to do something and in the end that is buying your product or your service. Yeah, so social media marketing is not the tactical combination of your social media networks yeah, to, um, to reach as many people. There needs to be a goal to it. And when we talk about marketing, it comes down to selling your product or service with a value. Yeah, so that is the um, kind of the call to action, as it were, that comes out of your social media marketing. So keep that in mind. Everything you do with your social media marketing in the end comes down to reaching your goals or achieving your objectives of developing your company's brand, increasing website traffic or growing your sales. Now, a big benefit that you're getting these days in digital marketing and social media marketing is data, is intelligence, is knowledge. In the early days of marketing, the biggest problem has always been how to measure the success of your marketing campaigns. If I ran adverts in a magazine, how do I measure the effectiveness? If I do a PR campaign and uh, they write about me in the newspaper, how do I measure the effectiveness of that? How can I track that when somebody buys a product, it actually is as a result of the PR campaign that I ran. So in the early pre-internet days, yeah, we, the only way to measure customer engagement, as it were, were through loyalty cards or credit cards. Yeah, with a loyalty card, you had some basic customer data through credit cards, you could track transactions. But it's very difficult to relate that to your marketing. Then the internet emerged. And all of a sudden, I could track traffic to my website. Yeah, I could see how many people visit my website. Are these people that visit my website for the first time? Are they returning visitors? What are the most popular pages that they see? How long do they stay on my website? And are they actually buying my products? Yeah, so that was a major advancement of marketing in the early 2000s. And then when social media emerged, 
it all of a sudden became possible to measure engagement. How many people are having conversations with us? I could even measure sentiments. Are people positive about my brand? Are they negative about my brands? I could track the effectiveness of my marketing campaigns. I could measure the effectiveness of my advertising campaigns that I ran online. So today's reality is that we can measure everything. We can measure clicks, we can measure transactions, we can measure engagements, we can measure return on investments. Yep, and we can now even take that a step further through artificial intelligence that we can actually start making predictions how people may respond to campaigns that we're going to be running. So it's a very important aspect of your digital, uh, your social media marketing. So as I mentioned earlier, social media is a completely new way for businesses to engage with their customers. Yeah, you can no longer go without it. It's a new channel to market. It is a new channel for engagement with your customers. It is a new channel to learn. It's a new channel to listen, to find out what's happening in the market. So it's now, it's, it's, it's there in every aspect of your business. And not only for the marketing department, it's there for the sales department, it's there for logistics, it's there for the customer service department, it's there for the HR department. Using social media for your recruitment is a very important element of social media marketing. Yes, so keep that in mind that social media marketing is no, not a fad, it is there and it's there to stay and it touches every aspect of your business. Now, to summarize this, there are three areas where social media has changed the way businesses operate. First of all, there is the connection. Social media is a new way to connect with your stakeholders. Yeah, and stakeholders in this case can be customers, they can be prospects, influencers, your own employees, using social media for internal, and not only on a local scale, this happens nowadays on a global scale. The internet allows you to sell locally to a global audience if you want to. Yeah, so you can, you can cover the world. You can target specific audiences wherever they are. So the connection aspect, the targeting aspect, yeah, the, the market where you want to sell your product is opened up through social media and that is a big benefit for business. The second area where social media has changed businesses fundamentally is in the interaction side. It's not just about connecting with your stakeholders, you can also interact with them and they can act, interact with you on their terms, on their preferred platform. And remember in social media land, the customer is in the driving seat. If you're not interacting with them on their terms, you're going to miss the train. It's not about you don't liking Facebook or LinkedIn. Yeah, as long as your customers are on Facebook, you better be on Facebook, otherwise you're going to miss the boat. Yeah, because if you don't interact with them, they will move on to your competitors who are very likely engaging with them. Yep, so it's the connection aspect, it's the interaction aspect, and then the third part is the customer data aspect. All of this, yeah, what we talked about, can be done and you can track every aspect of your social media marketing at a customer level. And it gives you the key performance indicators like conversion ratios, sales ratios, customer satisfaction ratios, and ultimately return on investment. And there are tools nowadays that let you manage and track all these areas in one conglomerated system. Yeah, HubSpot is, for instance, a tool that you can use for that. And they integrate all your marketing and customer data and campaigns in one system that um, you can use for that. 
So now, having learned about these sort of fundamentals of social media marketing, let's now have a look at how do you put together your social media marketing strategy? How do you set it up? How do you develop it? Now, with my over 40 years of experience in marketing, digital marketing and social media, I developed a simple five-step methodology to set your business or to set up yourself for social media. And it's called FLIRT. Yeah, and FLIRT is an acronym. FLIRT, the first letter, the F, is for focus. Yeah, and in the focus phase, what you do, you look at various things. The first thing you do in developing your social media marketing strategy is look at what is your niche. What market are you targeting? And the more you focus in your market, your targeting, your niche, the easier it will be to reach them. Yes, so it's very important that you focus on a very particular niche. Once you've identified that niche, you look at your positioning. Why should they buy from you? What is your unique value proposition? Remember the definition of marketing. Yeah, the value for your customer is key in this. And you put it in what we call a positioning statement. You also look at your customers. You create customer personas where you look at your customers and you kind of map their interests, their uh, pain points, the typical questions that they would ask. So you get a good understanding of your, um, your customers. Yes, yeah, so you look at your niche, you look at your positioning, you look at your focus, or oh, sorry, you look at your customers. Yep, and then you're going to ask yourself, why am I going to use social media? Yeah, am I going to use it to build awareness? Am I going to use it to drive traffic to my website? Am I going to use it to generate sales? Am I going to use it to improve customer service? Am I going to use it to recruit new staff? Am I going to use it to communicate with my, um, my employees? Yeah, so lots of reasons why you could use social media and it's your challenge to identify one or two objectives for your social media. And then a very important aspect of your social media marketing strategy, even your overall digital marketing strategy, what are the keywords that you will be focusing on? In other words, what are the keywords that you want to be recognize, recognized for? Google wants to know, Facebook wants to know, LinkedIn wants to know, and it's all about repetition. The more often you use those keywords, the more those social media platforms and Google will associate you with those keywords. When people search for them, they will then show you higher up in the search results. We call this search engine optimization or search engine marketing. Yeah, so keywords is like a whole course in itself, but it's very important part of your social media marketing strategy in the focus phase. So that is the F for focus. Think about your niche, your positioning, who is your customers, why are you on social media, and what are your main keywords. The next is the L for listen. Listen is so important. Yeah, we tend to talk too much. Yeah, where social media can give you fantastic listening opportunities. And when I say listen, I mean read articles online, listen on Facebook and on Twitter, on LinkedIn, 
listen on Google, yeah, watch videos, listen to podcasts. There's dozens of ways that you can listen online. Because when you listen, you learn. And when you learn, you get better and you develop. So, what does that mean from you? Some practical tips when it comes to listening. First, you need to listen to where your customers hang out. Are your customers on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on LinkedIn? And later in this session, when we go through the various social media platforms, I'll give you an overview of what type of people are on the various social media platforms. The next thing that you want to know when you listen is who are your top 10 bloggers or influencers in your niche? Do you know your top 10 bloggers? Do you know your top Instagram influencers? Because you want to learn from them, but you may also want to build relation with them, to use them in your marketing outreach. You also want to look at the trends in your niche. Google Trends is a really useful tool that you can check to find out what are the trends in your niche. And you're looking at your competitors and your customers. What are they doing? What are they talking about? Yes, yeah, so a very important stage. And if you're doing it properly, you would actually set up a social media listening dashboard where you bring all your listening channels together in one dashboard. And then instead of having to go to all those social media networks or websites, you let them come to you. InnoReader is a very good dashboard, online dashboard, a free dashboard that you can use for this. We're then looking at the I for integration. Yeah, so you know your strategy, you know where your customers are, you know which social media networks you're going to focus on, then you're going to integrate them. You're going to set up your social media networks, you're going to make sure the branding and the profiles are consistent, you're using your keywords, you're going to create your content calendar, and you're going to set up your blog. Blogging is very important in social media marketing because it is the easiest way to start creating content on your website and to start sharing that content through your social media channels that will then drive people back to your website. Yes, yeah, so that is part of the integration stage. And then once you've got that all set up, you're then going to reach out. It's very important that you reach out, because if you're not reaching out, then people won't find you, people won't see you. Yeah, the whole essence of social media marketing is that you create as many touch points as possible on the internet for people to find you, yeah, where they start engaging with your content, going back to your website, want to know more about you, want to know more about your content, and you start building a relationship that may then turn into a sale. So reaching out, you're going to start sharing your content, you're going to repurpose your content, so turn your blog post into a video or into a carousel or turn your video into a podcast or what have you. Yeah, you're going to share other people's content. There's nothing wrong with sharing content from other people. And you're going to run campaigns. Campaigns to push your content in the channels. Yeah, and campaigns nowadays are no longer sort of just posts on social media. It is a combination of organic posts yeah, where you just share your posts on social media. It could be paid, like pay-per-click advertising, or it could be influencer marketing style um, re reaching out. Yeah, so very important is the reaching out stage. And then, of course, tracking is the icing on the cake, as it were. When you track, you measure your online reputation, you measure your conversions, you measure your social media activity and engagement, you're meshing your ROI, and you plan for your next quarter. 
Okay, time to talk about the social media marketing platforms. Let's have a look at some of the most relevant ones out there. Now, but before that, let's make sure that you understand the essence of the social media marketing platforms. How do they work? Very simple, they all work according to the same concept. What you do, you create an account on the social platform, like Facebook for instance, you fill in your profile. On Facebook, you put in a lot of data about yourself, on Twitter, a little. Yeah, so you fill in your profile and once your profile is ready, you're gonna connect with friends or follow and be followed. Yeah, some platforms, when you send somebody a connection request or a friend request, request when they accept, you're mutually connected, like Facebook and like LinkedIn. Other platforms like Twitter and like Instagram, when you follow somebody, doesn't mean that that person follows you. Yeah, so we're talking about followers and following, as it were. Yep, and then when you've got that, you're going to start sharing updates. And you're going to check your newsfeed where you will see the updates from your friends. Now, as a business, every platform enables you to create a Facebook page or to create a page. Yeah, and what you want to do, you create your page, you put in your company information, you brand it to your company branding guidelines, and then you get people to follow or like your Facebook page or your LinkedIn page. Yep, and then you start sharing updates. And people that liked your page, they may see your company updates in their feeds. And this is what we call organic reach. So you do a post as a business and then the people that follow you will see your posts on their personal newsfeed. Now in the early days of social media, this organic reach could be 40 to 50%. Which means that if you have 10,000 followers on Facebook, so 10,000 people liked your Facebook page, 5,000 of those people would see your update on their personal newsfeed, which is fantastic. And that was in the early days for social media. Many brands, they spent lots of marketing, building huge communities, because it was a fantastic free way of reaching out to your market. Nowadays, things have changed. Facebook has been driving this. Yeah? Facebook wants you to advertise on Facebook. All these social media platforms, they have to make money. So they have advertising sort of on their platform and they want you to use advertising. So over the years, Facebook has lowered organic reach to less than 3%. So again, if you have 10,000 people that like your Facebook page, fewer than 300 people may see your updates in their feed. And Facebook says, hey, that's the way it is. We offer you a fantastic marketing environment and we need to make money as well. So hey, yeah, start advertise on Facebook to reach your entire audience. And businesses now understand that. They now know that social media is pay to play, to reach your audience, it's no longer relying on organic reach. You have to pay to use pay-per-click advertising or PPC. But we're gonna talk about that in the next videos. All right, so it's very important that you understand this concept of how social media marketing platforms work. So let's start with the first one, the biggest one, Facebook with 1.9 billion active users worldwide. Fact is that over the years, the younger generation has left Facebook. Yeah, why have they left Facebook? Because it's not cool anymore. Yeah, and their parents are on it. Yeah, so if you want to reach the young teens, early, late teens, early 20s, don't go to Facebook. You want to be on social networks like Snapchat or TikTok, if that's available in your market. Now, there's still markets where Facebook is enormous. 
Yeah, so they are the leading social media network in your market. If that is the case, then of course you have to be on Facebook. But in general, we can say that the audience for Facebook is now a slightly older audience, Generation X or Millennials. It's still a really good network to reach these people, particularly when you talk about consumer type products. Now, what does Facebook offer you as a business to use? Facebook has the Facebook page that you can create to reach your audience. Nowadays, Facebook really would like you to use Facebook groups. Facebook groups is a fantastic area in Facebook where you can get really good engagement. And as a business, you can offer a group to your customers as a VIP area or a product knowledge area or a pre-launch area or just for your customers. Yeah, lots of reasons, lots of areas where you can use a group to reach your customers. Then there's Facebook Messenger, of course, that you can use for your business where you can set up bots. Yeah, so you can have sort of automated conversations with your customers on Facebook Messenger. And there is Facebook Live. Don't ignore Facebook Live. Facebook loves you to use Facebook Live. The beauty about using the Facebook Live, it gives you sort of buzz and engagement before the event, during the event and after the event. Yeah, we call this tent pole marketing. You can build up excitement leading up to the event and after the event as well. And then finally, of course, Facebook is betting heavily on the metaverse. Yeah, so it's Mark Zuckerberg's vision that instead of engaging with your friends in the news feed, you engage with them in a virtual world. Now, the verdict is out if this is going to work, but fact is that although we've been talking about virtual and augmented reality for years, it is here now. Yeah, there's more and more apps becoming available on your mobile, on your desktop, that use augmented reality and virtual reality. I can now download IKEA Place, I think it's called, where you just open up the app, you pick a product from the catalog, like a table, and then you can just position that table in your living room. Yeah, and then you can move it, change the color of it or whatever. Yeah, using augmented reality through your, um, your camera. Okay, so that is Facebook. Let's look at the next one, Instagram. I love Instagram. Yeah, a lot of users from Facebook have gone to Instagram. Why? Because it is a visual social media platform and it has inherently higher engagement than Facebook. It's easier to reach the audience, not just your friends. Yeah, so lots of cool features in Instagram. One of the coolest features is the Instagram stories. Yep, and people now spend more time on the stories than on the, uh, the timeline where they see the posts. So Instagram started as a photo sharing app. Very simple, yeah, you made a photo, you put a filter on top of it, which almost felt like you're a photographer and then you share it with hashtags. And you saw immediately the likes coming in and people loved it for its simplicity. And now it has grown to a fully featured social media network that businesses can use to make their brand come to life via photos and via stories. The audience is slightly younger than the Facebook um, audience, but a more and more mature audience is coming on there as well. And it's, it, initially it had very much a business to consumer focus, but nowadays it's not just photos that you can share, you can share visuals. I can turn a blog post into a carousel of five visuals, Yep, and um, in that way share really good content. So very powerful and very useful for businesses to reach the audience 
that hangs out on, uh, on Instagram. All right, so that is Instagram. Let's look at the next one, and that is YouTube. Now, YouTube, of course, is not just for watching video. YouTube is a fantastic social media platform to build an audience of followers. Yeah, it's a great platform to monetize your video as well by enabling advertising to be shown before or during your videos. A lot of video creators, they do that. Yeah, and uh, YouTube has a program for that. If you qualify by um, number of views that you have on your video and number of uh, and, the, and the size of your audience, you can participate in this program. And it is a really good way to make money on you, uh, for many content creators. Now check out our earlier check out our earlier video on how to create a YouTube channel to find out how you can set up a YouTube channel and how you can use YouTube as a social media platform. YouTube is great for brand awareness and since it's owned by Google it's also really helpful for your search rankings both on YouTube and on Google Google. And there's lots of different videos, of course, that you can make. Yeah, videos that do well are typical videos like how-to videos, unpacking videos, vlogs, video blogs we call them, review videos, live videos. Lots and lots of ways to reach the video, your audience yeah, on, um, with video on YouTube. So the typical audience that uses YouTube are basically everybody from young to old. But very important to understand with YouTube that people are there for a reason. They search for something. They may search for entertainment. They may also search for answers to their questions. Which is different than the videos you would have on uh, Facebook, for instance. Yeah, so Facebook is very good for brand awareness, where YouTube videos are very good for, um, for lead generation, for instance, and for building relationship with your, uh, your audience. Good, a very interesting social media platform that emerged around 10 years ago is Snapchat. They have around 300 plus million daily active users. And let me tell you a bit about the history of uh, Snapchat. Snapchat was a response to Facebook's problems about 10 years ago in privacy. And um, not being cool anymore. And particularly the privacy issue where in those days a lot of people said... Who is owning my photos on, uh, on Facebook? Yeah? Um, is it Facebook or is it myself? So a lot of people, and that has always been a gray area. Yeah, combined with Facebook not being cool anymore, and you know how important being cool is for the younger generation. Yep, so, face, uh, so two guys who came up with the idea of doing something radically different. And they came up with a social media platform, Snapchat, where posts would delete themselves within 24 hours. They built a, an, a user interface around this, which was fairly difficult to use. Yeah, but that was for a reason. Kids, they love to explain to each other how it works. And if it's complicated enough, then their parents won't be able to get on it. Yeah, so kids love that idea. It's too complicated to use for my parents. So I really have my own social media world yeah, in Snapchat that nobody else has access to. So particularly the teens, the Generation Z yeah, was very uh, keen and they were very hot on, the, uh, on, on Snapchat. So it was the new place for Facebook users to go to. And they grew ever since steadily. Not huge, but they are there and they are a very powerful social network. 
particularly when you want to target the younger generation. Now, there are two major features that they sort of drove into social media land, which was the stories and second, the vertical videos. So you all know the concept of the story, it self-deletes in 24 hours, but it turned um, social media, instead of sort of scrolling through your newsfeed, you swipe from story to story. Much more visual, much more fun, much more engaging. Yep, and you would swipe those stories vertically and that automatically led to using vertical video. And vertical video is a major trend in social media content, yeah, which is picked up by, um, by TikTok as the main format for, uh, for videos on TikTok. YouTube have shorts, so all social media now networks, they now have stories and they have vertical video as a key element. Yeah, so vertical video, particularly for short 10, 12 second videos, which we call snackable content, is very important. Why would you tilt your phone to watch a video? Why not just use it vertical? Which is also a quite an interesting um, sort of form factor to get a, a good engagement on your videos. Finally, Snapchat has very innovative advertising features. Yeah, they have lenses, they have stories, they have filters. You can put a filter over your face. BMW had a really good campaign to launch a new car where you could place the car through a lens anywhere that you liked in augmented reality and you could actually put a filter where you gave yourself a golden face. Yeah, so very powerful advertising. I think the, the WhatsApp advertising platforms is one of the best advertising platforms out there. It's also probably one of the most expensive um, advertising platforms of all social media networks. Right, so let's look at Twitter. I call Twitter SMS on steroids. Yeah, it was one of the first, besides Facebook, one of the first social media platforms that came out. And it was a very exciting platform when it launched. And Twitter relied heavily on celebs, celebrities using it to drive acceptance on a global scale. Yep, and many music stars, rock stars, actors, they started using Twitter and that drove the global adoption of the, uh, the platform. Now, what makes Twitter so powerful? There are three aspects on Twitter. First of all, you can retweet a tweet. Yeah, so when you send a tweet and I follow you, I receive your tweet. If I just click on retweet, it'll go to all my followers. Yeah, if somebody in my follower base retweets that tweet, your tweet can go viral without, uh, in, 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 in minutes. Yep, and there's various examples of tweets that went viral um, within minutes, yeah, like the, um, uh, which was it, the selfie tweet during the Oscar ceremony a few years ago. Yes, so it is, um, so the retweeting is very powerful. It also makes it instant. Yeah, because of this retweeting aspect, news f goes on, in, uh, on Twitter instantly and it shares to a global audience instantly. So that makes it very, very powerful for news agencies as well. And for businesses, a very powerful feature of Twitter is the Twitter search. Each tweet is indexed and you can search in all the tweets. You can search for the very first tweet that was ever sent. Yeah, so that makes it very powerful for brands to find content. So Twitter is really good for finding jobs, for instance, because lots of businesses, they tweet about, I'm looking for a marketing manager or a web developer. So if I search for web developer hashtag jobs, that tweet will show up in my search results. One problem that Twitter had is that they did not keep up with the developments in social media platform functionality. Yeah, so most celebrities went to Instagram 
because Instagram was much more visual, much better place for celebrities to engage with their, um, their fans. So Twitter lagged behind and in the last few years it clearly repositioned itself. So it now is seen as a great way for businesses to use as a communication and service channel with their customers and for media companies to share the latest news. So if you want to find out what is happening in the world now or what businesses are doing now or if you have a problem with a product from a business, Twitter is the best place to be. And for you individual, as I always say, you don't need to be on Twitter to tweet, but you must be on Twitter to find great content, to search. Whether you want to search for jobs or whether you're searching for opportunities. If you're a photographer, yeah, and you and in London, for instance, and you go to Twitter and you search for looking for wedding photographer, London, you get a list of tweets of people who are tweeting, I'm looking for a wedding photographer. Does anybody know anybody? Yeah, so extremely powerful to, uh, to use for lead generation. Right, so what about Pinterest? Pinterest is a visual bookmarking platform. It's very cool. The concept is simple. You see a photo on the website that you like. Yeah, what you can then do, you can pin that photo on Pinterest in a board. Yeah, and you're not copying the photo, you're just copying the link in your board. So by the, doing that, you can build fantastic collections of visuals that you like and want to organize. So I bought a house in Marrakesh a number of years ago in Morocco and we needed to design the interior. So we had a board with Morocco design, we had a board with Morocco Riyadh, we had a board with um, a tiling and what have you. And we just built up a whole collection of ideas that we liked. And then we got the people that helped us in making the things that we wanted and we could just share them the links on Pinterest of the ideas that we had. Worked really well. Now, because you can save those boards, of course, you can then share them as well. Yeah, so everybody can access your boards, which means that it becomes a great tool for getting ideas and inspirations from boards from other people. So if you want ideas for home design or your wedding or fashion, Pinterest is a fantastic place to get inspiration. Another major benefit for businesses is that you can put your product catalog on Pinterest as visuals organized in boards. Yep, and then when people find those products on, in, on Pinterest and they click on them, it will take them to the catalog of your website where they can buy your product. So it's a great way to drive additional traffic to your website. If you want to see a good example for that, go to the IKEA UK um, Pinterest page and look at their boards. You see boards for small living room ideas, back to school, Christmas, holiday celebrations, and then you get lots of ideas with, um, for instance, for small living rooms. And then you click on some of the products that you see and that takes you to the page on the IKEA catalog website where you can buy the product. Now, Pinterest is very popular amongst women, amongst millennials, and it also has very powerful advertising features. And then LinkedIn. LinkedIn is serious. Yeah, I call LinkedIn Facebook with a tie. Where Facebook is fun, LinkedIn is serious. In Facebook, you can get away with a funny profile photo. In LinkedIn, your photo needs to be professional. Now, if you go to linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI, you get your social selling index. And that is a score between 1 and 100 of how good you are on LinkedIn. 
And you will see in the score, in the summary, that there are four components that contribute to your SSI score. Or four components that contribute to how well you do on LinkedIn. So those four are your profile, yeah, your activity level in connecting with people, how much content you share, and your activity level in building relationships with people. Yeah, so the better you do in those four areas, the higher your score. Your profile, of course, is very important. Make sure that your LinkedIn profile is as complete as possible. Now, LinkedIn's biggest challenge, as I mentioned earlier, is to get people to engage and share content. So how does LinkedIn make money? Very simple. There are four areas where they make money. First of all, they allow people to upgrade their LinkedIn account to a premium account where they get more features. There is a whole section in LinkedIn specifically for recruiters. Yes, yeah, so a recruiting version of LinkedIn. There is a whole uh, area for sales. We call this sales navigator. Yeah, if you run a sales team that use LinkedIn, of course, you want to keep the customer data. So you're getting a sort of customer relationship management system within LinkedIn when you sign up for Sales Navigator. And then there is LinkedIn advertising. LinkedIn, of course, is best for business to business and it's really good for developing your personal online profile as long as you share content through publishing articles and sharing, uh, sharing posts. So I've been operational on LinkedIn from the very beginning and I shared lots and lots of content and articles on LinkedIn and I got lots of business coming in through LinkedIn. Yeah, we're talking about serious amounts of business that I did by being on LinkedIn. So you got to be on LinkedIn if you are in business. Right. Now, one thing that I will not talk about here is, uh, is TikTok. Yeah, we haven't got a slide for that, but bear in mind TikTok, although it's not available in India, um, TikTok is a very important social media network these days, which drives a whole new format of, uh, of, of engaging and communication. But more about that, uh, that later. Right, so let's look at the pros and cons of social media. What is good? and what is bad about it. The biggest, the biggest advantage of social media marketing is that it can lead you to new audiences. Yeah, wherever they are in the world, whatever type of business you are, you can reach them through organic, paid or influencer outreach. Yeah, influencer outreach has become a very powerful element of your social media marketing strategy. It is about collaborating with, for instance, Instagram users with many followers to market your products or services. So there's the pros are there and they are far better than the, uh, than the cons. But there are cons, it's not all positive. You need to be aware that when you are on social media, you are opening yourself up as a business. People can see what you do, they can see how you do it, and they can also see when you're doing things wrongly. Yeah, when you're doing things not the way it should be done. It's okay when things go well, but it can be disastrous when things go bad. As we say, it takes years to build a brand, but on social media you can ruin it overnight. Yeah, there's lots of examples of that. Um, a really uh, big example was, that, remember the Chinese passenger that was dragged off a, off a United Airlines plane? YouTube and Twitter were bombarded with negative and cynical posts towards United Airlines, how they dealt with that situation. But hey, those are the cons and there's in any marketing channel that you use, there are cons, but the pros far outweigh the cons that are there. It is there, it is a fantastic channel to reach new audiences, yeah, and it is only going to get bigger. 
Right, so to close, here are a few answers to questions that I get often asked in my social media classes. So let me start with giving you a list of the questions and then we'll do um, the answer. So what is viral marketing all about? Now, marketing is considered viral when it reaches the point where it's being shared by the public at large rather than just its target audience. Yeah, so when the, um, you reach more people than you intended to reach, yeah, that could be through word of mouth or through social sharing, it means your content has gone viral. Yeah, and particularly on YouTube, you see when you are running a campaign for um, a particular market, but then the video is so good that it goes well beyond your target audience. Yeah, that is what we call viral marketing. What is earned media? Earned media refers to positive reviews or mentions in industry media or user-generated content and guest posts on third-party websites. So it is basically when other people talk about you. Other people share your content. That is what we call earned media. What are some examples of social media marketing strategies? There is one famous one, uh, which I can highly recommend you have a look at. It is from a company called Blendtec. Yeah, Blendtec sells professional blenders. If you go to Starbucks and you order a Frappuccino, they blend the ice cubes with Blendtec blenders. They are industrial grade blenders. They need to be very powerful. Now, nobody talks about blenders online. So they came up with a, um, an innovative campaign called Will It Blend? Yep, so where they created a series of videos where they blend everything you want them to blend, like an iPhone, comparing that with a Samsung, which one blends the fastest. They had a Facebook page with it, a website with it, campaigns with it. Through that campaign, they managed to grow their revenue with over 500%. A very powerful campaign. The Dollar Shave Club is another good example. How a small company, an online company, started to challenge the big shaving companies yeah, who charge lots and lots of money for shaving blades. They challenged it. Hey, come to us and you'll um, buy shaving blades for one dollar. So really innovative campaign how they did that. So how do you get started in social media marketing? Lick, lick, remember my flirt methodology. Yeah, focus. That is where you start. Think about your niche. What makes you unique? Think about your customers. Think about your targeting. Yeah, so focus, focus, focus. That is the most important part when you get started on your social media. Then, what is sticky marketing? Sticky marketing is a term for attractive content that engages customers and then influences them not only to purchase the product, but also to share the content. Yeah, so it's people, they like the content so much that they, it helps them going through the buying cycle, but also they start sharing it with their friends, yeah, which gives you additional traffic to your website, which may lead to additional leads. Hey there learner, Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Welcome to today's training where we will be talking about YouTube channels. We're going to be talking about what are YouTube channels, how do you set them up, how do you optimize them, and how do you subscribe to them. But before we start, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Mark Kempman. I will be your digital navigator for this video. And if you like the video, please click the like button. Or if you want to join our YouTube community, why don't you hit the subscribe button? 
So what's all this about in YouTube? Why is YouTube so popular? What makes it so special? And why do you need a YouTube channel? Well, the numbers, they speak for themselves. Over two and a half billion people open YouTube at least once a month. That is one third of the world's population. YouTube generates around $30 billion of revenue in 2021. That is $78 million a day. These are extraordinary amounts. And this is primarily advertising revenue. Now, 25% of global mobile usage is for YouTube. It's one of the most popular mobile apps. And YouTube is the main source of video for 78% of its users. Look at the younger generation. They don't watch terrestrial TV, they watch TV on YouTube. So on the back of this, a whole community of video creators have emerged. People who go on YouTube to present, to share, to discuss, to debate, to invent, to compare and become famous with posting their videos. We call them YouTubers. And I don't have to mention people like Gangnam Style, Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa. And what about brands that made it big on YouTube? The Dollar Shave Club, Blendtec with Blend, uh, Will It Blend? And it's the YouTube channel they use as the social platform for their videos. A YouTube channel serves as the homepage for a user's account. Anyone can view YouTube without having an account. However, you need to create a YouTube channel if you plan to upload videos, add comments or make playlists. But more about how to do this later. Businesses can also have a YouTube channel. These channels are different from the personal channels because they can have more than one owner of manager. So how do businesses benefit from YouTube? Well, posting on YouTube will help people find you on Google. Remember, Google owns YouTube. By consistently utilizing YouTube for your business, you can increase your chances of showing up in the search results and improving your own rankings. YouTube will also expose you to a huge global audience. YouTube is available in over 80 languages and it receives more than 30 million visitors a day who watch nearly 5 billion videos. It's the second biggest search engine coming only after Google itself. And the YouTube app, again, as I said earlier, is one of the most popular apps in the store. YouTube gives you qualified traffic. People on YouTube often have a question they search for. And if your video can answer the question they have, you will get a qualified lead. It's much like Google search, but then it's visual. Also, video content is 12 times more likelier to be watched than text to read. Video can evoke emotion. They can make you think, they can make you feel. And if they make you think and feel, you're not likely to forget those videos. And that's much more that can be said for most other types of online marketing. Video also help to humanize your brand. They bring it to life, taking your messages from flat and static to dynamic and engaging. Videos help your brand build trust and loyalty in a unique way. You can also use YouTube ads to reach an even bigger audience. YouTube advertising runs on through the Google Ads platform and has some very powerful features and more about these ads on YouTube later. Videos can also be repurposed across many other channels, so they can help you drive additional traffic to your website. You can share them on your social media channels, you can embed them on your own website, or you can include them in your email marketing. To summarize, video marketing is a must for your business. And if you're not on the video train, you will miss the next stop. Publishing regular videos is key and YouTube offers you a YouTube channel as your YouTube homepage for all your videos. So here's a bit more background information about the YouTube ecosystem. It's important to know that there are three players 
in the YouTube ecosystem. There's you, the viewer. There's the content creator or the people that upload their videos. And there are brands, brands who want to reach you to sell their products. And it's YouTube's challenge to keep everybody happy in this ecosystem. To keep you happy, to show you the best videos. Keep content creators happy by enabling them to make some money. And to keep brands happy by connecting them with the biggest audience possible. So, how do brands connect with you? Very simple, through advertising. Showing your short video ads before or during the videos you watch. In fact, 84% of YouTube viewers bought from brands after watching videos or ads they see on YouTube. And then how do content creators make money? Very simple. YouTube enables them to earn ad revenue from ads that run before or during their videos. Every time an ad shows in front of the, or during the video, they get a percentage of the ad revenue. And I'm sure you've seen those ads while you were watching YouTube videos. But not every YouTube content creator qualifies for this. You need to have at least 1000 subscribers to your channel and a minimum of 4000 watch hours on your channel. In other words, advertising in YouTube is the oil of the YouTube ecosystem. It keeps everybody happy. And there are a variety of ads marketeers can choose from. Many of them find pre-roll skippable ads the most effective. You know, those ads that you can skip after a few seconds. Just a little side note here, YouTube ads on mobile are the most effective for the simple reasons that many people watch videos on their mobile. But also, many people have ad blockers on their desktop, so your ads will not be seen on their desktop. YouTube has recognized the power of mobile video and, and mobile ads and has announced that it will share 45% of ad revenue on YouTube Shorts. Now, what are YouTube Shorts? YouTube Shorts are short vertical videos and they are YouTube's response to the phenomenal growth of TikTok. And vertical videos are key these days. If you want to boost engagement, consider using vertical videos. And here's why. It has a 90% higher completion rate compared to vertical videos. About 80% of consumers claim that the format is more engaging. And 65% of people find brands using vertical videos for their advertising to be more innovative. So enough of the theory. Let's look at the YouTube channels and look at what you need and how to set up a YouTube channel. First of all, you need a kit to make videos. Whether it's your computer, your webcam, a camera, a smartphone, and of course you need a video editing software. And very important, you need an indoor or outdoor environment to make your videos. And then of course you need to make the video. This will be a topic for another Simply Learn video in its own right. But here are a few tips. What make people watch videos? People watch videos when they are educational, informational, entertaining, funny, controversial or shocking. Lots of examples in these categories of videos in YouTube. Now, what type of videos do people like to watch? There's a whole range of different types of videos. But if you want to look at the most popular ones, you talk about unpacking videos, review videos, challenge videos, whole videos, parodies, covers, live videos, how-to videos. It's a whole range of styles of video, of topics of video that you can create. Whether it's for consumer videos or for business videos. Now, what type of videos can you make? There's a whole range of different types. There's standard format video, which is horizontal. There's the vertical video, which I talked about a little earlier. 
There are stop motion videos. Yeah, there are time lapse videos. You could do 360 videos. And the big growth these days is in, our, is in augmented reality and virtual reality. Yep, and then what do you need to think about when you shoot your video? There are three very important aspects of making your video. Think about light, think about sound, and think about having a stable camera position. Yeah, light is very important. There's no better light than outdoor light. And if you haven't got our, if you don't shoot outdoor but indoor, make sure you have a good lighting setup. Sound can be very deceiving. If you're interviewing somebody on the video outside, you think there is no wind. But then when you hear the video back on your computer, you hear the wind. It's, it's quite an interesting uh, phenomenon, but it's a fact. So best is to have a high quality microphone that you use when you interview or when you record your videos. And think about a tripod as well. Make sure your camera is in a stable position. So that's the theory behind all this. Let's now look at some YouTube channels and show you how to make a YouTube channel. And here is the Simply Learn YouTube channel. A very clear channel with lots of content for people to learn about all topics in, um, in technology. So here you see the banner. Yeah, with some good messaging in there. You have your logo. Here you see the number of subscribers. Yep, so you see it's a verified account by YouTube. And here is the subscribe button. Yep, and when you are subscribed to a video or to a channel, the, you get um, sort of personalized notifications or you can switch off the notifications. But the beauty about people subscribing to your channel is that they will receive a notification when you publish a new video. Then here you have a menu of things that people can go to. There's the home page for all your videos. There is a list of all your videos. You can organize your videos in playlists. You can look at the comments that you're getting in the community section. You can set up different channels and you can group those channels under your account and here is the about page where you have about information about the company yep and this is you can optimize this with keywords so google will um, index this for the uh, for the search as well so let's look at this home page again and the um, the branding yeah so here you see a feature video and there are two elements in this uh, that are important here first of all you saw just when i got on the page before i subscribed you saw a different video yep and then when you come back to the page you can see another video so basically you have a video that you can put here for first time visitors where you can promote your company or your channel, and then you can have another video set up for um, returning visitors. And then here you have all your videos, and you can organize them in playlists. And in a minute, I'm going to show you how to set this all up and how to create your own channel. Okay, so this is Simply Learn. Another example would be one of my favorites on social media is Social Media Examiner. Here is the Social Media Examiner TikTok YouTube channel. Yes, yeah, so here you see the, the featured video. Here you see the branding, very good branding with strong messages on there, an industry report that people can download. You see here you can put a few links to your uh, social media or your website or where people can download, for instance, the industry report. Here you see the branding, the logo. Yeah, again, I can subscribe to it. And then here you have the descriptions of the video and the different channels, the different um, playlists. Okay, so and then here you have the group, the different channels that they have under their, um, their, their main channel, the social media examiner.
Okay, so you see coming back and I see another video here. So finally, the other one I want to show you is GoPro. GoPro, they are very active on YouTube, very active on, uh, on, on having videos, having videos from their users, from their subscribers, having very clear playlists. Yes, yeah, so, um, and this could be um, different playlists from um, users, the different products, features, and what, uh, what have you. What you also see here is access to the store, yeah, where they sell products. And if I click on this, I can then go to the GoPro website where I can buy this, uh, this product. So this is an overview of the YouTube channel on the desktop. But as we all know, most people, and particularly the younger generation, they watch YouTube videos on their mobile device. So whatever you do, and in the branding as well, on setting it up, you need to make sure that it looks well and it looks good on the mobile as well. So let's look at these channels on the mobile device. Yeah, so here you see the mobile, you see exactly the same um, elements of it. You see your banner, you see your, uh, your, your logo, number of subscribers, and your feature video, and then you have your other videos. Yeah, so it's a lot easier to navigate through. One thing that you need to be careful of is that the width of the banner is not as wide as the width on the, uh, on the desktop. Yeah, so in your design, you need to take that into consideration, otherwise half of this text will be chopped off. Yep, so this is Simply Learn, if we're going to Social Media Examiner. Yep, so here is the Social Media Examiner page, yeah, their channel, again, the, the banner, and you have uh, subscribed. Yep, and then here you see a different color. Yeah, with Simply Learn, it was brownish, here it was greenish. You cannot change this color. That is something that YouTube will decide based on the overall color it can pick, it will pick up on your, um, on your desktop, on your, uh, on your YouTube channel. Okay, so and again, remember the banner, how wide you go. And then the other one was the GoPro. Yep, here is the GoPro channel. Same look and feel, but here it is grayish, yeah, with the banner, the logo, and then the, um, the feature video. Right, time to have a look at how I create a YouTube channel and how I optimize it so I can grow my number of subscribers to my channel. Here you see the overall YouTube interface. And it's very important that you get into YouTube and that you sign in with your Google account. And once you have your Google account set up and you're logged into your Google account, you can create a YouTube channel. So how do you create a YouTube channel? Here you see a, your user, yeah? And here you see your user icon. And for me, it's just a why. I haven't put any visual there yet. Yep, and if you haven't done anything on YouTube yet, then this is the screen that you will see. Yeah, here you see the videos that you can all access, the subscriptions, how you can explore, and you can use YouTube without having uploaded any video yourself or without having created a channel. If you want to upload a video on YouTube, you click here on the plus. Of course, everything I'll show you, you can do on the mobile as well. But my experience, if you are in admin mode and you want to add text, you want to add your about, you want to make different selections, then it's much easier to work on the desktop. So for demo purposes, I'll be showing it on the desktop. Okay, so if I click here on my user icon, I get to the menu of things I can do in my account, my Google account and my YouTube account. 
Here you see create a channel. I can also go to YouTube Studio and in YouTube Studio I can edit all my videos and optimize them. I can check with another, I can switch to another account. I can look at my membership, my data. I can look at the device theme I'm using, the language, the restricted mode, whether you want uh, certain videos not to have presented to you, your location, keyboard shortcuts, etc. But what we're going to be looking at is the create a channel. So I'll just click on create a channel and here I'm going to add my name. And my name is basically, I'm going to call it Mark Cube. Yeah, so my channel is called Mark Cube. I can upload my picture here. I can also do that at a later stage. So let's create the channel first and then I'll show you how to do the branding. So we'll click on create channel. Yep, and then you will see that your channel is ready. So what I can do now, of course, I can upload my first video. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to go straight into customize my channel. And then once my channel has been set up, I'll show you how to upload your first video. So here is customizing your channel. And there are three elements to it. There is the layout of your channel, there is the branding of your channel, and there is the basic info of your channel. Yeah, so let's look at the branding first. But before, yeah, remember we had the video spotlight, which was your featured video. So here you can specify which two videos you want to have in the featured section whether it is the video for people who haven't subscribed and then the feature video for the people who come back and have subscribed. And then here you have your featured sections. Remember, you can have the videos, you can have different sections that you can add here, like popular uploads, live, past live streams, upcoming live stream, the playlists, subscriptions, featured channels, all in the menu that I showed you earlier. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. Yeah, here is your menu on the left, which is also important. Yeah, so, and we'll come back to that in a minute as well. So first we're going to do is look at the branding. Yeah, and here I can add my logo. I can add my banner image and I can add a video watermark, which is standard watermark that will show in all your videos. So very simple, we're going to upload the images. So here you see my, I created these in advance. Yeah, so here you see my YouTube logo. Yep, so very simple uh, icon and I can now select, okay, what section will I do I want and make sure it fits within your image area and you click done and you have your icon, your picture in set up. Here you see the banner image. You see at least 2048 by 1152 pixels and six megabytes or less. If I click upload, I then have my banner image. I click open. Yeah, and here remember what you see on the desktop and what you see on the mobile. So here it is important that you look at the text that you have on your banner and make sure that it is viewable on all devices. I'm happy with this, so I click done. I'm not going to do the watermark and then I'm going to click publish. Yep, so the changes have been published. So if I'm now going to look at my channel, view the channel on YouTube, you now see I have my banner, I have my, uh, my banner here, I have my logo, but of course there's still a lot I have to do. I have to look at uh, work on the about, I have to add maybe some other items in the menu, and of course I have to upload a video. So let's go back to the customize the channel. And what I'm going to look now is to the basic info. So first of all, I have my description. 
So in the description, I'm going to tell people what my channel is all about. Welcome to my YouTube channel, a place to learn everything there is to know about digital marketing. Yeah, and I can make this as big as possible. Very, I have a thousand characters available and very important think keywords here. Yeah, if you follow digital marketing courses, keywords are the cornerstone of your digital marketing strategy. I can add a language and here I have my channel URL and I can change this if I want to. Yeah, so it's a standard web address for your channel. It includes your unique channel ID. Yeah, but you can change this as well. Yeah, so I can say here, Mark, to, 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 no, actually, I cannot change this. I will be able, I think, to change this. Let's have a look. Customize. A customized URL is a shorter, easy to remember URL that you can share with your audience. And where you have 100 or more subscribers, you have at least 30 days old of your channel, you have uploaded your branding as well. Yeah, so to have your number, uh, to have your customized URL, you need to have these 100 subscribers and have a channel that's at least 30 days old. So I can't change this right now. And then here you can add the links. Remember the links that you see on your banner? You can add a link. Yeah, so here I can say uh, the link is um, Mark Kempman, or let's say simplylearn.com, and I can say https simplylearn.com. Yeah, and I can add a link. I can say um, Facebook, and I can say https facebook.com forward slash simply learn and I'm going to add uh, Instagram and I'm going to say https instagram.com forward slash simply learn. Okay. Yep. And then here I can say which links do I want to show on the banner. Yeah, I can add a whole load of links here, but then I can say, just show me the first three links on the banner. Here's the contact info that is mark at simplylearn.com. Yep, so here is my about section ready. And then here I can click publish. And now I can go back to my channel. And what you see now, my channel is ready. We have the banner, we have the home, uh, the logo. And now here you see simplylearn.com, the website, the Facebook and the Instagram. It will automatically pick up the logos from the Facebook and the Instagram and the other social networks that you want to add here. All right, so the next thing is that we need to look here at the, uh, the topics that we want here. Yeah, we have home videos, playlists, channels, and about, so I can add multiple channels if I want. But let's go back to customizing. Yeah, so we've done the layout. We've done, we, we're gonna look at the layout now. We've done the branding, we've done the basic info. So here is the channel trailer we're gonna do in a minute when we've uploaded our first videos. So let's add a section and that would be the created playlists. Yep, and we want to add a section, let's say uh, popular uploads. Okay, and then I can say, give me the created playlist I want to the top. Yeah, I want um, the uploaded videos and then I have the shorts and I have the popular uploads. Okay, and again, I'm going to click publish. I'm going back to my channel. Yep, so, and now you won't see the order yet because I haven't put in any, vid any videos, of course. But you will see as soon as we start adding videos, 
then you will can you can see that we um, uh, that you get the order that we've specified. Okay, so finally, before we're going to upload the video, when we go into customizing your channel, you need to be aware here of the features as well. Yeah, the menu items that you have. So here is your channel dashboard. So in your channel dashboard, you see the videos that you uploaded and it gives you basic channel analytics. Yeah, and here you have some news from YouTube um, about new features, new training, etc. Here you see the content. So here you see a list of the videos that you've uploaded. Their visibility status, is there a restriction on the video, what is the date that you uploaded, and you get some basic analytics, views, comments, and likes. Okay, here are your playlists that you've created. Here you get your basic YouTube channel analytics. Yeah, you're looking at your comments that you get. So here you can sort of um, review the comments. You can set some moderation guidelines here. You can also add subtitles to your videos. Now, we'll go into that in more detail when we go into YouTube and uploading videos and how to optimize your YouTube videos. But Google will automatically subtitle your videos and you can edit the, um, the, subscri the subtitles that Google will, uh, will do. Yeah? And very important to remember, if you use the Google subtitles for your video, it will not be indexed for search, for the simple reason that there may be words that Google misinterpreted in your video. So you always need to edit the video, take the typos, the, um, the words that are misunderstood by Google, change those, and then as soon as you then change the revised version of the subtitles, Google will then index the, um, the transcribed file yeah, for search. Here is copyright information, here is monetization of your videos. It's important, we talked about this earlier. Yes, yeah, so remember where you can have advertising showing before or during your videos. And that is you will have to become part of the YouTube Partner Program. And once you're a member of the Partner Program, you'll be eligible to earn money from your videos. But you need to have a minimum of 1,000 subscribers and a minimum of 4,000 watch hours on your videos. You need to set up two-step verification and you need to uh, um, agree to the community guidelines. Okay, here is customization of your channel. Yeah, we sort of went through this earlier. And then here is a little nugget in YouTube that not many people are aware of. And that is the audio library. YouTube holds a huge audio library of tracks and sound files yeah, and sound effects that you can actually download and add to your videos. You can search the library. Yeah, so it is a huge library that you can add for free to add to all your videos. And then finally, there is the settings of your channel. So you can specify the conversion or the currency for your uh, channel that you'll be using. You can specify the basic info of your channel. Yeah, you can have the country of residence. In my case, we can set that on the United Kingdom. Yep, and it can add keywords, which is digital marketing. Yeah, and I can say social media, and I can say YouTube, etc. Yep, there is upload defaults. So for every video that you upload, you can specify a standard element in the title, standard element in the description, the visibility you can specify, and public, private, or unlisted. So pri unlisted means it will not show in the, Google, in the YouTube search results. There is advanced settings that you can say. You can also in your video specify chapters. 
and you can spend those chapters will then be sort of summarized in the description of your video and that will be noted in the timeline of your video as well so it's really good to structure your videos there's permissions yeah, and this is where you can invite other people to make changes or to edit your channel. There is your community, that's where you can set moderation guidelines. And then there are agreements, yeah, there's the subject to the, the terms of service. Okay, so those are your settings. So very important that you understand this menu. Right, so our channel is ready, however, we haven't got any video in our channel yet. So let's go and add a video. So here to add a video, we click plus. Okay, and we're going to upload the video or we can also go live. Yeah, so that's where we're gonna do a live broadcast or a live stream. So upload the video and here I'm going to dra drag and drop a video or I can select the file. And here is my about us short infographic yep so here is the about us infographic that is the title of course i can make it as exciting as possible here i can tell the uh, short introduction to our company I can select a thumbnail. Of course, I have, it hasn't selected a thumbnail yet because it is still uploading and optimizing the video. Yep, you can then say what playlist do you want it to be part of, what audience. Yeah, there is an automatic uh, kids filter. Is it made for kids or is it not made for kids? So it's like a, a business type of theme. Yeah, here is paid promotion. Is there paid promotion in the video? Do you want automatic chapters? Allow automatic places, you can add tags. This is all about optimizing your video and that is for a different video that we will be talking about how to optimize your YouTube videos. Okay, and then it is going, okay, so that is all done. We're then clicking next. Yeah, I can say, do I want subtitles? Do I want to add an end screen? Do I want to add cards? Remember you see that on videos where at the end of the video you see two cards where you can click on uh, to go to another video. Again, I'm not gonna do that for this video and I'm gonna click next. Yeah, there is some copyright checks on music and then we click next and here is the video. I can then save and publish. I want it to be public. I can schedule the publication. Yes, yeah, so, but this is all there is to it. And I'm going to click publish. So I have now published my video. I can share it straight away on social media. Again, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to click close. And now I see my video in my content list. Yeah, I see a thumbnail, I see the title, I can see the different details. And if I now go back to my channel, I can see my video in my channel. But you see here, I have just put it as an upload because I haven't added any playlists yet. Yeah, so I need to go here to my customize my channel and I'm going to click first I'm going to add the channel trailer and the video I want to add to this is my about us infographic and people that subscribed, I'm going to give them the same video. I am now going to add a playlist. So here are my playlists. Oh, I first need to publish this. Yeah, there we go. I'm now going to go to my playlists. And I'm going to create a new playlist. And that is sort of info graphics, or let's say video graphics. All right, and I'm going to create my playlist. Okay, so now I'm going back to my uh, content. And I'm now going to say, go to edit this video. Yeah, let's see if the playlists are here. Yeah, go to the details, thumbnail. So here I now in the video details, I'm going to my playlists 
and I'm going to select the video graphics playlist. Done. And I'm going to click save. So now you see if I go back to my channel. Yeah, so I'm back to my channel. That my channel now looks slightly different. Yeah, I have my presentation, my featured videos. Okay, and I have my playlists. And I have my uploads. Yep, so this is how you can build your channel, how you can optimize your channel, add videos to your channel, um, add playlists to your channel. So I hope that was a, um, was a simple uh, yet effective overview for you how to set up your channel. So that is it on the channel. So let's finish today's video with giving you some tips on how to promote your YouTube channel. It is very important that you promote your channel for the simple reason you want to get subscribers. Yep. Remember your YouTube channel is your, so your YouTube social media network. It is where you can develop your brand. It is where you can get people excited. It is where you can build relationships with people who watch your videos. So it's very important that you do everything that's possible to promote your, uh, your YouTube channel. So how do you go about promoting it? First of all, very important in video marketing is the title of your video. Yeah, you see here the About Us infographics. You see that is the title of this video. It's pretty boring. If you look at most titles of videos on YouTube, yeah, let's say, let's say if I search on YouTube for, let's say, social media, you immediately see the titles that are powerful. How social media rewires your brain. Is social media hurting your mental health? Yeah, uh, like selfies and self-promotion, the hidden dangers of social media. Five crazy ways social media is changing your brain right away. Yeah, here a bit more neutral, but still powerful. How to develop a social media strategy step by step. These are the type of things that people like to, uh, to watch because those titles are very engaging. You know, hand in hand with the title is also the thumbnail that you're using for your videos. Yeah, so here you see a good example, 365 days of journaling. That's the thumbnail that they, uh, they use. Yeah, if you go to Social Media Examiner, you see good examples of thumbnails. Yeah, and they are all, they have the same color style, they have the same bold text, bold titles, they still show people. Yeah, so these are very powerful thumbnails for your video. And look at yourself, if you're doing a search on YouTube, yeah, what videos will you most likely watch? Videos where you like the title and videos where you like the thumbnail. When they spring out, when they scream out of the search results. Okay, so very important that you, um, that you look at that. Okay, next thing, how do you optimize your channel? Is by making sure that your videos are optimized. Yeah, so if I go to my videos, your videos, and then here you have your video and I go to edit the details, I can edit the title, the description, remember, keywords, I can edit the thumbnail, I can edit tags, yeah, I can edit um, language, lots of stuff that you can optimize about your videos. Another important factor is make videos that your audience wants to see. Understand your audience. 
Yeah, in digital marketing terms, we um, advise our clients to make customer personas. And customer personas, you specify their pains, their needs, and everything that is important for them when they buy your, uh, your product. Yeah, so by understanding what your audience wants, you then can tailor the content of your videos to their requirements. The next important aspect of your YouTube uh, channel is engaging with the community. Yeah, it's very important that when people start adding comments in your videos, that you engage with them. Yeah, that is one place where you sort of build your, uh, your community. You engage with people, but you also engage with YouTubers in your market, associated with your market, yeah, comment on other people's videos. So start engaging with other content creators in building your online YouTube reputation, as it were, and start sharing your videos yeah, with them. So that is an important one. Another important aspect of your uh, channel is that you need to cross-promote your own videos within your videos. Yeah, so it's very common if I go to Simply Learn, yeah, I go to their channel and I'm sure they have it on one of the videos. If I go to, let's say here, um, data analytics. Yeah, so it's a long course, but if I go to the end of the video, I'm sure you see that here at the end. Yeah, so you see here at the end, the next video that they promote. So you cross promote your other videos within your video that you're showing. It's a very powerful aspect of um, the uh, growing your YouTube channel, cross-promoting your video. Yeah, another one is very powerful, is what we call video series. Yeah, they are very good in driving traffic to your channel. Yeah, why? Because People want to, if they like it, they will come back for the second episode. Or if they jump in, for instance, for the first time in the fourth episode, if they see the episode, if they like the episode, then they say, hey, I want to watch episode one, two and three as well. So very important is to create series of videos. A good example is Social Media Examiner. Yeah, when you go to the Social Media Examiner YouTube page and you go to the playlists, here you see the journey. And the journey is a uh, basically a series of videos of the history of the company. Yeah, so you see episode one, episode two, episode three. Yeah, they even have multiple seasons yeah, of this. And this was very successful in uh, their, uh, their marketing promotion. Yeah, so create YouTube series. Okay, so back to my channel. Another way of promoting your channel and promoting your videos is to make sure that your videos are outside YouTube as well. So if I click on the video, yeah, and I click share, instead of just sharing the code here, yeah, the, the URL, I'm actually going to take the embed code. So the embed code gives you an iframe, which will actually show the video on your website, if you add this uh, iframe code to your web page. Yeah, and people will watch, can watch the video on your, um, uh, your website, but it will count as a few on, uh, on YouTube. Yep, and then when people click on YouTube, it'll take them to your channel where they can, um, where they can subscribe to your channel. Yeah, we talked about playlists, very important to promote your channel. Yeah, the playlists are important. And make sure you add calls to action to your video at the end of the video. Get people to do something, to buy something, or to sign up, or to register for an event. 
going live always works in promoting your channel. Yeah, doing live broadcasts, live behind the scenes, or when you're at an event, do live broadcasts. Really good way to promote your channel. You can promote the event, you can announce the event. It will lead to buzz before the broadcast, during the broadcast, and after the broadcast. Yeah, we talked about collaboration with other creators, with other brands. And then, of course, very powerful, you can actually promote your own ads by advertising. Yeah, so I can go to Google Ads, I can create a video ad, and at the video ad is my short video, and then that video will show before and during um, videos that people watch. Yep, and that will drive views on your videos, and views obviously will turn into subscriptions to your channel as well. And then last but not least, of course, is publishing your videos and your YouTube content on social media channels as well. Yeah, Twitter, of course, is a very obvious um, uh, place to promote your videos, but uh, use it on, um, on other social channels as well. Now, Facebook doesn't necessarily like it when you link to the YouTube video because Facebook wants you to upload the whole video. Yes, so then people will stay within YouTube, within Facebook to watch the video. But there are other social media channels where you can promote your videos as well. Okay, well, that concludes the session on your YouTube channels. I hope you liked this. Yes, yeah, so remember a YouTube channel is your social media network for your videos on Google and on YouTube. Yep, and it gives you a fantastic tool to widen your reach, to reach a global audience and to start building relationships with your uh, subscribers yep, and help them in the process of uh, familiarizing themselves with your products or your services, ultimately leading to them in buying your product or your service. YouTube Ideas for 2021 YouTube is the social media platform that needs no introduction. Launched back in the year 2005, YouTube was a fresh breath of air for the people who were slowly becoming aware of the hype that surrounded the internet. Several other platforms like Dailymotion, Wedme and VMO, which admittedly have their own fans, have tried to stand up against the behemoth that is the YouTube and failed. Slowly but surely, marketers began to realize the enormous potential that YouTube offered. They could add small advertisements like they do in the cable TV, they could show banner ads and do much more, and all of the thanks to the robust advertisement features that Google already offered. If you're not already sold on why it's important to advertise on YouTube, here are some facts that might change your mind. YouTube has more than 2 billion users across the world. A good fraction of that audience could be shown your product and could turn from users to customers. Next important fact is that 8 out of 10 marketers consider YouTube to be one of the best platforms to advertise their products and services. Followed by that, people watch 1 billion hours of YouTube per day. As you watch this video, you are contributing to that number. Next, 62% of the business use YouTube to post content. This could be just videos on their products, tutorials, event announcements and much more. 70% of the YouTube watch time comes from mobile. This means that when you create an advertisement for YouTube, you keep the mobile users in your mind. And finally, 90% of the people say that they've discovered new products or brands on YouTube. Which means that by posting on YouTube, your brand awareness is highly likely to increase. Now, let's talk about the video ideas. The first one is behind the scene videos. These videos give you the opportunity to showcase your audience how your business or brand operates. A creatively made video on the inner workings of your business will show off a more human side of your brand and make you more relatable to your audience. It is also guaranteed to get you loads of views and engagement. 
Here's an example how Amazon showcases the warehousing and distribution aspects of its products. It takes the viewers into the factories and involves the various people working there. This shows to the audience that even a large organization like Amazon, how each individual has an important role to play in the overall process. Next we have the company culture. A video that highlights your company culture will tell the audience what your business goals are, what its values are and why it exists. It can also focus on the various people who make sure the company works in the way it does. This can help better connect with your audience. Here's an example, a company culture video created by GoDaddy, the popular domain registrar. The video talks about how GoDaddy creates a fun, inclusive and energetic environment for its employees. It includes interviews of employees talking about why they enjoy working in GoDaddy so much and this helps the audience relate with the company and could also catch up the interest with some potential job seekers. Next we have the third idea that is the marketing team. A brand is nothing without the people working behind it and that's where these videos come in. These videos will help shine a light on the people who create the products that the audience knows and loves. This helps create a personal connection with the audience. These individuals can end up becoming mascots for your brand. Here's an example of Meet the Team focusing on Olympus Group. The video goes into the history of Mascot Makers brand and the people that make it a grand success. The lighthearted tone of the video also greatly helps with making it more relatable. Now we have number 4, Product Showcase or Announcement. A product showcase video aims to show the features and benefits of the brand's latest offering to its audience. These short, concise videos can inform the audience about everything they need to know about the new product or service. A product announcement video, on the other hand, can be used to give the audience a more detailed look into the product or service than the product showcase. It can include comparisons to older versions or competitors. The aim of such video is to show customers how the new product works and why they need it. Now this video needs no introduction. Apple's iPhone videos have always been short but smooth, sleek and concise representations of what the product would be like. Next at number 5 we have event announcements. These videos can build a hype regarding an upcoming event. It will also give you the opportunity to engage with your audience and build their interest. This promo video for the Data Innovation Summit 2020 hypes up the event posting the greatest minds in the tech, the most innovative companies and much more. The next video idea we have at number 6 is the explainer videos. These videos are aimed to tell users how a particular product or a service works. These tend to be much more useful than wall of text explaining how something works. They also have an added advantage of simplifying complex concepts and features to your audience. For example, we have our own video on digital marketing. We cover a number of different concepts like SEO, social media marketing, search engine marketing and more on a visual manner making it more likely to grab the attention of a viewer. Next at number 7 we have tutorials. Tutorial videos give users some actionable insights and knowledge that your users can learn from. These videos aim to be guides to information, complex concepts, hints, tips and tricks relating to your industry. Here we have our own digital marketing course video as an example. Unlike the previous example I mentioned, this video goes into much more detail regarding each of the concepts of digital marketing. On that note, if you guys are interested in learning about digital marketing, I suggest you start from this video. It's a great one to get started with. Now on the next video idea at number 8, we have the product tutorial. A product tutorial video will take your audience through the various features of your product offers alongside its intricacies. It can also detail some additional insights about your product. You can also explain the best way the product can be used. Here's a video of how the meditation app Headspace explains the app's usage with an interesting and creative animated video. Now let's go ahead with number 9. At the number 9 we have the webinar. A webinar thanks to its nature, provides your brand with loads of opportunities to interact with your audience. They are usually very accessible and easy to make. They are also very cost effective and can be reused as video content 
after the session is complete. Here's an example of Simply Learn's webinar where we talk to the industry experts regarding wide variety of topics while involving the audience by having the guest answer the audience questions whenever possible. Next at number 10 we have the live streams. Live streams for an event will help build excitement and hype for the event. It can be advertised on other social media platforms to generate some hype as well. These videos can also help you bring up your product to a larger audience and at a reduced cost. Here's an example of a live stream that constantly keeps a track of subscribers increasing for some of the most popular YouTube channels. Next at number 11, we have AMA or Ask Me Anything sessions. The AMA or Ask Me Anything sessions are usually live streams or pre-recorded sessions that feature questions collected from the audience. Although it originated from Reddit, these videos are finding a success on YouTube thanks to the interactivity that it offers. These sessions can also give your audience the opportunity to interact with you, provide suggestions, feedback and much more. Here's an example of AMA session with the actor Matt Damon where questions covering a wide variety of topics collected from Reddit were answered by him. Next at number 12, we have interviews. Interviewing someone interesting or of an authority within your niche can go a long way to grow your audience. These sessions are doubly advantageous too. Firstly, you and by extension your audience get to interact with an industry stalwart and since this video can be shared on your channel as well as theirs, you can expose your channel to a brand new audience. Here's an example of an interview between Marcus Brownlee, a popular tech YouTuber with Bill Gates. The interview covers a wide variety of topics and maintains a pleasant theme throughout. Let's now go to number 13, testimonials. A testimonial video help highlight the positive feedback from a client or a customer. They provide social proof and provide a unique perspective on your products and services. These videos can greatly help improve people's trust on your brand, shareability and credibility. Here's an example of Simply Learn's testimonial video that covers a learner's journey as he grew in his career thanks to Simply Learn's certification. A video like this can be greatly relatable to the audience and even encourage some of them to take up a certification. Let's go to our next video idea that is the number 14, Whiteboard Videos. A whiteboard video offers you a visually attractive way of explaining complex concepts. Usually, this involves a trained expert breaking through a complex topic on a whiteboard. Nowadays, there has also been the trend of digital whiteboard videos that work thanks to the visual style and charisma of the narrator. Here is an example of the whiteboard video Simply Learn created covering various concepts of social media marketing with the help of an engaging narrative and interesting visuals. Next up we have number 15, competitions. Competitions or contest videos give your audience the opportunity to get involved with your channel. These videos enable you to generate fresh and original content with little from your end. In an interesting example for foldable flight channel, users submitted their ideas for paper airplanes that would go to the farthest distance. The channel received a significant amount of submissions and saw considerable growth. Next we have 16, the lists. List videos are some of the most commonly found content on YouTube. Most users enjoy this type of content thanks to it being small, easily digestible and bite-sized. These videos can cover a wide range of topics like options to choose from, the best products, techniques and much more. The main advantage of these videos are they provide users with value while further involving them with your channel. Here's an example of a list that we have created on the top 10 skills you need to become a data analyst in the year 2021. If you are interested, don't forget to check it out. At number 17, we have case studies. Case studies talk about how your product or service have benefited clients and users. Videos like this can greatly improve relatability and making your brand seem more likable. Here's a video that analyzes Coca-Cola's marketing campaign and what it made one of the most popular brands in the world. Now, let's talk about content that may not be necessarily for a brand but for individual creators. At number 18, we have Tech Unboxing. These videos usually involve packages being opened for the first time. While these are fairly common for technology, these videos have also found success in fashion apparel. 
These videos enable the users to experience the products for the first time, sometimes even helping them decide between rival products. Here's an example of PS5 being unboxed by Marcus Brownlee, who goes into detail regarding each of its console components, controllers, and other specifications. At number 19, we have Tech Reviews. With Tech Reviews, you can talk about the various features of a particular product, what you liked about it, what you didn't, its price, and other practical information, and much more. Here, we have an example of OnePlus 8 Pro being reviewed in detail covering its many features, advantages, disadvantages and much more. And finally, we have number 20, Reaction Videos. Reaction videos are exactly what the name says. You giving an emotional reaction to something like a movie trailer, music video or TV episode. These videos encourage a large amount of engagement from the audience and make your brand seem more relatable. Here's an example of a reaction video involving teenagers reacting to the latest TikTok videos. These videos usually enable a large amount of likes, comments, and shares. Keyword research. So basically what we want to do is center our keywords, just like our website. We want to center our keywords around or our content around good keywords. So the videos on YouTube are no different than the web pages on our website. So if we have somebody who states YouTube is the world's second most well-known well engine, well, it is because it's right behind Google. It's not a search engine per se. It's a video platform, but if it was a search engine, it'd probably be second right behind Google. So YouTube is pretty popular. Majority of people use YouTube search every day to watch videos on a number of different topics. So they can find these videos in Google, but because YouTube's so powerful and so popular, people go directly right into YouTube for their searches. And so the whole idea behind YouTube being the second most well-known search engine is centered around keywords. So if you have the right keywords for your video, then the chances of you ranking higher increases on YouTube. So we're gonna share with you a few easy ways to do keyword research. This is the most most important step in getting your videos to rank on YouTube. Just like for those of you who watched any of the SEO videos we produced at, at Simply Learn, you know that keyword research is so essential to getting your web pages to rank on Google. Well, it's no different. Keyword research and choosing the right keywords is just as important for your videos as it is for your web pages. So we're gonna go into a few things to do here to find the right keywords. So we have the search suggestion. You can look at your competitors. We have different tools we can use, some other factors involved in Google itself. So let's start talking about some of these ways to really hone in and do some good research on your keywords to align them with your videos. So first thing is search suggest. So YouTube has a feature called autocomplete. So if you've done any searches on Google, it's very similar. If you're typing something in to YouTube search, then YouTube is going to suggest other related popular keywords. So let's take a look at that. If we go back to YouTube for a second, and I just type in machine learning, YouTube is going to populate on the autocomplete in the search bar some other popular keywords that we can potentially use. Or in this case, if I choose you know, machine learning tutorial, I'm gonna see a video about machine learning tutorial. So here you can see Simply Learn's ranked number one for machine learning tutorial, but there are other videos that show up in my search result. So we wanna be able to use the search suggestion box in the search box. Field. So when we're typing in something, you know, YouTube, just like on Google, is going to give us those suggestions. So if we're focusing on a video on machine learning, then, you know, we have some ideas of some other keywords that we could center around because these are our popular keywords. These are keywords that people are using to search on YouTube. So that's one suggestion. Looking at competitors is another suggestion. So we could search for keywords used by our competitors in their video and title and description. So let me talk a little bit about that. What you wanna do is you wanna to go to that particular channel of your competitor. So when you go to your particular competitor's YouTube channel, you wanna be able to click on the videos tab when you click on the videos tab then you're gonna sort by most popular and then what you could do is see a list of videos 
videos. And then when you look at a list of videos, you're going to choose a video. And then what you're going to do then is take a look at the keywords used in the title and description. And then once you do that, you're going to have a list of keywords that you can use yourself for that video. So for example, let's go back to YouTube. So if I go to type in Simply Learn, here's our channel page. Just by clicking on Simply Learn, I click on videos. Ever wonder if there's... So now I can see all the videos. Ever wonder if there's an easier way? Go back. So here I can see all the videos. Sort by most popular. Once I do that, then I can choose a video. This is the most popular video right now for Simply Learn. If I click on that video, it's automatically going to start playing. But what I could do is simply just look at you know the content description. So just by clicking Show More, I can see all the content that align with this video. That's one way to do it is simply by looking at your competitors. Now what you could also do is look at the tags associated with the particular video and so what you want to do is you want to look at the HTML and so that means looking at the page source so just like web pages what YouTube does is they look at meta tags so if you call from SEO in order to get your pages to rank you need to have a title tag and a meta tag description so videos are no different what we're doing uh, for YouTube is aligning certain keywords with the video so if you take a look and do a search for keywords by viewing the page source, you're gonna see all the keywords associated with a particular video. So for example, if I go back to YouTube and I look at the page source of a video, let's just say this video here, Facebook's ad tutorial, I'm gonna pull up the page source. And all I need to do is control F and type in keywords. And now for that Facebook video, I can see all the keywords associated with the video. So you can see there's a lot of different keywords we're aligning with this video. And so why do we wanna do that? Because we want you know, our video to show up for keywords that people may type in. And so if you use that YouTube autocomplete, it's going to give you those ideas, those most popular keywords. So if they're related, align those keywords with the video. So here you can see Facebook marketing, Facebook ad strategy, Facebook ads for beginners, so forth and so on. So there's a lot of keywords we've aligned here with that particular video. And again, all you need to do is look at the page source. So right clicking, view page source. Do a control F for keywords and you'll be able to see the keywords aligned. So you could do that for your competitors videos as well. So you could see what keywords your competitors using for a video that's most popular for their channel and is also ranking on YouTube and on Google. So using the autocomplete gives you those keyword ideas. Looking at your competitors videos also gives you some other ideas for keywords that you can align with a video that's relevant that you want to rank for. So let's look at uh, some other ideas here. So you can install plugins and there are plenty of plugins available on the Chrome browser that will help you see the video tags associated with a particular video. So a couple of examples are vidIQ and TubeBuddy. Those are extensions that work in Chrome and what they do is they give you the exact tags that a particular video is using. So for example, if I go back here, and I look at a video on YouTube, let's just say the machine learning basics video, I have vidIQ installed on my Chrome browser. So just by clicking on that, vidIQ is going to give me a lot of information about that video. They're just gonna give me an overview of their particular metrics. They're gonna give me some other information associated with Facebook, some engagement metrics. Really what I'm interested in is those keywords. So if I scroll down a bit, here I can see the video tags associated with the machine learning basics video. So vidIQ is telling me is these keywords are associated with this video. And not only does it show me what keywords are associated, I can also see where they rank. So for machine learning basics, this particular video ranks number one. If I go down, I could see what is machine learning and how does it work? I could see it's ranked number two. Here I could see machine learning algorithms, it's ranked number nine. So I can get some ideas of the types of keywords that are being used as tags for that video. Further down, I can also see some challenges tags but really this is the video tags or the idea place I want to be able to look to get an idea of the types of keywords that are associated with the video that are also ranking or not ranking so that's another way for you 
to really get an understanding of what keywords to use at the particular video. So autocomplete, you can look at the page source of a competitor's video, or you can use a Chrome extension. In this case, I'm using vidIQ to give me some information about the video tags for a particular video. So according to an industry study, using keywords and video tags will help you rank well on YouTube. So you have to use keywords and video tags if you want your video to rank. There's been a lot of studies. YouTube is so popular and videos are so prominent in today's world where if you have videos and you're going to upload them to YouTube, then associate the right keywords with those videos. So some important factors when we look at keywords, what we want to do is look at search volume. We want to look at competition. We want to look at relevancy. We want to look at the primary and secondary keywords that we want to use. So well-chosen keywords will help you rank. So we just gave you some ideas on how to do some keyword research. Again, those ideas were really to use the autocomplete on YouTube or Google. They're going to give you some popular keywords. You can look what your competitors are doing by looking at the page source and just looking at the keywords that are aligned with that video. Or you can use a third party extension in Chrome. In my example, I use vidIQ that gave me the keywords associated with that video. So you have ways to get the keywords. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we choose keywords with high search volume. They're going to drive more traffic to your video. However, we want to balance it out with keywords that have low difficulty and are easier to rank for. So you don't want to choose something very broad. That's just going to be very difficult to rank for. And of course, we always want to go with relevancy. So if we're talking about machine learning basics, then we want to choose keywords associated with that. And that's where that autocomplete comes in handy because what Google's going to do and YouTube's going to do is give us keywords that are very closely related to the video that we're trying to optimize for. And so we have a number of different keywords at our disposal that are relevant that we can look to see if they have good volume and low competition. And so the whole idea is we want to choose a keyword that defines the nature of the content. And then what we want to do is support that with secondary keywords. So we want keywords that are highly relevant to the primary keyword. So that's the way to go about aligning your keywords. You want keywords that are high volume, low competition, are relevant, and you want to choose that one keyword that is really what the content's about, and then those secondary keywords that support the primary. So if you have a machine learning video, you could choose your primary keyword as, in this case, the machine learning basics video. So well-chosen keywords help you rank well on YouTube, just like the machine learning basics. So if I go back to our video, our machine learning basics video, if I just type in machine learning basics, I'll be able to pull it up. And so here it is. If I click on it, I'm gonna go to YouTube. And so here I can see this keyword we know humans learn from their body is well aligned because it's in the title it's in the copy and it's aligned as a keyword tagged with the video so we know that that keyword has good volume low competition is relevant because that's what the video is about the basics of machine learning it's an introduction to machine learning so instead of honing in on just introduction to machine learning primary keyword is machine learning basics and then we supported that video with those secondary keywords what is machine learning because somebody who doesn't know what machine learning is probably going to type in that keyword. And then introduction to machine learning is a good secondary keyword because it's explaining the basics of what machine learning is all about. So primary keyword, machine learning basic, secondary keywords, what is machine learning and introduction to machine learning. So that's the whole idea behind choosing keywords. You want that keyword that really is going to define the content and then support that with those secondary keywords. So remember when you're performing your keyword research, choose keywords for your videos that Google shows on the video results page. So what I mean by that is your video can get more views if you rank on Google as well. Well, so the whole idea is not necessarily to be found on YouTube. It's also to be found on Google. So if I go back to Google and I just type in data science for beginners and I type in videos, then you could see we're ranked number one. So even if you're not looking at the videos, clicking on the videos link on Google search, you can always just, when you do a search, 
what Google's going to do is also put in the videos here on par as part of the search results. So what they're going to show you is the top videos that are ranking for that particular keyword. And so we may not rank overall for data science for beginners, but we're ranked number one in the videos category. And so if somebody's looking for a video that's important, and you can see here that these first two are ads. So what Google is doing is they're saying, hey, this is so relevant, this particular video for the keyword query data science for beginners that we're going to show it above the organic listings, even though it's a video. So the whole idea is to be found on YouTube and Google because you're increasing your visibility. You're increasing your chances of getting found on both search platforms. So according to Backlinko, Google ranks videos with keywords like how to, tutorials so you know a lot of the videos that you find on YouTube are going to be instructional based and so what Google's doing is they're saying hey if somebody types in how to or tutorial or an introduction to anything that's going to signal to Google that it's instructional it's going to help you rank so when you search for machine learning tutorial or how to become a machine learning engineer you're gonna get results related to that because if you look at these examples we have machine learning tutorial in our title or how to become a machine learning engineer so keep that in mind if you're creating a video and it's educational in nature you know use those key terms like how to and tutorials in the video title because that will help you rank so let's move over now to video title so we want to use our target keyword in the title of the video and again we want to make sure if it's educational to include that keyword tutorial or how to so for every video title YouTube has a limit of a hundred characters so we really have to pick and choose a really wisely so if we look at the video that we were focusing on a couple of minutes ago so machine learning basics here we could see under 100 characters we have machine learning basics what is machine learning introduction to machine learning and then the brand name so that is the title of this particular video so it takes into account the primary keyword the secondary keywords and the title and it also includes that really that key term that really Google and YouTube like and that's what is machine learning so it's helping us rank by having our keywords in the title with that key phrase what is Okay, so that's a, a good tidbit on creating a good video title is to align it with the right keywords, your primary and your secondary. And so we want to use those catchy words and numbers to gain high click through rates, just like you would on the title tag of your web page. We want to do the same with our video title because the video title is what's going to show up in search. So if I go back to, you know, search here, we could see, you know, data science tutorial data science for beginners. So we want to make sure in this case, you can see data science in five minutes. So that was purposely done so that, hey, I don't have time to watch a video. I only have a couple minutes, data science in five minutes. Okay, great. I'm going to click on the video and now I have an opportunity to watch something and learn something under five minutes. So choosing the right words in your video title is going to help you get that click through rate up. Remember click through rate is clicks divided by impressions and an impression is how how many times your video shows up in the search results on YouTube or Google so we want to keep our click-through rate high and in order to do that we want to be able to write some really good title tags for our video so use catchy words like a number or how to or what is because that's gonna resonate with people when they're searching now for the description what we want to do is we want to use the target word at the beginning of the description the title and the tags itself so if I go back to my video here, machine learning basics, we know it's in the video title and right off the bat, if I look at the description of the video here, I can see this machine learning basics video will help you understand what is machine learning. So our primary keyword is in the first sentence, right in the introductory of the description. And so that's going to bode well for optimizing our video. The description length is 5,000 characters. So we have a lot of characters to work with. So if I go back to my video, I click show more, we have a lot 
lot of characters to really describe what the video is about. Okay, there's no shortage, no shortage of including keywords into the content. So you have 5,000 characters. Go ahead and see if you can work in naturally your keywords. But one of the key tips here is just make sure that first sentence starts out with that keyword. That's a good tip. Of course, you always want to make it sound natural as possible. You don't want to stuff it with keywords at the same time. Work them in naturally. Work in your keywords naturally. And then include hashtags in your description to help the audience find your video is easily. So if I go back here, you know, we want to be able to include hashtags. So hashtags, it's like anything else you would use on social media it just signals to the end user hey this is what the video is all about and if I go ahead and type in that keyword then it's our video has a better chance because it's aligned with that hashtag and then there's target keywords and LSI keywords latent semantic indexing keywords we want to be able to use those keywords as target keywords with our video so if you recall the example I gave a few minutes ago we used the Facebook ads tutorial as our example here I could see all the target keywords associated with that particular video so don't be afraid to use those LSI related keywords meaning keywords that are related to the content use them as target keywords with the video so between your LSI keywords target keywords and then using our primary and secondary keyword in the title tag using our primary and secondary keyword in the description and then using hashtags in the description Description. the combination of all of that if we chose the right keyword then we should find that our video will eventually rank on YouTube so just doing these small tidbits with our keywords really help get our video to rank so at the end of the day we want to be able to use the tools available to us YouTube itself by looking at our competitors there's extensions like vidIQ the autocomplete to really find our good keywords and then incorporating those keywords into you know the title tag the description as target keywords hashtags we should really be off and running with our video on youtube hey there learner simply learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with purdue university and meta blueprint to learn more about this course you can find the course link in the description box below in today's video we are going to talk about youtube seo We'll be covering what it is, what you need to know, how you can optimize your videos to get found on YouTube and how you can use it to maximize your views. But before we go into this, let me introduce myself. I am Mark Kempman. I am your digital navigator for this video. And as usual, if you like the video, click the like button. And if you want to join our YouTube channel, click the subscribe button below. So you become part of our wonderful YouTube uh, learning community on, um, on Simply Learn's YouTube channel. So, are you ready to start? Let's get into some numbers here. Yeah? Let's give you some interesting stats about YouTube before we begin. And I'm going to show you that YouTube has to be part of your digital marketing strategy. Did you know YouTube is the second biggest search engine only after Google? There are 98 different language versions on YouTube, making it a global social network. Now, it would take a lifetime to watch all the YouTube content that's uploaded in the last hour only. So it's an amazing amount of content that is being uploaded. We, as the world's population, we watch about 5 billion videos every day on YouTube. Did you also know that YouTube advertising is very important to YouTube and to Google? Yeah? They generate more than $30 billion per year in advertising revenue. And on top of that, YouTube has around 2.5 billion monthly active users, making it the second biggest social media network in the world. So, do I need to convince you any further that YouTube has to be part of your digital marketing strategy? So let's talk about what you can do to increase your chances that your videos are going to feature in the YouTube search results and in the recommendations by YouTube. 
let's check about what we're going to talk about. In this video, we will be giving you an overview of what is YouTube SEO. Yeah, how do you optimize your videos for YouTube? Um, how does YouTube search work and how does your YouTube search engine optimization work? I'm going to share with you about 10 tips for optimizing your video for search on YouTube. And then at the end, I'm going to share with you my favorite YouTube SEO tools. I will also show you in a demo where to find all the tools that you can use within YouTube and within some of those tools to optimize your videos for SEO. So let's start with explaining what is YouTube SEO. As mentioned earlier, YouTube is the second most popular search engine right after Google. In fact, YouTube searches are actually more in numbers than Microsoft Bing, AOL and Ask.com combined. So we're talking about a very important part of your search strategy. YouTube, as I mentioned earlier, has about 2.6 billion active monthly users as of 2022, making it the second biggest social media network only um, preceded by, uh, by Facebook. Yeah, so now 62% of global consumers say they use YouTube. And since the creation of YouTube, its mission has been to provide fast and easy video access to users and the ability to share videos frequently. And since then, it has grown beyond expectations. Now, with so many people uploading videos on the one hand and watching videos on the other hand, how you, do you make sure that your video features in the top of the YouTube search results? And that's where YouTube SEO plays a vital role. So before I explain YouTube SEO, let me give you a little bit of a history about YouTube. Late 2004, an idea for a website for users to upload video dating profiles was born. And in February 2005, the website launched to a small subset of users, as I said earlier, as a video dating platform. Now, based on feedback from their subscribers in April 25 or in April 2005, YouTube turned into a free video hosting platform where each clip had a unique link. In April 2005, the first video ever was uploaded on the website by one of the, uh, the YouTube founders. And in May 2005, YouTube launches its beta version to the public for the first time and it became a massive hit. In a year later, October 2006, Google acquired YouTube for the not too small amount of 1.6 billion US dollars. In 2007, YouTube allowed YouTube creators, people who upload videos, to earn money from their content based on ad revenue. Yeah, turning their hobby into a career. And that, of course, gave a tremendous push of people getting into YouTube, creating content for YouTube, where they could link it to advertising, where they could make a substantial income. Now, in no November 2008, YouTube expands its ad offering to sponsored videos and free pre-roll ads. And in 2009, they launched a new music video service called Vivo in collaboration with Vivendi. So it moved on. In 2010, one of the most famous YouTubers, Felix Kjellberg, joins YouTube to create content under the channel's name PewDP. And that is now one of the biggest channels that you can find on YouTube. In April 2011, YouTube entered the broadcast business launching YouTube Live. And in August 2012, 2012 it became the go-to place for presidential elections by launching the YouTube Elections Hub. It grew exponentially and by 2013, YouTube had reached over a billion monthly users. 
Some other interesting facts. In January 2016, the music video for Adele's Hello was the fastest video on YouTube ever to hit 1 billion views. And a very strategic move for YouTube was in November 2018, when they rolled out a stories-like feature, YouTube Shorts, yep, where they would uh, sort of uh, relate to uh, Snapchat and Instagram stories, where videos are automatically deleted after a day. In November 2019, YouTube announced that the service would phase out the classic version of YouTube Studio, Yep, and to all YouTube creators by spring 2020. And I'll show you later what the latest version of YouTube Studio is all about. In July 2021, YouTube did a massive cleanup of all unlisted videos prior to 2017 were set to be private, making them unplayable. And in 2022, YouTube becomes the second biggest social media network after Facebook. So a whirlwind of a development, of a growth, of an adoption in the market. It's being played and being used all over the world. And it is the channel of choice for the younger generation to watch TV and to watch video. So a spectacular development for a fantastic channel. So what is YouTube SEO? Now YouTube SEO is a set of activities that you need to do to enhance the search rankings of your YouTube videos and or your YouTube channel. In other, your, in other words, when a user does a query on the YouTube search bar, yeah, which is related to your videos, what do, you do, what do you need to do to make sure that your video features higher in the YouTube search rankings or in the recommended videos based on that search? Now, many businesses of today, they see the power of search for uh, YouTube. Yeah, showing up and the importance of showing up higher in the search results. It helps them to reach more people because more people will click on the, uh, the video links. It helps them in building and promoting their brand. It helps them in creating customer engagements. More people will like the videos. More people will engage with the videos. And it is a great opportunity for brands to showcase their expertise. So it is a no-brainer for businesses to be on YouTube these days and to put all the effort in place to show up high in the search rankings. So as you know, the engine of a search engine is what we call the algorithm. So before we dive a bit deeper in the YouTube SEO, let's have a look at this YouTube algorithm. YouTube says in their own documentation that the algorithm is a feedback loop in real time that recommends videos to individual viewers according to their different interests. Now, quality of the user experience wasn't that important at the initial start of YouTube. For the first seven years, YouTube rewarded videos that got the highest number of clicks or views. Yes, so all based on number of clicks and number of views. But soon content creators started to abuse the algorithm approach and tricked people into getting more views because of clickbait video titles or catchy thumbnails. So Google had to do something about this. And to tackle this misuse of clicks and views and improve the user experience, they announced an update to the algorithm in 2012. They prioritized considering videos that had higher attention time, a higher watch time, a longer watch time. But still, YouTube wasn't able to provide what an individual user was looking for. So in 2016, they announced another update to their algorithm, and that's where they announced to, do, to use machine learning and deep neural networks for its recommendation system, completely changing the user experience of a YouTube user. In other words, YouTube is focused on hooking users into valuable, addictive content based on their interests. Yes, yeah, so how does YouTube SEO work? Let's dig a bit deeper into the YouTube algorithm. Overall, 
the YouTube algorithm affects the search results and the recommendation streams. So what do I mean with that? In response to a user's query, the YouTube's algorithm analyzes videos across thousands and thousands of channels to return a list of the most relevant videos. And the YouTube search results are highly affected by YouTube's algorithm. Yeah, and the factors that will make your video pop up in a user search query are your video's comments, the likes, the watch time, you can call this engagement, your video's title, the description, the keywords, the tags, we call this the metadata that matches the user's query. Yeah, so a lot of reasons yeah, why the YouTube algorithm picks your video to show up higher in the search result. Now, the algorithm goes through a two-fold process for recommending videos to a user. Yeah, there is the search results, but the second part of this, the SEO is the recommending video to a user, which you see on the left side after your search results. First, it ranks video based on data of their performance analytics. So for instance, videos that are trending, they have a higher priority. Second, it matches videos based on the user's history and the similar content they may have watched earlier. So ultimately, they would end up spending more time on the platform, going through as many videos as possible, automatically watching as many ads as possible. So now you got an idea about the end goal of YouTube's algorithm in 2022 and how it works to create a better user experience. Right, now that you understand the YouTube algorithm, how can you make this algorithm work with you? What I'm going to do here, I'm going to share 10 tips with you on how to optimize your videos for search. So let's start with tip number one. Tip number one is to make sure that you conduct your keyword research before you optimize your videos. Make sure your keywords are relevant to your video because they allow YouTube to determine the video topic and index the content and relate it to the user queries. So here are five simple steps for you to do to do your video keyword research. First, start with topics that you want to be an authority for. Identify those topics. And then for each of these topics, you generate keyword ideas. You find those keyword ideas by going on YouTube for the YouTube Suggest. Um, and you can go to Google as well. You go to other video platforms. You go to keyword recommendation tools. Yes, yeah, so you generate keyword ideas. Then for those keyword ideas, you're going to look for monthly search volumes and the difficulty for those keywords. How difficult is it to get a higher search ranking for those keywords? And there are tools that you can use to find out about these keyword um, metrics. You're then going to conduct a YouTube SERP analysis. So you're going to analyze the search engine result page for your keywords and find out what you can see. Yeah, it, a SERP analysis is very important because it helps you to determine the types of keywords that are currently ranking for that keyword, so the type of videos that are currently ranking for that video. It helps you in determining the quality of those videos and it also helps you in determining the search intent for those keywords. Why are people searching for those words? Is it with a buying intent? Is it with a learning intent? Or is it with an informational intent? And the fifth tip on your keyword research is to select those target keywords that are the most, uh, that have the highest search volume, have the, 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 the best competitive um, difficulty yeah, so it's finding the right balance and come up with a list of keywords 
that you can start using for your videos. And then you're going to assign those keywords to your video. Yeah, and make sure that those keywords are relevant to the content. And that you use them in the title, that you use them in the thumbnail, that you use them in the, uh, the, the, um, the transcription of the video. And I'll tell you more a bit about that uh, in a little bit. Yes, yeah, so it is all about capturing the content of the video, make it unique and encouraging viewers to watch your content. So keyword research is a very important topic. Second is to make sure that you use the right title for your videos. Titles is critical. There are two elements of your video that will decide whether people watch a video or not. It is the title of the video and it is the thumbnail of the video and more about the thumbnail later. So get a good catchy title. Make sure your keywords are in your title as well. Yes, yeah, so it's not only about explaining the content of the video in a very strong title, but also encouraging people to click on the video link. Yeah, so your keywords and your title play a very important role in this. Right, let's look at the third tip. That is the description of your video. Yeah, and for the algorithm, the description is very important. The algorithm uses the description to check the topic of the video. So make sure that your description includes the keywords as well. So the video description is the text below each of your videos. And viewers can read the YouTube video description by clicking on the see more button below the video. Yeah, so these descriptions usually include a short explanation of what the video is about, including the relevant keywords, links to any resources mentioned in the video, maybe affiliate links, website links, maybe social media handles, definitely ask the viewer to subscribe and chapters and timestamps. And Google now has the feature to sort of split up the content of your video in timestamps and people can jump from timestamp to timestamp. So YouTube descriptions, including all the right elements like the informative text, the links, the buttons, they can help the viewer to discover your video, can help you to increase your subscribers, to increase your views and to increase your watch time. So tip four is about tags. Very important to add tags to your video. YouTube uses tags to effectively index and search for videos, but also to suggest other videos you might be interested in. They help, again, the YouTube algorithm to understand what your content is all about and to serve it to the right users. So here are some best practice tips on using tags. Don't overdo them. Don't use too many tags. Use trending tags, yeah? so find trending topics with YouTube auto-suggest. Yeah, so, and use those trending tags. Be specific with your tags. For example, a road trip is a tag that is less broad and has a higher chance of ranking well in search engine than, for instance, the word vacation, because that is too generic. Also include synonyms. Think about the words your audience is likely to use when describing the topic of your video and use those synonyms to broaden the reach of your tags. And if you're out of ideas, use a tag generator to identify related and potentially trending tags. A really good tool for this is TunePocket. Right, let's move on. Let's go to the next tip. Tip number five, YouTube creates transcriptions and captions for your videos. And you can create your own transcription. Because the algorithm can't interpret visual content, only text and code. So if you can transform your video in text through a transcription, that can really help in your search effectiveness. So a transcription is the translation of what is spoken in the video. 
and you can use this transcription for subtitles in your video as well. They will also help you to generate captions for your timestamps in your video. Now, very important, YouTube will automatically generate a transcription file. But be aware, this transcription file will not be indexed for search. The, because the raw file may have typos or wrong translations, wrong interpretations from the Google automatic transcriber. So what you need to do is that you edit the transcription file and take out the typos and the mistakes. And once you've done that, you've then uploaded that transcription file up to your video. And once you've uploaded it again, YouTube will then index the file and use it for the search. So very important. And I'll show you later where you can find that trans transcription file. Tip number six, think about the length of your videos. Focus on both the watch time and the video length. And let's be realistic about it. If it takes 20 minutes to explain how to do something yeah, on your video, then make a 20 minute video. If you can say it in one minute, then make a one minute video. Don't waste people's time by stretching out the content just to hit a certain number of minutes. It's not about how long your video is, it is about when people stop watching your video. If you can keep watching, if you can keep people watching longer than average, then you'll get more views and eventually you will get more subscribers. Now YouTube wants to recommend videos that people stay engaged with, or in other words, watch longer. So if you can increase your watch time for your videos, then YouTube will reward you with better rankings in search results and recommendations across their site, which ultimately leads to more viewers. So a good way to keep people engaged is to use screens and YouTube cards. And that is tip six. Yeah, so an end screen is the YouTube feature that appears in the last five to 20 seconds of your video. And you can use it to promote videos, playlists, merchandise, and external websites. Your end screen can help you to get more views, more traffic, and subscribers from every video. YouTube cards are a bit more flexible. They are interactive cards that you see throughout a video that let you share clickable links to relevant content throughout your video. You can use those cards to promote a related video or playlist, to promote your YouTube channel, to encourage viewers to take a call or to take a poll, to direct responses to a verified off-site location like a specific landing page, or to ask viewers to donate to a charity. This will only work for the US, by the way. So non-US um, viewers cannot do um, those uh, donations to charity. Right, the next tip. Next tip is making sure that you increase audience engagement by increasing the watch time of your video. Yes, yeah, so this is all about the content of your video. And be clever with the content in your video. Try to use elements of surprise in your video or changing the pace of the music. Or ask for audio participation, for instance, by adding a quiz in your video. Very important to maintain people's interest. Yeah, and some other tips that you can do to keep people's interest is to make sure you have a strong video opening. Yeah, where you capture people's initial interest to make sure that you use chapters in your videos. Yeah, because that will give people a guideline of what to look out for. Use pattern interrupts, as we call them, like music, pace, different graphics, different camera angles. Or use storytelling techniques. Why are people so interested in stories? Because stories use techniques like good and bad, yeah, or one extreme to the other extreme, yeah, to actually keep 
people engaged in the um, in the story. Maybe create longer videos for a more targeted audience where you know they have a better interest in watching your videos. Maybe look at developing a series of videos. Yeah, because then you build up loyalty and you build up kind of a viewer membership for your video series. And then obviously use the YouTube insights, the YouTube analytics to learn about how effective your, um, your interrupts in your video are. Finally, then there is tip number eight. Tip number eight is an obvious one. Make sure that in every video you upload on YouTube that you promote your channel and promote the likes, the people to like your video, yeah, at the beginning and at the end of your video, just like I did on this video. And I'm doing it now. If you like this video, click the like button. If you want to subscribe to our video, click the subscribe button or subscribe to our channel. Yeah, very important that you do that. Now, a tip that is often overlooked is the power of the thumbnail. Yeah, people make a decision, as I mentioned earlier, to watch your video based on the title of your video and the thumbnail. And the more exciting your thumbnail, the more likely people will click. Yeah, so now YouTube will create thumbnails for you, but if you don't like them, you can also upload your own, uh, your own thumbnails. So you can design those on any tool, um, any creative uh, tool. Make sure that if you upload your own videos that they accurately represent your videos. Include a shortened version of the title of your video. Yeah, make sure that the text is large enough to read because particularly on mobile, and remember about 60% of people watch YouTube on their mobile. Yeah, so make sure that the text is large enough to read. Use contrasting colors to capture the attention. Make sure that you pay attention to white space between the images and create, add your brand logo to your thumbnail as well. And the final tip, it goes out, it goes without saying, tip number 10, make sure your video keeps your viewers attention. Yeah, your videos have to be unique. They have to be different. They have to be engaging. The best videos are controversial, educational, funny, or shocking. Check your analytics, your YouTube analytics, to see and to analyze your viewing behaviors. Learn from that and tailor your content to what you learn in your analytics. Okay, so those are the 10 YouTube SEO tips. And now let me show you where to find all this in YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, yeah, I'll show you here. This is of a company um, and this is their YouTube kind of channel. Yeah, if I go to the channel of the company, then here you see the channel. It is a shoe store. And here you see their videos. Now, I'm not going to explain the channels to you. But here you see, if you go at the top right, okay, you see this little photo here. You're going to click. I'm going to switch the account. I'm going to my solution. And I'm going to here have the dashboard. I'm going to look at the content. This one. How we made two and a half thousand African kids happy with a pair of shoes. So here you see the metadata of this video. Okay, so let me show, share with you the elements that we discussed. First of all, there is your video title that you can add here, right? How we made two and a half thousand African kids happy with a pair of shoes. Then here you have your description. Remember? Keywords, actually what I did here, I took the script of the video and put it here in the description. Yeah, you have a lot of characters available here. I always start the description with the, HT, with the website because that is another free opportunity to get a link to your website. 
Yes, so there is your title, your description. Then if I scroll down, then here you see your thumbnail. I've picked a thumbnail, yeah, the one that YouTube created for me. I can also upload my own thumbnail. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details. I'm just focusing on the elements that we discussed. So here you see show more. And this is where I can go to the automatic chapters. Yeah, so those are the chapters that YouTube will create for you. And here you see the tags. So this is where you can add all the tags for your video. Okay. And then you have the language, recording date, etc. And then finally here you have the visibility. Here you have the section for subtitles or transcriptions and your end screen and your cards. Remember what we talked about? So let's look at these subtitles. Here you see the file that YouTube created and that we have updated, as it were, took out the pilots. YouTube does this automatic. You can download it and then you can edit it. So very useful, very powerful tool. And this is, by the way, if you need to transcribe any text for any particular reason, yeah, just upload the text as a video on YouTube and YouTube will transcribe it for you. Yep, and then when you play the video, yeah, you see here how the text. This is Howard. Belongs to 40% of the African population. Yes, yeah, so extremely powerful feature of YouTube, the, uh, the transcriptions. So close that. And then here you see your end screen that you can pick. So you could a video and a subscribe. You can put it at the bottom. You can put it at the top. You can put it in the middle. Or you can relate to two videos. And here you see the end of the video where you can place those uh, end screens. Okay, and the same with the cards. So here you see the type of card. Do you want a video card? And then you can say which video do you want to relate it to? Do you want a playlist? Do you want to promote another channel? Or do you want to uh, add a link? But you need to be part of the YouTube Partner Program in order to add links to your cards. Right. So that is all there is to uploading your metadata to your videos. A very important part to your YouTube SEO. Cool, let's go on and let's close today's session yeah, with sharing my favorite YouTube SEO tools with you. There are five tools here, and I want to actually highlight two of them. Number one is Canva. Number two is Social Blade, TubeBuddy, Arefs Keyword Explorer, and Scifi. So Social Blade is a good tool to examine any popular YouTube video. Yeah, and then Arefs Keyword Explorer is a tool where you can study keywords, and not necessarily only for YouTube, but also for your Google SEO. One of my favorite tools on YouTube is a tool called TubeBuddy. It is specifically dedicated for SEO with a lot of helpful functions. Yes, so it actually helps you with performance tracking, analyzing keywords. Yeah, and it is a very simple Google Chrome plugin. Let's go to Tube Buddy Chrome extension. Yeah, here is Chrome Tube Buddy. Yeah, so here you see the Tube Buddy extension, and here I click Add to Chrome. Add extension. 
and you will now see up here that we're going to add an extension. Yeah, it has been added to Chrome and now you see here the, um, the extension, okay? Okay, so if I now go to a video, let's say simply learn social media. Yep, and I pick a video, social media marketing course. You can now see that we installed TubeBuddy as a plugin and we create an account and we logged in. And look at what I see now of the video that I have on my YouTube screen. Yeah, I have what we call videolytics. I can see the number of views for the video, the number of comments, number of likes. Yeah, I can see their social channels. I can see their channels, uh, the, the YouTube channels. I can see the best practices. Does it have a high res thumbnail? Have info cards been added and screen been added? Has comments been pinned, etc. So some work to do here. And here I get the tags that are being used for this video. I can also show search rankings. Yep, and I can have additional tools as well where I can look at various um, elements like search engine, share tracker, etc. So a very powerful tool on YouTube through TubeBuddy that gives you a whole load of metadata of each video. So if you are doing a social media video and you want to upload that on YouTube, look on um, videos that are similar to the one that you want to upload and look at their tags, look at their best practices, learn from that and you can use that for your own video. Okay, so that is TubeBuddy. And then the next tool I want to share with you is a simple editing, graphics editing tool. It is a tool called Canva. Canva is what I call Photoshop on steroids. It is a very easy site to create graphics, to create thumbnails, to create graphics that you can use on your videos. And there's even video tools in here as well that you can use. Yeah, you can create a design. You can just say, let's see what you can create specifically for YouTube. You can do a YouTube banner, a YouTube channel logo, YouTube display ad, a profile picture. You can make YouTube shorts, YouTube thumbnails, YouTube video chapters. So lots of stuff that you can create for YouTube where it has a set of templates for you that you can use in your, um, in your design for your YouTube video or your YouTube channel. So very powerful tool. I love Canva. Yes, Syfy is a good tool for, um, for analytics. So you can bring your YouTube analytics into Syfy, create a dashboard, and it allows you to monitor the success of your videos and your top ranking keywords. So lots of great tools that you can use for optimizing your videos. And my very favorite are TubeBuddy, Canva, and Syfy. Hey there, learner. Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about YouTube ads. We'll share with you what they are, what type of YouTube ads are available, how do you create them? What are the benefits you can get with them? So there's a lot to cover in this topic of YouTube ads. But before that, I am Mark Kempman. I am your digital navigator for this video. Um, and as usual, if you like the video, click the like button. And if you want to join our channel, click the subscribe button that you can find under this video. But before we go into the topic of YouTube ads, let me share with you a new program that Simply Learn has put together, together with Purdue University, Marketing Land, Search Engine Journal, and yes, Meta as well. And the good thing about this course is that you will get all the skills in digital marketing to easily complete the Meta Blueprint 
courses as well, which are very high standard courses on everything you want to know about Facebook and Facebook advertising. So I can highly recommend this course and just follow the link and the link will be in the um, in the notes below the video as well so don't hesitate but join this video right enough about this let's go straight into um, youtube advertising now let me give you some history to begin with in 2007 youtube introduced the ability for creators to monetize their videos with ads yeah, so I'll come back to that later. There are three players in YouTube advertising. There is the YouTube creators, there are the brands, and there is Google itself, of course. Well, the good thing about YouTube ads, that is brands are able to reach an audience and video creators in YouTube, they are able to monetize their, uh, their videos by enabling brands to place ads before or during these videos. Initially, these ads were displayed as overlays on top of videos or as a pre-roll ad before the video played. Now, in 2010, YouTube introduced TrueView ads. They allowed viewers to skip ads after five seconds and only charged advertisers if viewers watched at least 30 seconds of the ad. So that was a benefit for um, for the viewer, they could skip the ad, but also a benefit for the brands because the people that watched the whole ad were more likely to engage with the brand. Now in 2015, there was a new introduction from YouTube, which was the six second bumper ads. Very short, flashy ads that you can run um, during, uh, during videos. In 2016, YouTube faced controversy yeah, when ads um, appeared on extremist and controversial videos. Yeah, so that led to many videos pulling their ads and YouTube really had to get their act together. So YouTube implemented stricter ad policies and introduced new ad formats such as sponsored cards and mid-roll ads. In 2018, YouTube introduced the non-skippable ads for viewers on desktop devices, so you could not skip the ad. In 2019, YouTube introduced ad pods, so you could do two back-to-back -back ads before a video starts, and they can be skipped after five seconds as well. Now today, YouTube offers a variety of ad formats for advertisers, including display ads, overlay ads, sponsored cards, skippable, non-skippable video ads, bumper ads, and mid-roll ads. And we're gonna cover these later in this video. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about what we're gonna discuss in this video. We're gonna start with giving you a short introduction to YouTube ads. Yeah, what is it, Where? how can you use it? But then look at the benefits of using YouTube ads. And then of course you wanna know what are the different types of YouTube ads that I can use. And I'm gonna share with you the library of ads that Google has and which ads you would wanna use in what particular circumstance, circumstance. Now, a very big benefit of YouTube ads is the targeting that you can do with the ads. So we'll cover the YouTube ads targeting, and then I'm just gonna go into Google Ads with you and show you how to create a YouTube ad. And you will see that it's a very simple thing to do. And then finally, we'll close the session with some tips and tricks on YouTube ads. And that should be it for Google and uh, YouTube ads. So let's dive straight into this. Let me give you a short introduction to YouTube ads to begin with. So let's talk about video <coughs> and advertising with videos. Video advertising refers to the use of videos to promote a product, a service, or a brand. It's very straightforward. Video ads can be displayed on various platforms like desktop, on TV, on social media, on websites, and it can take different forms. Yeah, so it can be a pre-roll ad, it can be a mid-roll ad, and it can be sponsored content that you can see on the website. Video ads are very, very powerful because they are more engaging and more memorable than any other type of ad. People prefer to watch things and what they see 
they will remember. They can convey emotion, they can convey storytelling and visual appeal, making them more compelling than traditional ads. You can also reach a much wider audience and it can be easily shared across social media. So it increases your reach and it increases your um, brand awareness. Now, one of the issues with advertising on desktops is that a lot of people have um, ad banners um, of ad blockers installed on their desktop. And that is a, um, and that limits the reach of general advertising on desktop and also limits the reach of your advertising on YouTube. Because if I have an ad blocker installed, I won't see any ad on YouTube. Now, there's different ways of getting, um, getting about that. Yes, so try to work with the, your, um, your audience that they, um, that they don't use an ad blocker <coughs> to have access to your, uh, your content. But the reality is that the best platform for advertising um, is on, uh, for video is on mobile. Yeah, mobile devices, they have, they have fewer ad blockers and you will reach more people. Bear in mind that probably 70-80% of people watch videos on YouTube on their mobile anyway. Yes, yeah, so mobile devices, they're becoming increasingly popular for video consumption, video consumption, more people watching videos on their smartphone, therefore a much better area, much better channel for you to advertise. Yeah, so they can be much more in, in effective on mobile to capture users' attention and to generate engagement. Because mobiles are more personal yeah, and they're more intimate than other devices. So mobile video ads are more cost effective, you can target specific audiences and you can optimize them for the different uh, mobile devices. So all in all, Mobile ads, very powerful. Desktop ads, still a very good medium to use for your video advertising. Now, let's go to then to the next level and let's talk about YouTube ads. So, YouTube ads are a form of video advertising displayed on Google's YouTube platform. Yes, so advertisers, they can create and upload videos yeah, to uh, be displayed, but then they can turn them into ads that they can be displayed before, during, after YouTube videos, or as standalone ads. And they can take different forms, as I mentioned earlier. They can be pre-roll, mid-roll, display ads, sponsored cards, bumper ads, and what have you. And the big advantage of YouTube advertising, you can target very specific audiences based on demographics, interests, behaviors, and a lot more. And we'll cover that in the later uh, section of this presentation. So it can be a very powerful tool for brand awareness, for generating leads, and for driving sales. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this. Targeting <coughs> is one of the most effective features in YouTube ads. Yeah, so there's lots of ways that you can target people in, um, in YouTube advertising. You can do demographic targeting. So targeting based on age, gender, parental status, household income. You can do interest targeting, targeting based on your a user's interests and habits on and off YouTube. You could do behavioral targeting based on the user's past behavior and interactions with ads and content. You can also do the remarketing, where you can target people who have interacted with your website or with previous ads. You can do custom intent targeting, like targeting users based on keywords and phrases that they have used when they searched on Google and YouTube. You can do placement targeting, where you can very sort of specify which channels, videos or types of content you want to use. You can do topic targeting, yep, so you can target videos and channels related to the specific topics or categories of your business. You can target by location and you can also target by device. So this again is one of the biggest benefits that you can get 
in using YouTube advertising. Another feature is that YouTube ads are part of Google ads. Yeah, and that is Google's advertising platform that allows you to create and display ads on various Google properties, including YouTube, including Google Search, Google Maps, Google Display Network. You can do shopping ads. So it is a fully blown advertising platform and YouTube ads is just part of that. So it's the same interface. So if you're used to using Google ads for creating search ads or display ads, and I'll show you later, YouTube ads is just another feature of that functionality. You can even use the same Google ads account to create and manage your YouTube ads. And you can set the same targeting options. You can use the same audiences that you created and you can use the same reporting tools. So very easy, very simple to set up and it makes it very easy for advertisers to run and to track their campaigns across multiple platforms. YouTube Analytics is another tool that provides data and insights on the performance of your YouTube videos and your YouTube channel. And those insights are very, very powerful. You can track metrics like views, watch time, engagement, audience demographics, and it provides information on traffic sources, revenue generation, if you have activated that, and even audience retention. How long will people watch the video and when do they drop off? And you can learn a lot about that on fine tuning your, uh, your content. So YouTube analytics, YouTube insights can be used to analyze the effectiveness of your YouTube ads. You can check, use it to monitor your growth of your channel and to optimize your videos. And it can be accessed through the same analytics dashboard and the first same YouTube studio dashboard. And you can customize and filter the data to get more specific insights. Right, so then also you need to understand the kind of the ecosystem for YouTube advertising. There are three players, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are three players that are involved in the YouTube advertising. There is the content creators or the video creators, there are the brands and there is YouTube or Google. And all three would like to make money. And the beauty is that Google and YouTube, they put together an infrastructure that allows brands to make money and that allows YouTube video creators to make money. So video creators, they have their videos on YouTube and they have their channel. And when you um, qualify and meet certain um, conditions like number of followers or subscribers to your channel, um, number of hours that people have watched your videos, you can qualify for the advertising sort of partnership. Yep, and then when you qualify for that, you or Google will add you to the video network that brands can use to place their ads. Yeah, so there is a money making opportunity for video creators. Brands have another objective. They want to reach as big an audience as possible. Yep, and that's the beauty of YouTube. There are so many people using YouTube, so many people watching videos on YouTube. It is a fantastic platform to show their ads on the content before or during the videos from the YouTube video creators. Yes, so the YouTube video creators can't live without the brands to make money. The brands can't live without the YouTube video creators to actually reach their advertising objectives. And then Google and YouTube is the third party managing this ecosystem, as it were. And Google, YouTube is always sort of doing the, the, the balancing act of keeping both the video creators and the brands happy. Yeah, so keep that in mind. Advertisers, video creators, and YouTube, the three key players in, um, in YouTube. So what are the benefits then of using YouTube ads? Well, let's look at some numbers. The main benefit 
of YouTube advertising lies in the size of YouTube. YouTube has over 2 billion monthly active users and it's the second most visited website in the world. Over 1 billion hours of videos are watched on YouTube every day, which is equivalent to over 114,000 years of video. Now, the most viewed video on YouTube, by the way, is Baby Shark Dance by Pinkfong, with over 9.5 billion views as of February 2023. And the highest paid YouTube earner, yeah, so in 2021 was a nine-year-old kid named Ryan Kaji who earned almost $30 million from his YouTube channel, Ryan's World. So not only, of course, there's partly advertising, partly sponsorships. Yeah, so there's lots of other ways to monetize your channel as well. So YouTube is a channel that is out there. And it is a, a fantastic channel to get a huge reach for your campaign. Now let's dig a, bit, dig a bit deeper. There are several benefits for advertisers of YouTube because of its sheer size. It gives you, as I said, the largest audience reach. Yes, so with over 2 billion active users each month, it is a tremendous network where you can reach everywhere in the world. Yeah, so you have access to a huge audience and you can reach a large number of potential customers. That audience is also very diverse and it spans all age groups, genders and geographic locations. Everybody uses YouTube. Yeah, so not like TikTok where maybe a younger generation, YouTube spans all age groups. <clears throat> so you can tailor your ads to specific demographics and target very specific groups. YouTube gives you a variety of ad formats, as we talked about earlier, and I will share that with you. So that is a big menu of sort of um, op options that the advertiser has. Because of YouTube's size and its advanced targeting and capabilities, it is also a very cost-effective way of advertising, with relative low cost per impression or cost per click. Yes, yeah, so making it very cost-effective. And another big benefit of using YouTube for your targeted advertising is the high engagement in user, on, uh, on, on, the, on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube users spend an average of 11 minutes per day on the platform. That indicates quite high engagement. And they have an, an incline to comment, to like, to share the content. Yes, yeah, so it's a big opportunity for brands to build a relationship with their key audiences. So here are some more facts about YouTube's targeting capabilities. Yes, yeah, so in YouTube, you can reach 90% of online audiences in the United States. Yes, yeah, so YouTube is available in over 100 countries and it supports about 80 different languages. Now, what does that mean for your targeting? Yeah, so it allows you to reach users in basically every ge geographical location, from entire countries to individual cities or even zip codes. Yeah, so they allow you to reach users based on their language preference. So, you, for instance, you can target people who speak a specific language or who have set their preferred language on, the, on their YouTube account. So another interesting statistic that over 70% of in-stream ads on the YouTube platform are now delivered programmatically. Yeah, which basically means there is a growing trend towards automated buying and targeting of your YouTube ads. So all in all, the targeting on YouTube is a big benefit of using YouTube ads. So let's look at some more benefits. YouTube advertising is very cost effective, but it is important to carefully plan and execute your campaigns to maximize your um, effectiveness. It can be cost effective based on various factors like your target audience, your advertising goals and your budget. Yeah, you're getting different advertising formats. 
So that can relate to the cost and the benefits that you're getting. And the YouTube um, advertising is typically based on a cost per view, which means you only pay when someone interacts with your ad. And the average cost per view on YouTube ranges from let's say $10 to $30. But again, this can be slightly different based on targeting ad format and competition. So also use the analytics that you get yeah, to measure the effectiveness of your campaign and to, measure, to, to, to get the ROI of the campaign that you're using. Now, for me, one of the big benefits of using YouTube ads is the increased engagement. YouTube's high engagement and targeting options makes it a very good platform for marketeer to reach a large audience and to build relationships with the customers. Yeah, customers spend an average of 40 minutes per session to watch videos. So with over 2 billion monthly active users, yeah, you have a huge audience available that you can build their relationship with. And the good thing is YouTube videos are very highly shareable. So users, they share their videos, they share the ads, and they want to share it with their family and their friends through social media and messaging, messaging apps. So there's lots of features on YouTube, like comments, likes, and subscriptions, which helps with this engagement and helps building the, um, the, uh, the relationship with your audience. YouTube's recommendation algorithm also helps to promote videos to users who are likely to be interested in them. And that increases the reach and that increases the engagement with your marketing campaign. So by leveraging YouTube's high engagement, high best targeting capabilities, you can build brand awareness, drive traffic to your website, increase conversions at a lower cost compared to traditional advertising methods. Yep, and then finally, and we talked about that, yeah, it is all about the measurable results that you get. And through the YouTube analytics, you get powerful data, powerful insights to optimize your advertising campaign and improve the return on your investment on the platform. So you can get very detailed data in like clicks, impressions, conversions. So you can really make decisions on improving your campaign based on the data that you get out of the um, out of the Google, uh, the YouTube uh, YouTube analytics. Yeah, so you can also track the performance of your competitors and benchmark their performance against industry standards, and that can help you improve your campaigns as well. So lots of benefits that you can get out of YouTube ads, and um, that's why it is such a popular uh, advertising platform, because brands, they really believe that YouTube is probably one of the best channels for advertising. Okay, now let's look at the different types of YouTube ads. There's quite a few of them. First of all, it is important to understand the term TrueView ads. So TrueView is a type of video ad formats offered by YouTube that allows users to choose whether or not to watch an ad. And with TrueView, advertisers only pay when a user chooses to watch the ad. So that can help that you only get interested users engaging with your content. TrueView ads can be targeted like we talked about earlier again, yeah, based on demographics, interest, search history, etc. Yeah, so they can also be optimized for specific marketing objectives like brand awareness, consideration, or action. Yeah, so that can help you achieve your campaign goals. So overall, TrueView ads they are flexible, effective. Yeah, and allows you to reach a large audience while ensuring that you only pay for engaged views. So, the first type of ads are TrueView in-stream ads. TrueView in-stream ads are very popular and effective for reaching a large audience on YouTube and for driving engagement and conversion. 
So they are a type of true view ad that appear before, during, or after other videos on the platform. Yeah, so true view in-stream ads are skippable video ads. So you can skip them after five seconds. So they can be up to three minutes long. And again, the user has the option to skip them after five seconds. And advertisers only pay when a user watches more than 30 seconds of the ad or the entire ad if it's shorter than 30 seconds. Or engages with the ad by clicking on a call to action or companion banner. Okay, so those are the TrueView skippable in-stream ads. We then have the TrueView discovery ads. TrueView discovery ads are a type of TrueView ads yeah, that appear in search results on the YouTube homepage and along related videos on the platform. Yeah, whether it's the desktop or whether it's the mobile. They are thumbnail images with a headline and a description that appears in the search results and on the YouTube homepage. So when a user clicks on the ad thumbnail, they are taken to the advertiser's video on YouTube. So they can also appear alongside related videos on the platform. And you only pay when a user clicks on the ad thumbnail to watch the video. So they are very common. You see them a lot on, um, on YouTube. Yes, so those are the TrueView discovery ads. Next, the bumper ads. I love the bumper ads. They are very creative and a very effective way for advertisers to make an impact in just six seconds and reach a large audience. They are a type of video ad format that are six seconds long. They're short, snackable and memorable. They're non-skippable and play before the video content that users have selected to watch. <clears throat> so they are really good for advertisers to reach a large audience quickly and effectively. And they're often used in conjunction with other ad formats like TrueView in stream ads. They can be targeted to specific audiences based on their demographics, their interests, search history, etc. And advertisers only pay for impressions. So they pay, for instance, for every 1,000 times the bumper ad is shown. Right, the next one are the non-skippable in-stream ads. A very effective way for advertisers to reach a captive audience on YouTube. And again, to drive conversion and drive engagement. It's a type of video ad that appear before, during or after videos on YouTube. Yeah, so they are non-skippable which means that viewers are required to watch the entire ad before they can continue watching the video they selected. They can be up to 15 seconds long and they can include a call to action, which is very important. Yeah, so to encourage viewers to engage with the advertiser's brand or product. And you pay uh, only when the user watches the ad to completion or the first, sec first 30 seconds if the ad is longer than 30 seconds. Right, and then you have the outstream ads. Outstream ads are an ad type that appears on partner websites and mobile apps, but not on the YouTube platform itself. Yeah, so they, those ads, they often play on the page rather than in a video player, which means they don't require users to watch them to continue viewing the content they have selected. They can just browse on, on the uh, page. They're designed to be mobile first and are only available on mobile devices. Makes them a great option for advertisers looking to reach and increase a mobile audience on YouTube. Yes, yeah, so they can be up to 15 seconds long and can be optimized for specific marketing objectives like brand awareness, consideration or action. So you only pay when a user views the ad for at least two seconds or interacts with it in some way, like tapping the ad to expand it or clicking through the advertiser's website. Right, and then there is the must-had ads. Must-had ads are a premium ad format offered by YouTube and they appear at the top of the YouTube homepage. Yeah, on desktop and mobile devices. 
They're typically reserved for large brands and designed to provide maximum visibility on the platform. So they can be up to 30 seconds long and can include a call to action to, in, to encourage viewers to engage with the brands. So it's great for promoting new products or services, great for building brand awareness or driving traffic to your website. So you can run a must-had ad for a single day or for a longer period of time, depending on the goals of your uh, campaign. And uh, costs can vary depending on factors like the time of the year, targeting options selected, and the duration of the campaign. And then finally, there is the overlay ads. So overlay ads is very effective if you want to drive traffic to a landing page and to generate leads yeah, for a product or a service. But sometimes they can be seen as intrusive. So it's important to create ads that are engaging and relevant. Yeah, so they are display ads that appear on top of a YouTube video while that video is playing. Those ads are transparent and can be text or image based. And they usually appear, as you see here, at the lower 20% of the video player. To promote a product or a service or a brand, they can include a call to action, targeting specific audience. So you can run the overlay ad for a specific video or for a group of videos in a particular category or channel. So cost for the, fan, for the brand depends on factors like targeting options selected, duration of the campaign, and the competition for ad inventory. So, as you can see, a whole library of ads available, yes, yeah, so um, that YouTube uh, has and that you can use. Yep, so good. Let's move on. Let's look at the YouTube targeting. We talked a lot about the YouTube targeting, so let's summarize this targeting on the next slide. Yes, yeah, so first of all, there is the demographic targeting. So you can target people by age, by gender, by income, and by children. Yeah, so there's the behavioral targeting. So you can target viewers based on their search history, the watched videos, or the website app and activities. You can also remarket people. So you can advertise, your, you can show ads to people who have visited your website. So if you have a website and somebody visited a particular product page and then left your website, then you can target him on YouTube with an ad for that particular product, maybe doing a promotion. You can look at affinity audiences. So you can target certain interests and traits with specialized audiences, and you can look at similar audiences. So you have a particular audience selected and then you can ask Google, can you sort of select a similar audience with similar interests or behaviors? So very extensive targeting options and it is one of the key benefits that you get out of YouTube advertising. Good. Now, how then do I create a YouTube ad? To create a YouTube video ad, you have to go into Google Ads. Yes, yeah, so you must have an account on Google Ads. You just click sign in and that will take you to your standard dashboard for your, all your activities in Google Ads. And you will find out, you will see that Google you, or that YouTube Ads is just a particular section of the Google Ads. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at the create. So we're going to click on the create button and we're going to create a campaign. And as you will probably know with um, Google Ads, there is goal guidance. Yeah? So you, Google will advise you on the type of goals that you can set for your campaign. And based on the goal that you specify, Google will automatically select the type of channels it has available for the advertising. You can also decide to do campaign creation without goals guidance. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to click brand awareness and reach. And here is immediately, 
you can select what type of ad, what type of campaign type you want to run. Do you want to do a display ad or do you want to do a video ad? And obviously, since we're talking about video ads on YouTube, then you click here on video. So you're going to do a video reach campaign. Yeah, you can do an ad sequence by showing ads in a particular sequence to individual shoe viewers. Yes, yeah, so that can be really good to show viewers a series of ads following the customer buying cycle, for instance. Or you can look at people, reach people in, audience, in audio while they're listening on YouTube with audio-based ads. So we're going to go for a video reach campaign. And then here you see the type of ads that you want to do. Do you want to do the uh, bumper ads? or skippable in stream, yeah, or a mix, yes, yeah, so, or do you want to do non-skippable, share your entire message with up to 15 seconds, and remember these are the ads that we talked about in the ad overview. So we're going for bumper, skippable in stream, or a mix, yep, and then we click continue. So here is the campaign name, we'll do your budget, let's say we're going to spend 100 pounds a day. You'll then have your start date. I'll put that a bit further out. Let's say the 1st of August. We're going to end in two weeks or select a date required. Let's say we're going to end in two weeks. Yeah, so that is a 6.67 daily budget. So let's bump that up. I can also say, yeah, the daily budget. Yeah, so I'm going to do a daily budget of 100 pounds. Yeah, and then here I have the locations. Yeah, so now and I can be very specific with my location. I can even do a, uh, let's say, RG4. I can just target by zip code as well. Yes, so, and I can make that as advanced as possible. Yeah? So here you can see a map even. So if I want RG, yeah, so I want RG7, you see how the map expands. Yeah, RG, I can do RG40 or RG9. Yes, yeah, so here I see how that kind of develops and how you can be very specific with the targeting for your ads. And here you see an estimate, estimated number of impressions that you would get. You can pick a language, you can do content exclusions. Remember we talked about that, where advertisers were not happy with the, um, the videos where their ads were shown. So here you can say content exclusion. And then here in the ad group, you're going to specify your segmentation. That's where you're going to specify your targeting. Now, I'm not going to go into the details here, but again, these are all the topics that we've sort of discussed in the presentation. Yep, and then here, of course, what you need is your video ad. So here you're going to specify the link, or you're going to basically add the link of the video on, that you have uploaded on YouTube of your ad, because of course your video needs to be on YouTube. Yep, so that is one. So you create your ad on every video creation platform. Yep, and then you upload that video ad on YouTube, and then you have the YouTube link, and that's where you paste the link of the YouTube ad. If you don't have an ad, then you can just create one in a few steps. Yeah, and YouTube actually has a video ad builder that you can use. Now, where you can just use templates, how cool is this? Yes, yeah, so now, of course, you need to be aware that if you use any of these templates, you're not the only one who will be using those templates. So it'll make your um, campaign slightly more generic. Yeah, and um, maybe not as unique as you would like. But the fact that it's in there is a big benefit yeah, if you need to create an ad from, uh, from scratch. But there's lots of other tools that you can use to create your video ad. Yeah, so let's just go to youtube.com. 
Yeah, and I will take a video, let's say from one of my clients. So do <clears throat> that's this one, how we made 2,500 gets happy. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, I guess I'm just gonna take this link in my ad. I'm gonna paste the URL here. Yep, and then here you see how your ad is going to be like. Yes, so here is the skippable. You have your display URL and your final URL. When people click on it, remember that it's the same as with Google Advertising. So you can use the display, advertise, the display URL as part of your promotion. Yeah, so that could be a solution .co.uk forward slash summer campaign or something. Yeah, and then you can have your final URL as well. Yeah, and then you can add a call to action in your ad. Yeah, that can be a headline. And here you see how all of that is going to sort of show on the uh, on the ad. Yeah, so lots of ways of adding your ad here. And then you set a bit for your ad and then you basically create the campaign and your advertising, uh, your YouTube ad is ready to be executed when um, you, based on the timings that you've set. And that is honestly, that's how simple it is to advertise on YouTube. Just go into Google Ads, pick an objective that has video ads as their uh, one of their channels, then go through the campaign setting, go through the um, ad group setting, select your targeting, and then link it to the ad that you've uploaded on YouTube as the ad that you want to use for this campaign, or use the YouTube tool to create your video ad in YouTube. Good, so that is summarizes how you create a YouTube ad. And now let's close today's session with giving you a few tips and tricks on uh, using YouTube ads. So first of all, keep it short and engaging. Short, simple and engaging. Because YouTubers have a short attention span. Yeah, make sure you bring your message across in the first few seconds of your ad. Try to summarize your ad, try to use storytelling. Tell a story that moves your audience, that builds an emotional connection. Yeah, so think about storytelling concepts like there's a hero and there is an, uh, uh, there's an enemy. So there is a victory, there is, um, yeah, there's lots of ways that you can build storytelling elements into your, uh, your YouTube ads. Don't forget to add a call to action to your ads because it encourages viewers to either go, for instance, to your website or to buy a product or to sign up for an event or to register for something. Yes, so make sure that you use a call to action in your, uh, your videos and even mention that call to action in your videos as well. Use the right target, um, yeah, so target the right audience so you add reach the right audience because that will give you the best return on investment on your ads. Optimize your ads for mobile. That is a very important tip. Yes, of course, because many people, and we're talking probably about 70% plus, view YouTube on their mobile phones. So the ads will be seen on their mobile phones. And very simple. Yeah, so if you use, for instance, text on your ads, yeah, on desktop, it will be easily readable, but on mobile, it may be unreadable. So when you make an ad, always test it on your mobile device as well and test and check the user experience that people will get. And then, of course, continuously test and optimize your ads to improve their effectiveness. Maybe the description of your YouTube ad, or the description or the title of your YouTube ad, or the thumbnail of your YouTube ad, or the opening of your ad. So there may be different ways. Test and optimize to make sure you get the best return on investment. Of hey there learner, 
Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Instagram followers, the people who choose to keep up with your content on the Instagram. They are like your own personal cheerleaders, following you through every post, story and update you share. Do you want to boost your popularity on the platform? You need those followers. They are the key to building your audience, increasing your reach and showing the world what you are all about. Whether you are a business, influencer or just an average user, getting more followers is the name of the game on Instagram. From clever hashtags to paid promotions, these are plenty of tactics you can use to grow your following and become the talk of the town. So get out there and start building your Insta fan base. Everyone, I'm Vaibha Khandewal and I welcome you all to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we'll be learning on how to increase Instagram followers. So first, let me ask you a question. Did the Instagram get launched? Is it A, 6 October 2010 or B, 6 October 2011 or C, 6 November 2010 or D, 6 August 2009? You can comment on your answers in the comment section below. Now let's get on with our session. But before we get into nitty gritty of things, let me take you through Simply Learn's professional certificate program in digital marketing or better known as postgraduate program in digital marketing. It is the postgraduate program course by Simply Learn in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint in digital marketing. This comprehensive program is designed to equip you with skills you need to excel in the fast-paced world of digital marketing. With this program, you will learn everything from fundamentals of digital marketing to the latest trends and techniques used by top marketers worldwide. You will explore topics such as SEO, SEM, content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, and much more. This program is led by industry's experts who bring their real world experience to the classroom, giving you an insider perspective on what it takes to succeed in the digital marketing world. And with hands-on projects and practical assignments, you will have chance to apply your knowledge and develop the skills you need to stand out in the competitive field. So if you're looking to jumpstart your career in digital marketing or take your skills to the next level, then Simply Learn's professional certificate program in digital marketing is the perfect place to start. To learn more about the course, you can click on the link in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We will start off the discussion with various steps to increase Instagram followers. Moving forward, we will also discuss best practices to increase followers. Finally, we will wrap this session with the best tools to help get more followers. So let's get started with a few steps to help increase Instagram followers. First up, you need to lay the groundwork. You need to identify your ideal Instagram customers and create a plan. You can include keywords in, the, in your profile and bio. Next, you need to create some interesting and engaging content. We have to craft a stunning Instagram feed. We can use lengthy captions that are both engaging and informative. Then we have to make ourselves discoverable. You can tag your location and other relevant individuals in posts and use hashtags to expand your audience. Afterward, you have to be able to engage with your community and build relations. You can start by collaborating with similar companies and influential people. Also, you can interact with your community and build trust and loyalty. Finally, you need to keep learning. You don't have to be afraid to use different Instagram features and keep up with the trends to stand out from others. Best way to learn is to keep trying and keep learning. Now, let's check out some of the best practices to keep in mind in your endeavor to increase followers. First up, use relevant hashtags in your posts and stories to reach a wider audience. Next. You need to post high quality, visually appealing content that resonates with your target audience. Then we have to engage with your followers 
by responding to comments and asking questions. Then we can also collaborate with other users, particularly those who have large or engaged following. Then we have to use Instagram features such as Reels and Instagram Lives to share more personal and interactive content. Next, we have to utilize Instagram's paid promotion options to reach a larger or targeted audience. Then you can also consider using Instagram's explore feature to discover and engage with users who are interested in similar content as to yours. Afterwards, we can also use Instagram stories to share behind the scene content and give your followers a more personal look at your life or business. Then you have to also post consistently, but you need to be careful not to flood your followers feed. At last, you, have, you can use Instagram's analytics tools to track the success of your posts and adjust your strategy accordingly. Finally, let's close this session with the best tools to help get more followers. The first tool in our agenda is Planopy. This tool allows you to schedule and publish your post as well as analyze their performance. The next tool we have is Hootsuite. This tool offers a variety of features, including the ability to schedule and publish posts, engage with followers and track analytics. Then we have a tool called Later. This tool is specifically designed for Instagram and allow you to schedule posts, track analytics and find relevant hashtags. After that, we have Boostgram. This tool can help you to get more Instagram followers by providing a targeted followers through paid promotions. Following that, we have Social Bee. This tool offers the ability to schedule and publish posts, engage with followers, and track analytics. Finally, we have Social Drift. This tool helps you get more Instagram followers by using artificial intelligence to engage with users who are likely to follow you. Hey there, learner. Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Learn. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Instagram advertising and Instagram Reels. What is it? What do you need to know about them? What ads are available on Instagram? How can you optimize these ads for maximum performance? And how can you use Instagram Reels to grow your following even further? Now, I am Mark Kempman. I'm your digital navigator for this video. But before we start, if you like this video, click the like button. And if you want to join our learner community on YouTube, subscribe to our channel by clicking on the link below. So, are you ready? Let me start with giving you some interesting Instagram stats that will show you that Instagram has to be part of your digital marketing strategy. Now, Instagram is only 12 years old. It is now the seventh most visited website in the world. Yes, listen to this. It's the seventh most visited website in the world. And it is the um, fourth most used social media platform by monthly active users, 1.22 billion um, users every month. They're ninth, Instagram is ninth on the Google's most search terms list. It's the second most downloaded app in the world on the, uh, the app stores and Instagram is most popular amongst the Gen Z population, Generation Z. Generation X males are the fastest growing demographic. Yep, and that takes Instagram into a B2B, into a business world as well. India has the most number of Instagram users in the world, and people spend more time on the Instagram stories than in the Instagram newsfeed, telling you a lot about the importance of stories these days. And Instagram stories ads, they generate about 25% of Instagram's advertising revenue. Now, do you need any more facts to convince you that Instagram is one of the most popular social media networks and that it has to be part 
of your digital marketing strategy. So let's dive a bit deeper into the Instagram advertising opportunities and the reels that you can use in Instagram. So in this session, we are going to be talking about Instagram ads in digital marketing. Why is it so important? What are the benefits that you can get from Instagram ads? We're then going to look at the different types of Instagram ads that you, that you have available. I'm going to show you some Instagram ad types on Instagram. And I'm also going to show you where on Facebook you can go to create, to create the, the Instagram ads. We're then going to dig into the Instagram Reels. Yeah, it's a new feature about two years ago. It is kind of the, um, the, the follow-up from IGTV. It is Instagram's response to TikTok success. Yep, and Instagram Reels are short vertical videos that are very powerful in the, um, and, and used by many people these days. So we're gonna dive into these, we're gonna see the benefits that you can get as a business for them. And I'm gonna show you quickly where to go on Instagram to set up these, uh, these Instagram Reels. I'm then gonna give you a few tips on the Instagram Reels, and then we're gonna close off today's session with some frequently asked questions that I'm getting a lot in the when it comes to Instagram advertising and Instagram Reels. So, are you ready for this? Let's get started. Let's look at Instagram ads in digital marketing. So, let's talk about Instagram ads and branding first. Why is it so important to use Instagram advertising for your branding? Well, more than 25 billion businesses use Instagram to promote their services and products. Yeah, so when they are all working on developing their brand through Instagram. So 90% of the Instagram accounts, they follow at least one business on Instagram. And 62% of users say that they are more interested in a brand after seeing them in an Instagram story. So it's a very important platform for brands to connect with their users. Yeah, and many Instagram users, they actually use Instagram to research new products and services. And most Instagram users, almost more than 80%, they say they take an action after seeing a product on Instagram. Yes, so no surprise that many brands are active on Instagram. Yeah, and on average, you can say that the brands do about one and a half times posting every day. Yeah, so there's no doubt that Instagram should be part of your business. Yeah, it is an effective tool for advertisers to boost brand awareness and increase engagement with their followers and their customers. And it's not only a platform to showcase your brand, but also a channel through which you can interact with your followers and build customer loyalty. And then I'm not even talking yet about the e-commerce opportunities you have on Instagram by opening up a shop, by promoting your products on Instagram. So a platform where you definitely have to be. <clears throat> so it can act as a new channel for your business, which can extend your online presence. And when you are on Instagram, you can promote, you can sell, you can increase sales of your business. Yeah, and you can gain many, many benefits from being on Instagram. And here are just a few of them. So you can keep up with what's happening in the world. So if many people, if everyone, yeah, billions of people are on Instagram, why aren't you? So there is the new Instagram shop feature that can help you and your brand to get more sales. So you can open up a shop on Facebook, you can then connect that shop with your Instagram and you can promote your products. You can tag your products in your Instagram posts and that will lead to sales through your, um, your Facebook and your e-commerce shop. It's fantastic for competitor analysis. What are your competitors doing on Instagram? What are they promoting? What are they advertising? You can learn a lot about what works and what doesn't work in the, uh, the market. Instagram is also a place where you can connect with your customers, where you can deliver customer service. 
Yeah, so it's not just offline or not just on Twitter, but you can use that on Instagram as well. So Instagram these days is a very normal, a very basic platform. And it's almost like you're having your website. Customers expect you to be on Instagram as well these days. So if you do that properly, it can help you in getting more customers, growing your online customer base on Instagram, and it can help you in developing your brand to generate more sales and to grow your online reputation. By setting the tone and the style of your posts, you can immediately develop and present an online sort of identity that you can then transfer into your online reputation. Another powerful aspect of that you have with Instagram is that you can work with influencers. Yeah, there's many influencers, many Instagram um, users with large followings. They offer their services to brands to help them in promoting their products and services. So that is not enough for you, finally. Yeah, the virality on Instagram is very, very strong. So if you have good content, good posts, good stories, good reels, you can go very high and wide and far through the, uh, the, Instagram, um, the Instagram world. And many people will view your videos and share your videos. So it's a platform you can no longer ignore and you definitely want to be there. So in 2020, a new style of post was created, which was called the Instagram Reels, which is kind of the follow-up of the IGTV, which was a kind of a vertical video kind of YouTube channel that you could get on, um, on, on Instagram. Now, it is sort of a response of Instagram to the growth of, uh, of TikTok. And creators on Instagram like Justin Bieber, Lizzo, Stanley Tucci, they really helped to transform this um, feature uh, from a almost like a TikTok wannabe to a full-blown competitor of TikTok. They are full screen vertical videos that can be up to 90 seconds long. Yeah, they come with many unique editing tools and an extensive library of audio tracks as well. So it's very easy to make these short videos and to start sharing them. And you will see that the views and the engagement that you get with these reels in, in Instagram is extremely high. On top of the sounds, reel can include multiple video clips, filters, captures, and, in a, and interactive backgrounds. So you can add stickers, all the tools that you expect in, in that you see in stories, that you see in TikTok, you see that in the Instagram Reels as well. Now, they're clearly different from Instagram Stories. Yeah, Instagram Story, they did disappear in 24 hours. Once you post a Reel, it is available on Instagram until you delete it. So they are also favored by the Instagram algorithm. Yeah, which is more likely to recommend them to people who don't follow you. Yes, so it is a very good tool to grow your following. But we'll talk about Reels a little later when we go into the, uh, after we've gone into the advertising on Instagram. So let's look into um, advertising on Instagram. Here are some interesting facts about Instagram advertising. Each month, there are 2 million advertisers active on Instagram. Yeah, so that is a big number of people. The estimated advertising reach for Instagram users is 1.32 billion users. Yeah, so there, and that is an important one. The Instagram advertising reach has outpaced Facebook's advertising reach in the last year. So, then did you know you can reach 22% of the global population age 13 or older in Instagram. So a platform, an advertising platform that you cannot ignore. Yeah, and through Instagram Reels, 
you can reach another potential audience of close to a billion people. So, and f interesting fact to know is that the split in female and male is about 45 and 55 percent on the advertising audience for the uh, Instagram Reels. So how do you create Instagram um, ads? Through the Facebook Advertising Manager. Yep, and we've done a, um, a short or a video about Facebook advertising in the um, in, in, in an earlier video of this series. But um, I'm so I'm not going to go into this. But I do want to show you a, um, a, a new feature in the Facebook and Instagram advertising uh, advertising setup. But before we go into this, let's have a quick look at Instagram and see if we can find some ads. So if I go out of here and I go to um, Instagram, yeah, so here you see my mobile. Let's log in and we're going to Instagram. Yeah, so by just by browsing through your newsfeed, you will already come across ads. Yeah, so let's see where we see an ad popping up. So here you see one, yes, yeah, so Sahara Services Official, and because it's an ad, you see it's a sponsored ad. And here you see the type of ad that we see here is a photo ad. Just one photo that they have with a call to action, in this case, visit the Instagram profile. So here you see an ad, yeah, which is again is sponsored, but here you see I can flick through the photo. So this is what we call a carousel ad. Yeah, so there are multiple photos, or in this case videos, so you could also see this as kind of a video ad. But this is a combination of a video ad and a, a carousel ad, where you can flick through multiple photos. So what I've done, I've saved a few, um, a few ads. Yeah, that is easier, so I don't have to browse. So if I click here on the saved, and here you see some ads. Yeah, so here you see an example of a photo ad, but multiple photos, and that's why we also call this a carousel ad. Okay, here you see an example of a, another carousel ad. Yeah, so you can see that it's an ad because it says sponsored. Again, multiple photos and a call to action. Yeah, here you have a photo ad where it's just one photo. And here you see another carousel ad with two photos. And here you see a video ad. Yeah, so these are the ads that you see on, uh, in the newsfeed. Besides that, there are ads in the stories. And here at the top, you see the stories. So let's go here, browse through the stories. So here you see, and we immediately see here a sponsored ad from Barcelona Tanja. Yeah, and this is a video ad. Yeah, what I like about the ads on the stories, and that's why they are so powerful, they have a very sort of natural blend with the stories before and after them. They don't really look like ads, and particularly if you're making them full screen vertical ads, yeah, they blend in very well with the, the, with the news feed, yeah, of the story feed. Yep, so here you see another ad, yeah, with, uh, as a story. So you can, the call to action, are you looking for the click on the more? Yeah, and then you can have different more information in the ad as well. So very powerful. Yeah, here you see another ad. Okay, so those are your ads on, on, uh, on the stories. And then here you see the reels. Yeah, now, um, yeah, but we'll come back to the reels later. And here in the reels, you will be, will be able to see and to showcase your ads as well. Okay, 
So that is the, uh, those are the ads on, um, uh, on Instagram. Yeah, so if I summarize this, yeah, if we look at the, uh, the Instagram ads, so the first ads that we saw were the photo or the image ads. Yeah, so particularly for campaigns where there is a very strong visual aspect, yeah, strong visual information that you can summarize in one single image. They are the best um, for creating image ad. These pictures can be produced using your own photographers or designs or illustrations. Or you can even take an existing post that you can promote or that you can boost as an image ad as well. So very straightforward, very simple, but the image ads are the simplest way of um, creating uh, Instagram ads. Here you have a story ad. So a story ad, multiple visuals that go in a story. Engagement is typically greater with story ads. Yeah, because it sort of gets the entire mobile screen and it's much more engaging than ads in the, uh, in the news feed. Yep, so you see here there is not really video in there, but it is moving kind of images, moving text yeah, and audio in this ad from, uh, from Spotify. So story ads are extremely powerful, one of the most powerful popular types of ads in Instagram and again very easy to create. You then have the video ads. So if you want to give the viewers a more in-depth look of your brand, your products, your services, then run a video ad on Instagram. So make them short, you can make them square, you can make them full, uh, full sort of vertical, full screen. But the important thing is try to make the content engaging. Yep, and that is where video ads are so powerful and they can bring a message across in a very powerful way. Video ads on Instagram, they are probably the ads with the highest conversions yeah, for, um, for people that view the ad and if you want them to take an action. So, yep, so those are the video ads. And then you have the Reels ads. So intermix with Reels, you can have 30 second long ads that are sort of comparable to story advertising. So they're full screen vertical videos. And again, they properly merge with the organic Reels. Yep, and they have feature, they have sound, they, they feature sound and music. So very powerful ads where you can get very good call to actions, learn more, learn more, buy now, yeah, different sort of call to actions that can really lead people to either to drive them to your website or drive them to your shop where they can buy your product. Yep, and then we have the carousel ads and the carousel ads is what I showed you where you have a collection of photos or videos that people can swipe through yep so they can particularly they work really well in your Instagram feed and they are really good for showcasing multiple products in your ad what you also see is that people use carousel ads where they have one large sort of horizontal photo that they split up in three sections so it is almost like browsing through the photo from left to right. So very powerful ads that you can get on, um, on Google, on Facebook and on Instagram advertising. Okay, now before we go into the reels, let's go to Facebook ads and show you some a new feature on, uh, on the advertising for, the, um, for Instagram advertising. So here you see the Facebook Business Manager. Yeah, so it is the Meta Business Suite, which is sort of a new integrated platform um, which brings together a number of functions. It used to be the Facebook Business Manager, but they now have brought it all under the Meta Business Suite. So if I go there for my Riyad Farasha page, 
It takes you to everything you need to do and to plan and to manage and to track of your Facebook or your Instagram account. Yeah, you see here, I can manage the Facebook page and I can manage the Instagram page. Now, we're not going to go into the whole of the Meta Business Suite. I just want to show you the advertising and a new feature here in advertising. If I click on all tools and then I click here on add. Yeah, so this is kind of a quick creation of ads. I can automate my ads, I can choose a goal for my ads, or I can boost existing content. And I just want to show you how easy it is these days to make an ad for your Instagram. So if I want to boost a post, yeah, or I can get more leads or whatever I want to do, yeah, boost an Instagram post or reel, let's go into that. Yeah, so content type, I'm just gonna do a post for this sake, yeah, so we're going to boost this post. Yep, and then here you will see how the ad will look like in your Instagram feed, in this case. Yep, and that's where you can change the text of your ad. So it's a really good feature to quickly launch an ad of an existing post. Make sure you've got your ad blocker switched off to get access to this. Yeah, you can have other previews as well. Let's see what that will give us. Yeah, so here you see the feed in Instagram Explorer. Here would the Instagram feed. Here would be how it looks in Instagram Stories. Here is how it would look in Instagram Reels. Yes, yeah, so really useful tool to quickly see how your ad will show on Instagram yeah, for an existing post. And then of course you can have the same facilities if you want to create a new post. Okay, so that's all I'm going to share with you on Facebook and Instagram advertising and how to create your uh, Instagram ads through the Meta Business Suite. Right, so let's go back to the presentation and let's look at the Instagram Reels. So, yeah, so where are the Reels in Instagram? If I click here on Instagram and then here is my home, yeah, if I click at the bottom on the little icon here, I can then go to Reels. And this is exactly like TikTok. I can just flick up and that takes me to the next post. Okay, so very useful and very simple way of, um, of creating and sharing content and very popular way. And a lot of people spend time on the Reels to find really cool content. Okay, so here I can go to the search and I can search for items. So I can search, for instance, look at marketing how to. Yeah, and here you see books to master marketing, which is in a real format. So this is how I can then access posts in relation to marketing yeah, and, um, and other elements, yeah, books to read. Yeah, so lots of stuff here on the reels that you can use to find content in every topic that you're interested in. Yep, so uh, here is more reels on, on Morocco. Yeah, so very useful tool. Now, how do you create a reel? You click on the plus icon and you basically select here at the bottom post, story, reel or live. You click reel. And then you see the four op five options that you have here for the audio, the length of the video, the speed, yeah, the grid that you want to change, the scale, and there's even a timer. So there's lots of functionality that you can use here in your um, in developing your video. Then by pressing the center button, you can start recording the video. Yeah, and there is also opportunities to get um, take, for instance, do little characters dancing on your desk. Yeah, or on your keyboard, you can make them slightly bigger. 
Yeah, we lost the character. Where was he? And now we're recording. We've lost. So here's our character. I can blow him up a bit. Yep. And we then see him dancing on our screen. Yeah. Happy with that. Stop it. Do next. Yeah, I'm going to not, not add a sticker. Here is the video that we've just created. Yeah, I can edit a clip if I want to. I click next and then I can share it to Reels. I can write a caption. I can add stickers and all the standard stuff that you can do on, your, uh, on the Reels. Yeah, so very cool, very like TikTok. And uh, the, the, this, the, the best thing about it, it is so simple to make. It's very intuitive. Okay, so that is a quick introduction of the Reels. So how do you fit Reels into your digital marketing strategy? Let's have a look at that in a bit more, um, in a bit more detail. Yes, so it is a really good way to give your audience a behind the scenes overview. Yes, so which works well to get engagement and to get trust on your brand. Yes, yeah, so look at the culture in the company, how you make your product, how hard people work, look at the uh, the customer services, how they work. It's a really good way to give people a behind the scenes look of the company and again to build this brand trust. People really appreciate that. Yes, yeah, so that is one of the things that you can do with Instagram Reels. Another very powerful aspect of Instagram Reels is that you can use it to generate what we call user-generated content. Why not ask your customers or your users to create Reels around a topic that you work on yeah, and share it with, uh, with a hashtag? Yes, so it's a great way for people to getting to know the company, getting to know the products, start using influencers, yeah, get competitions going where you do photo contests um, or maybe video contests and you can turn those into reels with the pictures or make them uh, actually let the user share the, the, the reels they created themselves. Yes, so sharing user-generated content is a second big benefit that you can get from using Instagram Reels. Now, Instagram Reels, because they're short, people have short attention span, they're also really good to educate your customers yeah, or educate your audience. They're a great way to develop yourself as, a, as an expert in your field by giving their audience value. Yeah, on how to use your products, how to, um, to, uh, to uh, answer questions about your products, yeah, on how to do specific things in, uh, in using your products. So get people to learn around your product. And if you make that a recurring type of reel, people will come back for them because they want to learn more about your products. It's also good to see your products in actions. So combined with user-generated content, why not ask your audience, yeah, your customers, to make short reels on how they use your products? Yes, so, but if you want to do it yourself, you can really try to highlight what sets your product apart from your competition. So, yeah, use that to your advantage in using Instagram Reels to highlight your products and to see your products in action. And of course, it goes without saying, if you make it fun, if you make it more personalized, yeah, that is a fantastic way to connect with your audience. Yep, and that is where children work really well, where pets, cats, dogs work really well. Try to get casual. Try to interact with your followers through very sort of emotional, casual content. So, and often what you will see that these type of uh, reels will have very high number of views because people just love to browse through that type of content. Yeah, create your own challenge or create your own trends. Encourage your fans to participate and use a special hashtag to share the content they create yeah, for you. 
So that's the big benefits that you can get from the reels. Yes, yeah, so use that to your advantage. Good, so let's look at some tips and tricks on Instagram advertising. Now remember, most people watch content on their mobile. Instagram is a mobile app. So make sure that you design your ads with mobile in mind. Make sure that you optimize your ads for mobile. There's nothing worse than seeing a, um, an Instagram story ad with a horizontal video and then black above and below. Yes, yeah, so optimize it for the mobile and mobile is vertical so use that vertical format because the immersion is better but also it's much easier to crop a vertical video to a 4x5 aspect ratio or a square ratio than a landscape video yes yeah, so make sure you design your ads for mobile first tip two let the visuals speak for themselves. Yeah, make your ads less wordy and use font sizes that are optimized. Use color. Yeah, make the use capitals. Make sure that it is optimized for mobile devices. Use big fonts that stand out. Use colors that stand out and let the visuals speak for themselves. Tip three. Yeah, use animations, use motion graphics. It is not just video that you need to have, but animated text, animated things happening on the screen, they are videos as well. So let the screen come to life, either through video or through animation and motion graphics. And of course, very important, keep the branding Keep the messaging that you have, keep it at the front. Yeah, in the first three seconds, people will decide if they want to watch the entire ad or continue to scroll. Yeah, so make sure that in the first three sec seconds, you capture people's attention and you've put your branding and your message across. And then, of course, you sound. Yeah, you sound in your ads. So although a lot of uh, the, yeah, the people, they may want to watch it without audio, yeah, make it accessible by people with muted volume. Use trendy soundtracks to engage those who choose to listen to your videos. Yeah, consider using captions as well or text overlays. That's very important. If you have somebody speaking in your ads, yeah, always use captions or overlay of text to make sure that if people have the sound off, that they can still understand what the ad is all about. Right, so that is all on the Instagram ads and the Instagram reels. So let's look at some of the questions that I'm getting yeah, from people when we talk about Instagram Reels and Instagram advertising. So one question I'm getting a lot is, if I do my Reels, yeah, I didn't get much en engagement. What should I do to improve? Yeah, so now, first of all, in general, Instagram Reels have a very high engagement. Yes, yeah, so they're probably the part of Instagram with the highest engagement that you will see. And I will show you. Yep. So if I go to my Instagram here on the of my my Riyadh for Russia, let me close this here. Yes. Yeah, so save the draft. Close. Yeah. So I'm going to my Instagram. So this is my profile, and here you see my reels. Now, if I post a video, a normal video. I used to get maybe, I could, I get some views, but nothing like thousands or thousands of views. Yes, yeah, so since we've been using Instagram Reels, yeah, we've now get views and place on our videos here, 1,244. 
Here is a view, 11,000 views of the video. Yeah, here you see 6,000 views of the video. These were numbers we would never get yeah, on the Instagram news feed or the Instagram stories. So here you see you do get the engagement of, your, um, of the reels on Instagram. Yeah, and it's one of the big reasons is that Instagram favors, the Instagram algorithm favors reels in your, um, yeah, in sharing your content. Okay, so make sure that your video content is up to scratch. Maybe the music could be improved. A really good way is to look at what your competitors are doing. Yeah, and maybe they do things that you're not doing. So try to learn from that. Okay, question two, how do I choose the right soundtrack for my Instagram Reels? Good question. Yeah, it's very important that you get the right sound for your Instagram Reels. Now, Instagram has a whole library of sounds that you can choose from in creating your, uh, your Reels. Facebook has a huge library of thousands and thousands of sounds that you can download royalty-free and use in your, uh, in your posts, in your ads. Yes, yeah, so... Very important, first of all, is that you look at what's trending in the world yeah, when it comes to picking a soundtrack. Yeah, so learn from that. What are the hits at the moment? What are the most popular sound music videos on YouTube? What's the most popular music on, the, on Instagram? Learn from that yeah, and then make your decision on what music you want to use in your video. Okay, will Reels get me organic audience or do I need to promote them as well? So the beauty about digital marketing is that you decide what you want to do. Yeah, whether you just want organic or whether you want to advertise. Yeah, so just to be clear for everybody, when I say organic audience, it means that if I do a post without any advertising, how many people will see my post, how many people will see my video, my reel, and how many people may like it or share it. Yeah, and we know, and as I said earlier, the reels have a high, a fairly high organic reach from the three areas in Instagram, posts, stories, and reels. Reels gives you the highest organic reach at the moment. But we also know these days, and if you look at some of my other videos that I posted on YouTube, on digital marketing, that social media is no longer a free ride. Social media these days is pay to play. Yeah, so if you really want to use Instagram and Instagram Reels to grow your business, to find leads, then you need to combine organic marketing with paid marketing. Yes, yeah, so start looking into what we call the pay-per-click advertising and see how much wider and how much bigger the audience is that you can target. Yep, and then try to invest some money in the pay-per-click advertising and see what results you get. So always good to look into that. Have your options open, but the good thing about digital marketing, you decide what you want. Hey there learner, Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Instagram is a social media platform that needs no introduction. With nearly 1 billion monthly active users and 500 million daily active users, Instagram is a platform rife with marketing potential. More than $7 billion revenue has been generated from Instagram Mobile and it's home to more than 2 million advertisers. Not only that, marketing on Instagram has the following advantages too. You have increased conversions. According to research, more than one-third of the people using the app have used it to purchase products, which means by marketing your products on the app, there's a higher chance of conversion. You also have advanced targeting options. 
This is in part thanks to Instagram's parent company, Facebook. Instagram has access to just about all advertising features offered by Facebook ads. With this, you can advertise to people based on their age, location, gender, interests, and much more. You can also build better brand follower relationships. You can stimulate conversion with your followers and build a connection with them. You'll also get a greater understanding of what your followers like and dislike based on their engagement. This enables you to make content they enjoy more and increase the chance of converting a user to a consumer. So let's have a look at how marketing is done on Instagram. Let's start with number one, optimize your bio. Your bio is the first thing people notice when they get to your page. That's where they make the first impression of your brand. And that's why it's important for your bio to be informative, captivating and engaging. Use your bio to provide a brief description of your brand or product, the type of content you'll be posting, brand hashtags, links to other social media platforms, and more. Your bio should also include a URL to where you want to drive traffic to, be it your brand's website or a page for a particular product. Make sure to track this link as well to see how much traffic it brings. Here's an example of how Samsung uses its bio effectively. You can see it's a very straightforward, it's got a branded hashtag, it talks about all the services Samsung offers, there are links to other pages and a link to the website as well. It's to the point and covers everything you need to know about it. Next up at number 2, we have create a content calendar. Now, if you ask anyone who works with social media, one of the most important things they'll tell you is to have a content calendar. A content calendar enables you to keep track of your posts. It'll help you plan ahead and automate the process of publishing your posts when your audience is most active. A calendar helps you decide what content, caption, hashtags, videos goes live on what day, date or time. A consistent post schedule will enable you to make the most out of Instagram. It'll also keep your audience engaged and also give you access to historical posts if you want to repost your older content. Next up, we have number 3. Get greater reach with ads. Paid ads can enable you to get more followers, engagement leads and conversions. The caveat here being that you'll need to pay for it too. The ad options are pretty similar to what you have on Facebook, like audience segmentation based on likes, interactions, buying habits and more. You also have a variety of ad formats to choose from like story ads, image ads, video ads, collection ads and more. Moreover, they can also be set up from Facebook Ads Manager. Here's an example from an ad from Body Shop, in which they're using a single image ad. The advertising works because of its interesting, creative and attractive ad copy that attracts the customer to interact with the post and click on the link. Let's go to number 4. Have a visually consistent feed. Instagram is a platform in which people gravitate towards aesthetically pleasing content. To authentic expressions and diverse perspectives, the objective is that your feed needs to match with your brand's identity and must appeal to the audience within your industry. What works nowadays are candid shots, muted, earthly tones with a low-key editing style. Your content must feel down-to-earth and your brand approachable. As you can see in the images, all of them have aesthetically pleasing images and a somewhat blue or underwater theme. And that's the kind of thing you should aim for. Your content following an understandable and interesting aesthetic depending on the product you're trying to sell. Now for number 5, tell a story. The images, videos and stories you post need to tell stories that can captivate your audience and establish a connection with them. This makes it more likely that they feel closer to your brand and buy your products. Your captions can tell stories that can help your brand appear more human and build deeper connections with your audience. Your content needs to align with what your audience cares about or solves problems they face. Here's an example of how the page Patagonia talks about forests in America. Each of their posts tells stories about a different issue that affects nature. Their brand on Instagram revolves around bringing awareness to such issues. That's the kind of stories you should tell with your brand. Next up, number 6. Use the right hashtags. Using the right hashtags can make the difference between your post showing up on the Explore tab for everyone to see and it getting lost in a sea of content. Your hashtags shouldn't be too generic like hash new year or hash style 
since they'll have too much competition. Instead, mix up trending and industry-specific keywords to connect with your followers. Research on successful hashtags and limit yourself to less than 7 in each post. The more the hashtags in your post, the more likely it seems spammy, untargeted and unprofessional. Find out what and how many hashtags your competitors use and how you can do something similar. You could also create a hashtag for your brand. These need to be short, easily memorable and involve your brand name in some way. Let's now go to number 7. Take advantage of UGC. UGC or user-generated content gives your followers to further involve themselves with your brand. UGC also by them as well. Regardless of the field your brand belongs to, UGC can be used to convert followers into advocates of your brand. Here's an example of how Starbucks uses user-generated content and takes advantages of their audience to advertise their products. In this post here, they are attracting customers with an image of happy children dressed in products stole at Starbucks. The post posted by another user would be appreciated by the audience and improve brand loyalty. Next up, number 8. Take advantage of video ads. Most Instagrammers state that users have visited websites, searched or told a friend after being influenced by posts. Even though photo ads are still the more popular form of advertising, Video advertisements aren't too far behind. There are three key video formats when it comes to Instagram ads. Single video ads that can create 60 second ads, carousals are a combination of images and videos, and Instagram stories that enable you to combine images and videos to create visually attractive ads. Here's an example of the brand Pizza 73 using story ads to advertise their pizzas. It's successful because you're showing off the product they are advertising with well-shot videos and captions. Now for number 9. Partner up with influencers. Connecting with influencers will enable you to connect with thought leaders within the industry and enable you to show off your brand to a larger audience. By connecting with them, your brand will have greater authenticity and authority. Influencers need to be given new tools, resources and guidance to carry out their role effectively and to work together as partners. Micro-influencers are also considered to be more affordable and they have a closer connection with their audience. Here we can see how Ralph Lauren have collaborated with an influencer to advertise their products. The influencer is showing off the latest Ralph Lauren has to offer. This encourages his interested followers to check out the page and buy something for themselves. Next, for number 10, host contests and giveaways. Contests enable your audience to engage with your brand with 3.5 times more likes and 64 times the comments. You can give away a product or a service which enables you to boost engagement and brand awareness. Contests and giveaways need to be planned, brands need to be partnered with, contest rules need to be identified, posts need to be created and much more. Monitoring the contest and then running it is also really important. You would need to track your contest performance and promote the results on other social media platforms as well. Here's an example of a contest run by Domino's Pizza which encourages people to contribute their own short stories and connect better with the brand. Number 11. Take advantage of stories and IGTV. Stories enable you to create a combination of photos and videos that disappear after 24 hours. Stories can greatly influence your reach and engagement rates even giving your story the chance to show up in the explore section. It can also help make your brand seem more approachable and authentic. Adding links to the Instagram stories can also help with driving traffic to your website. IGTV, on the other hand, although now seemingly on the decline, still has a few advantages to offer to the savvy marketer. IGTV provides you a unique, mobile-friendly layout that serves as an evergreen content very well, like featurettes and interviews. Another new tool they have introduced is Instagram Reels, Instagram's answer to TikTok. Instagram released Reels through which users would be able to upload 15-second clips. And since it released very recently, it's rife with marketing potential. Finally, we have number 12, Track and Learn. Identify effective hashtags, visual styles and the best times to post. Doing this, you can develop the best practices for your brand. Social listening and analytics will help you fine-tune your marketing strategy and increase Instagram engagement. Hey there learner, Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. 
To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Greetings, everyone. This is Rob Sanders with Simply Learn, and welcome to today's edition. Today, we're going to talk about digital marketing through Facebook. So, there's lots to cover. So, sit back, enjoy, take some notes, and feel free to comment in the comment section. So, let's start out with Facebook itself. Okay, so Facebook, obviously, social networking platform. It's been around for a few years, but it's come a long way. I mean, today on Facebook, you can host 360 degree videos. Uh, you could sell products via chatbot. You could basically be a news network on Facebook. I mean, we've all seen the results of that over the past few years internationally. That's where people go to get their news. So it's really come a long way. In fact, you know, Facebook basically has about 1.5 billion daily active users. That's a lot of people engaging in the network. According to HubSpot, the average user spends about 60 minutes per day on Facebook. That's an hour of 24 spent just on the social media platform. Now, a lot of people gravitate towards Facebook. A lot of different ages, demographics, countries use Facebook for, again for various reasons. But despite all its use, despite all this, HubSpot is reporting that only 48% of marketers think that their Facebook efforts are effective. Only 48% is less than half of marketers, in other words, are frustrated with Facebook. You know, there's a lot you can do with Facebook. And so that's what we're going to focus today's session on, all the things that you should be doing on Facebook to better engage with your users. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is really setting up the perfect Facebook page. Okay. So that's, I think, where a lot of companies go wrong. I think people are just quick to jump onto Facebook as a network just because their competitors are on there. Somebody told them they had to be on Facebook. And then what happens? They get a you know 50% effort output on the Facebook page with no updated post, no information, no best practices applied. So... Basically, the old saying is garbage in, garbage out. That's what you get when you don't follow best practices or apply all the best features Facebook has to offer. So really, when it comes to setting up a Facebook page, you want to start with the basics. You want to have a good profile picture. First of all, I mean, if it's you, yes, you want a picture of you. But if you're representing a company or organization, you really got to give second thought about what that profile picture is going to be. You know, obviously relevancy comes to mind, but, you know, is it in good taste? Is it updated? Is it fit the brand guidelines of the organization? Okay. Then you want to, you know, you can also accompany that profile picture with a cover photo. So again, you ask yourself, you know, is the cover photo outdated? Is it recent? Is it in good taste? And I think this is where a lot of people go wrong. And that's really adding a good description, not a dissertation by any means, but, you know, a short description that just explains what the organization or company is all about. You know, just you know, common sense, but you would think that uh, adding a description wouldn't be a big deal. But, you know, it is a big deal because you want people to know what you're all about and you want to create a good username for your page. Because that's a, that's a username people are going to hopefully remember. So you want to pick wisely there. You don't want something long, something that people aren't going to remember or misspell when they try and type it in. You could certainly add your page to shortcuts. And when you actually set up your page, you have several roles that you can assign to people. So my advice is if you're going to operate a Facebook page for your organization or company, add multiple people to the page to help out. You're not going to be able to do everything on Facebook by yourself unless that's your sole job 24 hours a day because there's lots and lots and lots of things you could be doing on Facebook. So set up a role. You can play the role of admin, but you have other roles that you can assign to other people within the organization. You can assign editors, moderators, 
people to handle just the advertising or you can hire just uh, or assign an analyst role to people who can go in and just look at the results of your post so you have various page roles that you can assign on Facebook now the other important feature when you're working with a Facebook page is to customize the notifications okay you want to be notified when somebody responds likes engages you want to set up notifications for your ads if you're running Facebook ads so there's lots of notifications so make sure you customize those so that you're in the know on a daily basis okay and one other best practice that I don't necessarily see all that often on a Facebook page and that's adding a CTA or call to action so don't be afraid to move people from the ecosystem of Facebook to your website where likely there's more information so add a good call to action on the Facebook page you can keep people within the environment and ecosystem of Facebook or you can move them to your website or blog or you know somewhere else just add a CTA let people do something when they're on your page that's really the point of the CTA so those are just some of the best practices for really setting up a Facebook page I mean again there's lots of, of things you can do and we're gonna talk about more of those as we move forward but just doing those basic things just making sure you know you keep those photos and those pictures up to date uh, you know change the description every once in a while play around with the CTA you know just continue to you know keep the page vibrant it's like watering a plant if you if you don't keep it updated it's gonna die and people are gonna recognize that so you have your Facebook page you do have an option and if you want to reach more people on Facebook you have the option of advertising on Facebook and so you have something called just basically classic ads on Facebook so the whole idea of advertising on Facebook is again if your goal is to generate more you know likes on your page or maybe it's to drive people directly to your website that's basically what you can do that's that's you have to pick what your strategy is okay or your objective so Facebook's going to guide you through that process if you're interested in advertising now the great thing I like about Facebook advertising unlike say paid search ads on Google is that you can really hone in on your audience you know it could be a specific demographic or some uh, a group of people who have the same interests that you're trying to promote so the benefits of running advertising on Facebook is you can really hone in on who your audience is you can also decide where to run your ad I mean Facebook has an advertising network if you will that includes Facebook Messenger Instagram obviously newsfeed uh, email so there's a lot of things that you can choose from with Facebook so you want to be able to pick and choose where you want to run those ads and Facebook advertising has multiple types of ad formats anything from uh, videos to to images so you could pick your format test your format you know the thing I also like about Facebook advertising because anybody who's seen my videos in the past knows that I'm a big proponent of A-B testing so within Facebook Ads Manager there are components to set up A-B testing on call to actions and so to me that's a great feature of advertising you always want to test what people react to and so that's built into Ads Manager and of course when you're advertising on Facebook you can control it all with a budget so Facebook's gonna let you know you know basically based on who your audience is where you're advertising what your objective is this is how many people you're gonna reach this is what they recommend on the budget so you can go with a recommended budget or you can just choose your own budget the whole idea though behind advertising on Facebook is to really hone in on a strategy okay why are we going to spend money on Facebook you know is it to generate leads again is it just to generate more engagement on our Facebook page so you really want to give it some thought before you dive in and start spending money when you do make that dive and you do start advertising again there's a lot of things that you can take advantage of with Facebook advertising um, 
there's there's lead ads you know basically allowing people to submit a form right then and there and there's video ads as I mentioned video ads to me are probably going to be the most effective and impactful of all the forms of advertising because that's what people want they want video nowadays they want to be able to read and listen and engage you can run engagement ads you can remarket on Facebook meaning target people who've already been to your Facebook page or been to your website you can do interest targeting meaning if you have a group of people who have the same interest as your organization maybe that could be you know picking up plastic from the ocean okay there are probably a large amount of people on Facebook who share that same interest I know I do I have that interest so there's always an interest out there to be had and targeted of course you have with Facebook you have demographic targeting based on age and gender and you have behavioral targeting now behavioral targeting to me is the hidden gem of Facebook so for instance you could target ads to people who say purchased a piece of clothing for you okay so if they purchase you can retarget them based on a previous behavior of purchasing a piece of clothing I mean if you're selling uh, health products or beauty products or pet products it doesn't matter you know the behavior is all going to be the same you can pick and choose based on that behavior so behavioral targeting to me is a a good feature to take advantage of if you're going to run Facebook ads now another thing I like about Facebook advertising is uh, basically the use of carousel ads so carousel ads are basically multiple images or, or videos so instead of just running one video ad or one image ad you can put them together and you can have I believe up to 10 so within the same ad unit so you can have a rotating imagery if you will or carousel of images and so basically the what great thing about this is it's interactive it allows you to put more of your message and more of your brand more of your focus out front okay? and I found through my experience that carousel ads 10 along with video ads tend to work really well okay so just keep that in mind if you're gonna do Facebook advertising you know keep some of these features in mind in terms of behavioral targeting demographic targeting you know running lead ads or carousel ads the other thing that you should know about Facebook advertising is the use of a Facebook pixel so what does that Facebook pixel mean well it means that if you want to drive traffic from your advertising to your website you want to be able to track that behavior and that's what the Facebook pixel does it allows you to basically track website behavior when somebody comes from your Facebook ad so if you insert the Facebook pixel directly on your website then Facebook will be able to tell you in its own reporting console what people have done did they engage once they went to your website did they convert meaning download something fill out a form submission purchase something okay so keep that Facebook pixel in mind so if you're gonna run advertising on Facebook that's what you want to do you want to be able to leverage that Facebook pixel now let's switch over to some of the other things that you can do on Facebook and so if you have a large number of followers if you are a popular brand or even if you're trying to generate more likes and more followers on your Facebook page then you know a contest is probably not a bad idea I mean who doesn't like a contest so to me you can run a Facebook contest right on Facebook you know very simple idea but you know if you apply some of the best practices it could really pay off for you so let me just run through some of the best practices in setting up a Facebook contest first things first you have to choose a price so in my opinion I think a gift card tends to work best as a price um, it could be for a specific store you know United States you know Target and Walmart are always good or Apple if you want to really go higher end 
or just something very generic, uh, maybe a $25, $50 gift card to Amazon, where you can allow the winner to choose what they want. Regardless of the specifics, gift cards are always flexible to use, okay? So it ensures that entrance of the contest have an interest in your products, okay? Which, you know, if they have an interest, then they're going to be easier to convert into a sale. So you want to offer something that's going to be of interest, okay? The next thing you need to do is decide what the users have to do to enter. So in my opinion, you want to make it as simple as possible. We'll get what you need to get. So do they need to submit a photo? You know, I've run Facebook contests in the past for some of my clients. You know, photos always tend to work because that's what people tend to do on Facebook anyway, is submit photos. Okay, so a little bit more behind the photo is you want to capture something along with that photo. So to me, an email address you know, tends to work. That way you have something of value along with that photo. That way you can leverage that email later on down the road, whether you do email marketing or Facebook lookalike or something of that nature. Okay. So you have to decide what it is you're going to ask users to do. So keep it easy, but get something of value in return. So once you've made those preliminary decisions, build your Facebook build your Facebook contest page. So make the contest page simple but exciting. Okay, so that's the whole point. You want people to enter. So you want to have attention grabbing titles. You want to use high quality images. You want to obviously enter in the prize information and the contest information, the, the, the important dates when it starts, when it ends. Okay, you want to have that all important submission form again that goes back to what are you capturing are you capturing just name and email address or are you capturing name email address city other information like interest are you adding questions so just be careful on the submission form and then you want to be able to you know have share buttons and, and allow Facebook comments as well okay so when you build your contest page then you obviously want to promote your contest like to think that goes without saying that you can use other social platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok to promote the contest on Facebook. You want to get people there and participate. Yeah. Another option could be running the Facebook ads for the contest. That's probably not a bad idea. So remember, you can use carousel ads or, or lead ads or you know, behavioral targeting or interest targeting. You can use all those ad features I mentioned a couple minutes ago to help drive traffic to that contest page and get contestants. So obviously you run the contest, you monitor the contest. Facebook has something called Facebook Insights built in right into Facebook's platform so you'll be able to measure the results of the contest. And then when the contest is all said and done, well, what do you want to do? Well, you want to profile the winner. Okay, so you want to let everybody know, hey, the contest is over, so-and-so won, and you want to share those results on Facebook and other social networks. I mean, you can even create a video showing the winner to generate a little bit more excitement. You can send follow-up. In fact, I would even recommend you send follow-up emails to all the people who entered into the contest. Okay, thank them. Hey, that gets you closer to getting more sales. Okay. And then you, know, you can tease people with a future contest. So at the end of the day, contests are always a good idea to generate more excitement, more brand, more buzz. Um, now, moving on from the contest, another thing that you can do on Facebook is promote your post. So if you're not doing any paid advertising, however, you're posting a lot on Facebook, you have the option to promote your post. And so what does that mean? So basically, it's a form of advertising using some of your organic posts. And it just allows you to allow that post to get more visibility. Okay, it allows you to market it in the news feed so more people can see it. Okay, so you choose your post, you set a budget, and then the post is shared to a set number of Facebook members. Okay, 
And so you could turn it on and off that promoted post anytime you want. Okay. Now, from my experience, promoted posts are really good. Uh, it's a really inexpensive way to highlight a specific post that you feel needs attention. So if you're posting a lot and you feel that post is going to get buried and doesn't get the visibility that it deserves, then consider promoting it. Uh, it's really in my opinion cost effective now i know that's all relevant but promoting a post definitely generates a lot more awareness so if you have really something important to say and show then consider promoting it it's it's really that simple it's just right there within the post facebook allows you the option to go ahead and just promote it with said budget the other thing you can do on facebook is sponsored stories so really sponsored stories are just short user photo and video collections that can be viewed uh, a few times and they disappear after 24 hours it's it's really similar to users who operate on snapchat that's basically the concept behind it it's just focused around facebook's in-app camera okay which you can overlay with filters and lenses just like you can on Snapchat and you can add some visual effects and tags and and also you can have fun with it basically so a sponsor story is just you know as allows you to manipulate videos and photos to tell a more complete story in a more fun way basically so have fun with sponsored stories on Facebook Another thing that you could take advantage of, and this is something I would recommend, is using Facebook's Open Graph. So what is Facebook Open Graph? Uh, so for those that aren't familiar, it's been around a while. I think uh, we're in 2021 to 2010. That's how long Facebook Open Graph has been around. It's just simply a protocol. And what that protocol does, it extracts certain elements from your page. So title, images, URL, and other meta information from your website okay and what Facebook does is pull that information and that's what they're going to display in social post so it allows basically your website to communicate with Facebook and allow you to control what information gets said and seen in Facebook okay or which elements of your page you really want somebody to share regarding your website so that's basically what a Facebook open graph is. Okay, so that's something you implement on your own website. So moving on from Facebook open graph, you have Facebook exchange, uh, also known as FBX. Okay, so that's been around a few years as well. I think 2012 is uh, when it launched. And it's just a platform for advertising services to desktop users. Okay, so that's the key. It's, it's really for desktop users. It's not available on the Facebook mobile app. Okay. And it just allows you to do real time bid purchases. It allows online advertisers really to place ads onto Facebook sidebar or directly onto a user's timeline as they scroll down. Okay. So it just allows you, an advertiser, to get your product out there a little bit more. Okay. So. You have sponsor stories, you have open graph, you have Facebook exchange, you have Facebook advertising, promoted posts, you have all sorts of options available on Facebook. I think the key thing though to remember when you're on Facebook is to always provide value. So what do I mean by providing value? So think of it as value added content. And so value added content because that's basically what you're doing. You're promoting or pushing content on their platform. You want it to be unique and original. Uh, you want it to be exclusive content or information that your audience really can't get anywhere else. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind value added content. You know, you can repost and rehash what other people have written, but to me, the whole idea behind Facebook is to write something really unique that really resonates with your audience. Okay, and if you can do that, you're probably going to naturally gain more followers and generate more likes and engagement on your Facebook page. Okay, the other thing you wanna do along with that value added content is really 
in my opinion, I've talked about this on other webinar sessions with Simply Learn, and that's really generating or, or leveraging a social media platform like a Sprout Social um, or Hootsuite. And why do you want to leverage those? Is because it allows you to really just create a content counter, think about the content, the value added content you're going to publish ahead of time, and then allows you to consistently publish at a good time and day. And so you're consistent with your publishing and your schedule. That's the whole point beyond using a, a social media platform. If you don't, not a big deal. You can go right into Facebook, just like clockwork, and, and publish when you feel it's the right time to publish. I mean, everybody's publishing schedule is going to be different. Everybody lives in different time zones. Everybody, audi every, every company's audience is different. Um, and let's, let's just face it, the, but the, you know, there's going to be differentiation. So there's not a set schedule. It's just what you're comfortable with. That's going to be right for you and your audience. The key is cons consistency. So, and that's where the social media platforms like the Hootsuites and the Sprout Socials come into play. Now, a couple other things you want to do to take advantage of Facebook, engage with your fans, meaning if somebody comments positively or negatively, go ahead and engage with them in a positive manner. Okay. You know, put some focus on relevancy when it comes to your fans. Okay, so you always want to attract people who have like-minded interests. Always keep that in mind. Okay. Now, if you're trying to build more fans and followers, you could certainly use graph search. And basically all graph search is, is typing something in to the feed bar on Facebook, a keyword basically, and if you type in, say, coffee shops or something of that nature, you know, basically Facebook's going to allow you to see, you know, pages that your friends have liked, uh, friends who, you know, live near, or excuse me, coffee shops who live nearby. Um, so it's going to give you some feedback and other suggestions based on that keyword or interest. So take advantage of the graph search on Facebook to generate like-minded or similar pages. It allows you to find people that you can connect with on Facebook. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about with Facebook is metrics. Always my favorite subject. For those that have listened to me for a while know that I am big not only on just A-B testing, but on measuring data. And so, of course, just like you know, Google Analytics or any other social networking platform, Facebook has its own set of metrics. And so I'm just going to run through some of those metrics that you should be aware of. And so we're going to start out with engagement. So engagement is, in my opinion, probably the number one metric you want to measure within Facebook's ecosystem. Not necessarily the most important. However, it is at the top of the list. Okay. Obviously conversions are always going to trump everything, but engagement is a form of conversion. People are engaging with your post or with your contest or with a video. And so that's really all engagement is. It's just a, a number of times somebody took action on your post. Okay. Whether they, they liked it, whether they shared it, whether they left a comment, those are all forms of engagement. So, to me, engagement allows you to really see over a period of time, over a period of post, how well you're performing. And you want to leverage engagement to make adjustments to your post. I mean, if you've posted, say, 20 posts on Facebook and you've got no engagement, then you probably want to circle back and think about what kind of post you're writing. Are you adding value added content to your relevant audience? That's really the key with engagement. Okay. Reach is another metric. Reach is just the number of times people have seen your content on Facebook. That's all, that's all it is. Okay. The, excuse me. Reach is the number of people your content is seen by on Facebook. So, so that's all reach is. Okay. So reach is a number that takes into account both organic and paid. Okay. So how many people 
is your post really reaching, whether that be paid or organic, okay? And so obviously that number you want as big as possible. So you're gonna probably start out small, but you want that to grow because that's where the engagement part goes in. The more your post engage, the more people are gonna like, the more people are gonna connect with you, and the bigger your reach is gonna be. So the other metric is impressions. And so impressions is basically the divisibility, okay, of your post, okay? How many people saw your post? That's impression. Okay, so, you know, if you're reaching 100 people, of those 100 people, how many people saw it? How many impressions did you have? Now, if it's 100, you obviously want 100. If it's 10,000, you want 10,000 impressions. So you want as many people possible to see that post. And if they haven't, and it's an important post, then remember, you have the option to promote that post. And so that's going to give you the boost you need to go ahead and, and, and get more visibility for that specific post so you can increase the impression counts. Okay. Now, the other thing you want to measure with Facebook is referral traffic. So if you're running a contest and sending people back to your site, or you're running Facebook ads and sending people back to your website, you want to leverage Google Analytics or a similar tool to measure how much referral traffic Facebook actually drove. Okay. So that to me is key if you're driving traffic back to your website. So always keep that in mind. Okay, how much traffic is Facebook really driving? And more importantly, of the traffic that's going to my website, how much of that is converting? So that's something you want to look at. Of course, if you're running a Facebook page and you're not doing any Facebook advertising, page likes are something you want to keep a tab on. Okay, how many people liked or followed you directly on your page? Okay, obviously you want that number to grow over time. Okay, and again, it goes hand in hand with the, the amount of content and the value added content that you're posting on Facebook. Okay, so obviously with Facebook ads or organic posts on Facebook, you have the option of videos. And so if you're going to post videos, then you want to be able to see retention, meaning what percentage of your videos were watched, okay? And so to me, that's important because if I post a good video and it's say 30 seconds and I didn't get that many people to watch it, then what does that say about the quality of the video? Or vice versa, if I have a two minute video and I have a large percentage of the people who only saw say 25 to 30 seconds, what does that tell you? You need to kind of compress that video down. So retention to me is an important metric on Facebook related to videos and then obviously engagement. Remember I said earlier that most people like to engage with videos on Facebook. And so you want to be able to measure the amount of likes, shares, or comments that that video received. So retention and engagement are both available for videos on Facebook. And then rounding out the metrics, when you're doing Facebook ads, you're gonna have some key metrics that you're gonna to wanna to measure, okay? Aside from cost, you wanna really measure click-through rate. And click-through rate basically is just the percentage of people that saw your ad and then clicked on your ad. That's all click-through rate is, okay? So you want a very high click-through rate, obviously. If, if 100 people saw your ad, you obviously want 100 people to click on the ad. The thing about Facebook advertising is the cost model could be cost per impression or cost per click. So if it's cost per click, obviously you want that number to be as low as possible. That's the whole idea. So if you get 100 people clicking on your ad, then obviously if that cost per click is low, then you're not spending as much. So to me, it's better to pay, say, $500 for 1,500 clicks than, say, paying $500 for 250 clicks. Obviously, the 1,500 is a, means your CPC is a lot lower than the $2 you were spending for 250 clicks at a cost of $500. So that's the whole key here is to try and run ads and keep that cost per click low. Okay, so the other metric you want to measure with Facebook ads is cost per acquisition or CPA. Okay, and basically that just measures the cost based on a specific action. So if you're asking somebody to fill out a form submission, OK, 
okay how much did it actually cost you in advertising dollars to get a person to do just that fill out a form submission okay if it was a hundred dollars then you got to ask yourself wow is that high obviously cost per acquisition numbers always need to be low okay so if you're selling t-shirts at the at a cost of say ten dollars if your cost per acquisition is ten dollars okay you're in trouble you want to keep that cost per acquisition number as low as possible so that's a key metric to always keep in mind for Facebook advertising and then another metric to kind of look at or keep an eye on is ad frequency so how many times did people see my ad okay so you want to be able to show your ad probably at most two to three times I mean if somebody's seen your advertisement five six seven times they're just gonna ignore it and so to me those are just wasted impressions and so you want to be able to control your ad frequency the number of times you want somebody to see your ad it could be one time it could be two times but you obviously don't want somebody to see your ad five six seven times otherwise you're just not gonna get probably much out of that so those are all the different types of metrics available in Facebook you know heed my advice Pay close attention to the metrics. That's going to tell you a lot about how your Facebook page is performing. Hey there, learner. Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. No, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about Facebook advertising. We're going to talk about how businesses use Facebook advertising, how the, what are the benefits they can get from it. We're going to show you with a demo on how to set up your Facebook advertising. And we will close today's session with a few do's and don'ts of Facebook advertising. But before we go into that, make sure that if you like today's video or if you like the Simply Learn channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below. And if you like the video, feel free to like it and share it with your friends. So let's get started. Today's world has changed dramatically when it comes to reaching your audiences. Fact is that everybody is trying to get the attention of the million of prospects out there in the market. Everybody is screaming, try my product, try my product or try my product. But most businesses, they now have to realize that today's customer has changed. Yeah, today's customer is looking for instant gratification. They want a product now, wherever they are, whatever their device that they're using. Yeah, and they can, prop, uh, they can source their products from everywhere in the world. Yeah, but it is your challenge to make sure that when they are in the buying mode that you are there to help them. It's a new economy out there. It's a service-driven economy. Look at products like Uber or um, Airbnb where a whole new ecosystem has developed of people offering their products, their services to a global audience. In marketing terms, we're using a term called SOLOMO, standing for social, local, and mobile. Yeah, when you bring those three elements together of social media, local marketing, and mobile marketing, you stand a really good chance to connect with your customers at the right time. Google has um, summarized this in what we call Google Moments. On average, people have a couple of hundred moments during a day where they grab their mobile phone to do a search on their mobile phone. They maybe want to buy something, they want to book something, they want to share something, they want to learn something. All those little moments are opportunities for you to connect with your customer or your prospect. And that's your opportunity, but that's also your challenge to make sure that you are there when your customers are having those moments. When they scream, I want your products. And there are plenty of channels that you can use 
to reach those customers. Yeah, we know about social media, we know about your website, there's things like influencer marketing, there's email marketing, and there's more and more competition out there that are trying to use those channels to reach your audience. But fact is, there is one channel that really stands out of all these channels, and that is pay-per-click advertising. Pay-per-click advertising is a well-established part of what we call the digital marketing trifecta. And this trifecta consists, as the word tri says, of three components. Owned, paid and earned. Yes, so the owned is your own website, are your own social media profiles and your social media pages. But owned is no longer enough. You need to supplement your owned media with paid media. And this is what we call pay-per-click advertising. And then the third element of the digital marketing trifecta is what we call earned media. And earned media is where you can still use the powerful um, effects of public relations in an online world or where you can work with influencers yeah, to help you develop your online presence and connect with your audiences. But one of the best ways to start getting to your audiences is to use advertising. Yep, and there are various platforms for advertising. There is um, Google, yeah, there is Google search advertising, Google display advertising, and there is Facebook advertising. Now, to put these two in the context, Google did about $210 billion of revenue in advertising in 2021. Facebook is about half of that, $115 billion in 2021. And the most powerful models for advertising are search ads and display ads. Yeah, so a search ad is in the Google search, which is what Google um, uh, offers. The display ads and video ads are offered by Google and by Facebook. And we call this pay-per-click advertising, which means you're not paying for showing your ad, but you're paying when people click on your ad. Okay, so let's have a look between uh, to this advertising in a bit more detail. Yeah, Facebook advertising was introduced on around uh, 2007. Yeah, so um, in 2007 it was launched by Facebook. Yep, so, but it has grown drastically since then. In 2011, ads were being shown in the news feed. Yeah, Google uh, Facebook called it sponsored stories. In 2012, ads came on the mobile. Yeah, mobile ads are now considered the most powerful um, forms of pay-per-click advertising. In 2014, uh, Facebook introduced a three-level advertising structure, which was very much introduced by Google as well. Where you have campaigns, you have ad sets, and you have your ads. And when you go in setup, and you'll see that later, your, your ads in Facebook, you will have to go through these three ad elements, yeah, campaigns, ad sets, and ads to set up your advertising on Facebook. In, 20, in, 26, sorry, in 2016, Facebook introduced chatbots and ads in Messenger, which became a whole new area for advertising for Facebook, yeah, connecting with um, customers on Facebook Messenger and offering that for advertising as well. And in 2018, there was a whole range of ad formats available on Facebook, from videos, stories, messenger, carousel, slideshows, collections. So a whole range of ads to choose from when you start your face, setting up your Facebook ads. Now, what is the future? Yeah, what does the future hold for Facebook advertising? As you may have read um, that both Facebook and Google are having a lower revenue in their advertising. 
given the whole world economic uh, situation, we're slowly moving towards a, a recession even. Yeah, Facebook and Google and Microsoft, all the big tech players are feeling the impact in that. Yes, so that is one element. Now, one of the other reasons why Facebook's revenue has gone down in advertising is the tracking uh, capabilities. And um, a lot of businesses, they track people when they visit their website and then you can target them with ads. We call this retargeting in marketing terms. Now, Apple has announced um, earlier this year that on iOS, people can say, which is on the iPhone, people can decide to not being tracked. Yep, so that has put a whole sort of a kind of a, um, a, 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 um, a, uh, a different set of um, dynamics in Facebook advertising on the iPhone. And it is not as effective as it was before that announcement from, um, from Apple. So the future of advertising is all about security, it's about privacy, and of course, in the end, it all comes down to how good are your ads? How, what is the quality of the content in your ads? Are you able to stand out from the crowd? Yeah, so those are the big challenges in Facebook advertising. Now, you have to be aware that Facebook advertising is completely different than Google search advertising. <clears throat> yeah, to put that into a context, Google search advertising is what we call intent-based. Yeah, so when I have a question, or I'm looking for something, or I need a plumber, I go to Google search, yeah, and I search for plumber near me, and Google will give me some ads with plumbers near me. That is not the way Facebook advertising works. Facebook advertising yeah, is not intent-based. It is basically, it is your challenge when you advertise on Facebook is to stop the user from browsing and click on your ad. So it's more interruptive. You need to make sure that they stop what they're doing, which is much more difficult. Yeah, so you'll see that Facebook is therefore slightly more challenging to actually generate leads, yeah, to get new customers. F Google advertising is much better for that. But Facebook advertising is much better to reach a global audience, very targeted, yeah, and work on awareness, developing your proposition, helping your prospects to go through the buying cycle. Yeah, so Facebook ads, they help spread product and brand awareness in the news feed or on Instagram or on Messenger to a very specific targeted audience. Now, another element which is important to understand when it comes to Facebook advertising is to do with organic reach. When I have a Facebook post and I do uh, oh, sorry, when I have a Facebook page and I do a post on my page, the people that will like my that have liked my page will see my post on their newsfeed. That's how the theory is. Yeah, of course, not everybody will see those posts because that wouldn't work because then you would get way too much advertising in your feed. Yeah, so Facebook is very selective in the number of posts from advertising from businesses, or sorry, yeah, from businesses that will show on your newsfeed. Yeah, and in fact, that percentage of people that will see your post, your business post, on their personal newsfeed is less than 3%. So again, if you have a Facebook page, let's say with 10,000 followers, and you do a post on your Facebook page, less than 300 people will see your post. Now, businesses are not happy with that. Yeah, they said, hey, Facebook, why are you doing that? I want to reach my entire audience. And Facebook says, well, hey, you, you still can, yeah, but it's going to cost you some money. 
and Facebook says you have to go and advertise on Facebook to reach your audiences. So businesses now understand that Facebook is what we call pay to play. You to reach your audiences, you have to supplement your organic reach with advertising. And the beauty about Facebook advertising is that it is a fantastic way to reach your target audience. And that is the biggest benefit that Facebook advertising can give you. It's all about the targeting. There are so many targeting options in Facebook and I'll show you when we go into the short demo on how to set up your ads. So what are the reasons why businesses go into Facebook? Yeah, what are the reasons, what are the benefits that they will get from it? And the first big benefit that they get is that they get access to an audience which is out there. Yeah, and it is not just a small audience. We're talking about Facebook at, as of today as close to 3 billion active monthly users. That is a massive numbers and most of these people they check their profiles at least once daily so it is a huge audience to reach and there is no better social media network to reach a global audience than on Facebook yeah so that is one of the reasons why you want to start advertising on Facebook the second reason why you want to start advertising on Facebook is that Facebook gives you a fantastic platform to advertise your products to people based on their demographics, based on their interests, based on their location, based on their, um, their history of browsing, based on so many different segmentation factors. Which means that you can make sure that your ads reach the right audience which is a really good benefit that you will get from Facebook advertising. The next benefit that you get from Facebook advertising it is that it is very cost effective. Yeah, you can just start with a small budget, you can slowly increase your budget, you can relate your bu budget to the returns that you're getting from it, so it helps you spend less and achieve more. It is one of the advertising platforms with the highest return on investment of your, um, uh, on your money. So very cost effective to advertise on Facebook. Here are some other reasons why businesses use advertising on Facebook. It really helps them with increasing brand awareness. As I said earlier, the difference with Google search advertising Facebook is not intent-based. People are not searching in Facebook looking for content which could include your ads. They are actually browsing on Facebook and it is your challenge yeah, to, um, to be creative enough to make them stop browsing and pay uh, attention to your ads. So it really helps in increasing brand awareness. It let, it's an opportunity for you to showcase your brand and to help them add value to their lives. So by doing that, you establish trust, you establish credibility, yeah, and you provide recall value for your brand. So it is all about taking the customer by the hand and helping them in going through the buying cycle. Yes, so when the buying cycle is about awareness, is about building interest, yeah, then building that trust that they then will turn into buying your product. The second big benefit that you're getting from Facebook is to target people that have already expressed an interest in your service. We call this retargeting. You may also have heard about pixel targeting or pixel marketing. It basically means that if somebody visits your website, yeah, you can then retarget those people with an ad. 
from a technical element, as a perspective, it means that you need to put, Facebook will give you a piece of code that you need to put on your website. And then as soon as somebody visits that website, that triggers that code, it automatically connects with Facebook, and then Facebook will capture that user data that you can then use to target them with a specific ad. So a big opportunity there for the retargeting, but things will be changing here in the near future. Yeah, Google has announced that by 2023, 24, it will stop enabling third parties to leave cookies on the um, on on, uh, on websites. Yeah, to target people. So that whole retargeting area will go and will undergo some big changes in the near future. And then, of course, Facebook advertising can really help you increase revenue. As I said earlier, it is a fantastic way to, to connect with people and take them by the hand through the buying cycle. You can educate your audiences about what your product has to offer. Yeah, and the more people know about your products, the more likely they are prepared to make a purchase and to share their experiences. So lots of benefits that you get. Now let's dive a bit deeper into this and let's look at the different type of ads that Facebook has available. So first, there is the single image ad. These are single ads, single image ads that have an option, uh, optional text on the top and a link description that links to your website and a call to action. That is very important to have a good call to action in your ad. The ad images, they need to be 1200 by 628 pixels. So that's where you have an opportunity in the visual to stand out in the newsfeed and make people stop and then click on the link as you see here, for instance, sign up. The next ads are the multi-product ads. They are usually carousels. So it enables you allow consumers to see all the products or the services that you have available. They're very efficient, they're very um, visual, and they have lots of creative options um, in them. So they're very popular and they're lots being, being used lots by, uh, by businesses. So that's your multi-product ads, usually via a carousel. Then, of course, you have your video ads. <coughs> now, video ads are 30-second to 2-minute ads, and they are amongst Facebook's most engaging, most popular ads. They get about 10 to 30% more views than other ads, and not only views, also engagement. Why? Because people love to engage with video. When you engage with video, you have the opportunity to touch emotions of people, which is much stronger in building trust, building relationships with your audience. And particularly video on mobile yeah, works really well. So it's a high growth area of video advertising and one area that you definitely need to look at if you want to be successful with Facebook advertising. Then you have the lead ads. Lead ads, they offer a slightly different way to advertise your products. They let you get usernames, emails, phone numbers, actually without leaving Facebook. Yeah, and that's what makes them really powerful. Within Facebook advertising, you can actually create a sign-up form. Or you could even drive them through Messenger and have a communication with them to get their details through a chatbot. So people don't leave Facebook. You do the whole process of lead generation and lead capture within Facebook and it can be easily synchronized with your existing CRM system. And then you have collection ads. Collection ads blend video and product catalog photos. So they um, are really good if you want to advertise multiple products at once. Yeah, if you want to do this. So collection ads work really well. Okay. 
So that's a short introduction of Facebook advertising, the benefits that you get, why people would use them, why businesses would use them, and the different type of ads. So in the next section, let's go and have a look at how do you create an ad? What are the steps to create a Facebook ad? So here you see I am on a Facebook page, and this is the page for Riyadh Farasha which is a, um, a hotel uh, in Marrakesh, and I am the admin for this page. And what I'm going to show you on this page is how to access the advertising platform and how to set up your ads. Yeah, so let me first, before I do this, show you what Facebook is trying to do everywhere, whether it's your desktop or your mobile, to make sure that you go into advertise creation mode. Yeah, so you'll see it everywhere. Promote, ad center, create ads, create automated ads, boost post. Wherever you are, you will come to sections like boost post or go, please create an ad. On the mobile, it's even more obvious. Yeah, here is the same page, but then on the mobile device. And if I scroll down, you see on the first post, immediately boost the post. So you'll see that Facebook is trying everything to get you to advertise. Yeah, and I think it is a bit annoying. Yeah, but it's also, you need to be aware that all the various places that Facebook will try to, to hook you into advertising, they lead to various subsections of the advertising platform. Yeah, so if I click here on boost a post, it will take me to a, what I call a quick and dirty boost uh, advertising module. Yeah, so I say I'm going to good morning from our rooftop, I'm going to turn that post into an ad, yeah, it, I can immediately decide what goal do I want for my ad, do I want to add a button, what is the URL, yeah, do I want to edit the image, who is my audience, yeah, and then what is the budget, what is the duration, where am I going to show these ads and how am I going to pay, bang, 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 boost post now. Yeah, so it's looks very interesting and very effective to do this, but what you see here is you will only get a subsection of what Facebook advertising can do for you. Yeah, and if you think, hey, if that's okay with you, that's fine, but you're missing 90% of the other features to make your ad as effective as possible. In other words, my advice to you would be, don't click on the boost a post button on your mobile yeah, or your desktop, because again, it leads you to a limited functionality of the advertising module and the advertising capabilities that Facebook can offer you. So back to the desktop. The same applies here if I click here on boost post. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with advertising for a post. You can take one of your most successful posts or for a video and you can create additional reach for that post through advertising, but don't do it through the limited advertising functionality. Again, this is a quick and dirty module, everything on one page and it will, um, you can click boost post now and it's an easy way to start spending your money. Yes, yeah, so that is, if you click the boost post, the same applies if you go to the create ads or create automated ads. Yes, yeah, so let me show you the create automated ads. It takes you through a very automated process of creating ads, which is great when you're a beginner, but again, it will only give you limited functionality of what Facebook advertising has to offer you. 
So again, my advice would be don't go to the automated ads. Click on create ads. That again gives you limited functionality, gives it all in one page. Again, you don't want to do that. Yep, and then you click on the ad center. That gives you again a summary of the advertising, slightly more tools. Yeah, but it's all to lure you in to spend money in a very quick way. So, then where do I go for my advertising? The place where you go is to the Facebook, or how they now call Meta, the Meta Business Suite. The Meta Business Suite gives you everything you need for your advertising. It allows you to manage multiple advertising accounts. Yep, and it gives you access to the full functionality of what Facebook has to offer you. So let's go there, the Meta Business Suite. <clears throat> so here you see everything you need for your advertising. Yes, yeah, so here you see it's your Riyadh for Russia, and it's not only for your advertising. You can manage your posts here, you can schedule your posts, manage your inbox, your notification, manage your content, manage your shop, plan your posts. Now, we'll cover all these areas in future videos, but for now, we want to focus on the advertising. Again, even here, they have ads as a quick and dirty method to create your ads. Again, where I want you to go, Click here on all tools, and now finally, this is where you want to go. It gives you access to the full advertising functionality to create your ads, to manage your ads, to manage your audiences, to set up events when you want to connect, get, get data from your website, and where you can create your forms. This is where you want to go. Yeah, so if I click here on the Ads Manager, that takes me to the full advertising platform. <clears throat> now, here you see, by the way, Turn Off Ad Blocker, yeah, which is important because in your creation of your ads, Facebook will obviously simulate your uh, your ads yeah but if you have your ad blocker on the ads will not show in the preview so it is important that you switch off the ad blocker so you create your browser environment exactly as users will have in um, when they uh, they see your ads so let me go into switching that off which is more tools extensions you see here my ad blocker is on so i'm going to switch that off yeah let me do a review yes yeah, so here you have your account overview you have your uh, your desk uh, your sort of your dashboard now you see i haven't run any campaigns yeah so i'm not going to so there's not much to see here in this um, this this tool so let's go here under my campaigns yeah and this gives me the basic sort of structure of your advertising on facebook yeah remember we talked about campaigns ad sets and ads yeah those are the three elements of your advertising campaign on facebook you create a campaign and I'll show you what you need to set up in the campaigns. Then within a campaign, you can have multiple ad sets and those ad sets within a campaign inherit the settings of the campaign. And then within ad sets, you have ads. Yep, and those ads, they inherit the settings of the ad sets and the settings of the campaign. All right, so you see here, we have three or two campaigns or three campaigns. There is a new leads campaign, there is a page likes and there is a traffic campaign. So now I'm not going to show you these campaigns. I'm actually going to show you how to create 
a campaign. So let's go into that. Here is Create. If you have experience with advertising in pay-per-click advertising, you will recognize this approach. Google Ads has it as well. It is what we call guided campaign creation. Yeah, so when you start your Facebook ads and when you start your Google ads, you can select, do you want an awareness campaign? Do you want a traffic, engagement, leads, promote your apps or a sales campaign? Yeah, and basically want the, the campaign objective that you select will set a number of the settings, yeah, sort of specifically for that campaign objective. So it makes it easier yeah, to align it with your business goals and the whole setup will be done easier. Yeah, so here you see an awareness objective. So that is too good for reach, for brand awareness, for video views. Yes, yeah, so it's showing the ad to, the, to as many people as possible who are likely to remember them. Traffic is to send people to a destination, like your website. This is really good to get link clicks, to get views on a landing page, or get people, get into conversations with people on Messenger or WhatsApp. Engagement ads is get more messages, videos, views, post engagements. It's good for Instagram, for messaging apps, good for video views, engagement on posts. Lead ads are collect leads for your business or brand. They're good for instant forms on Messenger, good for conversions and to get calls. Here is to promote your apps like in app installs, app events and here is sales. That is for your catalog sales for instance. Yeah, we're going to do a simple one. I'm going to set up a traffic. I want to drive people to a landing page. Yeah, so here I'm going to click on traffic. Yeah, and I'm going to click continue. So now I'm going into the campaign settings. So here you see the three structures again. The new traffic campaign, new traffic ad set, new traffic ads that I'm going to use. Okay, so here is my traffic campaign. I'm going to create a name, which is, I'm going to stick with new traffic campaign. Am I going to use any ad, is, are there any ad categories? Yeah, so is it about elections? Is it about politics? Is it about employment? About social issues? Yeah, remember a few years ago, there was this scandal when there was Brexit and the Trump elections or the, uh, in 2018, I believe it was. There was a lot of data being sold by this Cambridge Analytica that they data they took from Facebook and they sold that to the campaign teams of the US election and of the Brexit. Yeah, that had a big impact on privacy on Facebook and on um, advertising for, for elections and politics. So and now Facebook has set some extra sort of security guidelines for specific ad categories. Now, what are the campaign details? Here you see by default it is set as an auction. Pay-per-click works on an auction base. And this is not a pay-per-click course, but basically it means you will do a bit on your ad, how much you're prepared to pay for a click, yep, and that will then go into an auction. And that will determine the position of your ad. We want to get more traffic. <clears throat> do you want to do A-B testing? Yes, and we want Facebook to do that. Yeah, or you switch that off. And what is your budget? Do you want to create, distribute your budget across ad sets? Yeah, if you want to do that, you can switch that on and then you have your campaign budget. So we're going to set a daily budget of £20. Yes, yeah, so go back to the advanced setting. Yeah, and then what is your campaign bid strategy? I just want the highest volume. And there's more options. You can schedule your ads, so you can set it at specific times. My advice is to run the ads all the time. Yeah, particularly in the learning phase. When Facebook launches your campaign, it goes into learning mode. And then Facebook will see by itself when your audience will... Um, uh, 
will, um, will respond and they will adjust the ad scheduling accordingly. So there is your traffic campaign uh, details. Then we're going to your traffic ad set. Where do you want to drive your traffic? To your website, to an app, to Messenger. We want to drive it to the website. Now, dynamic creative is an important one. Yeah, do you want, to, uh, want Facebook to create your ads or do you want to do it yourself? When you want Facebook to do it, you provide creative elements like images and headlines and then Facebook will automatically generate the best ads for you. Yeah, so I kind of like that. Yeah, so I always switch that on on. Here you see the schedule. When do you want to start? Yeah, so do you want to send an end as well? So that would be then, let's say, November the 22nd. And then here is some more options. You can set ad spend limits. And here is where the real meaty sort of stuff happens in Facebook advertising. This is where you can select your audience. You can save specific audiences in the audience manager. Yeah, so you can have a number of audiences. If you have an office in one country or another country, you can just here select, select the audience for that particular country. Or you can just create a new audience. Okay, so you can exclude audiences, you can set the location, you can set the age, location, let's look at that, if I click here on edit, people living in or recently in this location, people living, people recently, people traveling in this location, so this is really powerful if you want to target people who are visiting a, uh, an, an event like a football match or what have you. And you can include, and this is where you can search location. You can in search by city, let's say London. Yeah, so London, England, or I can say, let's do, for instance, Reading in England. Yeah, and I can even say, uh, give me, yeah, so I can search location, give me uh, RG7, I can do by postcode. Yeah, so I can actually people doing in the Reading area by postcode. And I really like this. So if I say, for instance, RG76, yeah, so here you can see how you can target a specific area. Yeah, and this is particularly for your local marketing is very important. Yep, so that is the, uh, the local targeting is really good. So you can, and then by the way, here you see your estimated audience size. And when your audience gets bigger, you see estimated daily results as well. And then you can do more. You can search by, um, where was this? You can search by detailed targeting, by demographics, by interests and behaviors. Yeah, so if I want to people who like Reading Football Club. Yeah, so here is the Reading FC soccer team. Yeah, so here are, I can now send an ad targeting specifically people in that particular low area who like, and we have the UK as well. Yeah, so uh, in Reading and that particular area who like football, who like Reading Football Club. Yeah, or I can um, other, add other areas as well. There's also the suggestions. If people like Reading, they may also like these type of things. Neymar, soccer, or maybe they like Manchester United. Yeah, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. The whole segmentation in Facebook advertising and the targeting is extremely powerful. Okay, here are your placements for your Facebook ads. Best is to let Facebook decide where to place your ads, but to show you where your ads can be shown on Facebook, if you click on the manual placements, you see here, they can show on Facebook, they can show on Instagram, on Messenger, and on the audience network. Now, what is the audience network? Google has that as well. Yeah, in the display ads, which are 
ads that show on millions of websites that Facebook has an agree or that Google or in this case Facebook has an agreement with. So it shows your Facebook ad outside Facebook on millions of websites. Okay, so that's the audience network. Then if you look at the, here's the feeds where your ad can, sh can show. Your ad can show in stories and reels. Your ad can show in stream videos, overlay and post loop ads on reels, on Facebook search, on messaging, in article, apps and sites. So there is tons of places where your ads can show. But the best thing is to let Facebook decide where your ads are going to show. Okay, so these are your ad set settings. So let's now look at the ad. So here you see the Facebook page. And in our case, it is the Riyadh Farasha page. There you go. Yeah, we'll make it, you can opt in for branded content tools. You can look at the ad setup. We can do manual uploads. You can get data from your product catalog. And here you specify what type of ad you want to show. Is it a single image or a video or is it a carousel? Yep, and then here you have your ad creative and your media, and the select images, select videos. And then here you have your primary text, headline, description, your website URL. This is where you can do your URL parameters when you want to track your campaigns. Yeah, here you see the ad preview. The ad preview is off and now it's on. Yeah, but of course I need to select media. So let's see. Find images, so here we're going to say, go to my website and create an image for me. Approve. Yeah, so now it will actually show me some images. Select images. Yeah, so here you see images from my Riyadh. Yeah, that it picks up from my Riyadh or from my uh, website. Here's the website. Yeah, so let's take... Uh, da, da, da. Let's take this image and we'll say continue. <coughs> yeah, so... Select a destination link for your ad. Let me see where we're going to put that one. There you go. Yes, so now because I put in the destination link, you will see how the ad starts building up. But this is the photo that I selected. Yeah, now I'm not going to show you the details of, and I'm not going to use as an example here. I just want you to show you the fields where you can play and create your ads. Yeah, and then you see here in the ad preview, whether you see it in the feeds, there is a mobile preview as well. Yep, so you see here the feeds, you see here the stories and the reels, how they would look on Instagram, the in-stream, yep, and here in the search, in article, and on apps. Yes, so there you have it, that is your traffic ad. So we've now done our campaign, we've done our ad set, we've done our traffic ad, and then basically what you're going to do is you're going to publish your ad. Now, when you're going into publish, yeah, you can then go back to view the details and then you see that the ad is um, done and it is actually in review by Facebook. So if I now go back to my campaigns, yeah, let's close this one. You see here is the new traffic ad. Yeah, and you see here it's processing. And then here you see immediately the details 
that you can get from your campaign. Yeah, so you see the processing, you see the ad set name, the bid strategy, the budget, you see attribution setting. So basically attribution is how you track the uh, results of your ads. Um, and then you see here the results in number of link clicks, how many people reached, how many impressions, what is the cost per result, what is the quality ranking, the engagement ranking, the conversion ranking. The higher these rankings, the better Facebook considers your ads and the more and the better the positions for your ads. Here you see your amount spent and here you see the end date of the campaign. Yes, so that is how you set up your Facebook ads as a kind of introduction to the Facebook advertising. Yes, yeah, so if I now go back to all my campaigns, campaigns, yes, yeah, so you see here, let me see if I have some, no, you see there's no, none of these ads actually run or did run in the past, yes, yeah, so I can't show you the, the results, but we'll go into more details at a later, um, at the later session. On, uh, on Facebook advertising. For now, this is, I think, the best overview I can give you. Yeah, and um, if you wanna get more than details, then we'll go in a more in-depth session of uh, the Facebook advertising. Okay, now that it's all clear, let's look at the do's and don'ts of Facebook advertising. What should you do and what shouldn't you do with your ads? So there are various do's. The first of all, make sure you continuously test your ads. And the good thing is that Facebook will do this for you. Yeah, you can tell Facebook, please test my ads. You can give Facebook a collection of creative materials, a collection of headlines, yeah, and it will actually mix and match those headlines and it will use the ones that will give the best, um, the best conversions. So it's very important that you continuously look yeah, at your performance and see if minor changes to your ads will lead to a better performance. Second, make sure that your images and that your videos are engaging. Remember, there is no intent in Facebook advertising. You have to be very creative to stand out from the crowd. And you can only do that by making your ads engagement, or then by making your ads engaging in images and videos. So the, not only the images or the videos, but it's also the messaging that you use. Use a message that will stay with your audience. Yeah, so it's the combination of the visuals and the key message of your ad that will make people stop. If by looking in a split second at your ad, yeah, they get it, then they will stop and they will click on the call to action. So make sure you use a message that is powerful and effective. Also, keep it simple. When we say KISS, keep it simple and stupid. Make sure that people easily understand the message that you're trying to convey with your ad. Don't make it too complicated. Don't use complicated visuals. Don't use complicated messages. Keep it simple. And make sure that you reach the right audience. Yeah, Facebook's biggest benefit is the targeting. You can target micro on micro level, targeting people in very specific areas. Yeah, so that is the do's and of course there are don'ts as well. So the first thing is be sensible with your budget. Don't spend your whole budget on one single campaign. Yeah, so start small and basically grow your budget based on the results that you're getting. Yeah, if you have to use visuals and messages that are um, appealing, then of course, don't make sure that you put 
too much information in the ads. Again, keep your ads simple. Don't clutter them with too much text and too many visuals. Make sure that you proofread your ads. Don't have typos in your ads. There's not a lot of text in your ads, so please make sure that you double check the quality of the ads when it comes to the language and the, um, uh, the grammar. Yeah, so don't forget to proofread your ads. Be sensible in the activity level that you have on your Facebook page. Yeah, up until a few years ago, it was it was actually promoted by Facebook to do as many posts as you think are relevant for your business. People did four or five posts a day. Nowadays, it is not about the quantity, it is about the quality. So don't do too many posts on your Facebook page. Be sensible, think from a customer perspective. Also when it comes to your ads. Yeah, so too many ads or sh showing the same ad to the same people all the time yeah, may have an adverse result. And then finally, make sure that your image relates to your product. So don't put up an image that doesn't relate to the advertised product. Hey there learner, Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Now let's get started. First off, let's have a look at an introduction to Facebook. Facebook was first launched in February 2004 and was initially known as the Facebook. In 2005, it removed the from its name and it has now become the Facebook we all know today. It is now the world's most popular social media and social networking service. Next, let's have a look at Instagram. It was launched in 2010 for iOS and then in 2012 for Android by Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger. Instagram has now evolved to become one of the fastest growing social media platforms in the world. In April 2012, thanks to its popularity, it was acquired by Facebook for approximately $1 billion in cash and stock. Now let's compare some stats between Facebook and Instagram. First, let's have a look at the worldwide stats. First off, Facebook. Like I mentioned earlier, Facebook is the largest social media platform in the world. Reaching almost 60.6% .6 of the internet, it has 2.5 billion monthly active users and approximately 1.6 billion active users. In fact, as of Jan 2020, the US has approximately 190 million and India has approximately 280 million Facebook users, an indication of a market that's still ripe for the picking. Now let's have a look at Instagram. Instagram, although having released significantly later, earns its title of the fastest growing social media platform with 1 billion monthly active users and 500 million daily users. In the United States, there are approximately 120 million and India has close to 88 million Instagram users. Next up, let's have a look at the next statistic, age group of the user base. First off, Facebook. Although there's a general opinion among the younger population that Facebook isn't hip or isn't used all that much anymore, this statistic has something different to say. Turns out more than 65% of Facebook users are between the ages of 25 and 34. For Instagram, it's no surprise that 71% of the user base are under the age of 35. Next, let's compare the usage time of both these platforms. Let's take Facebook first. In the United States, users spend approximately one hour on Facebook every day. In India, users spend an average of three hours a day on Facebook. Shockingly high numbers for a platform that's assumed to be dead, isn't it? On the other hand, in the United States, users spend 23 minutes on average on Instagram. In India, users spend approximately 45 minutes. Now for the most important stat, marketing. For Facebook, 86% of marketers use it for advertising. Instagram is used by 71% of businesses for their marketing requirements. Now let's have a look at some industries that can work well on both these platforms. 
If you do belong to any of these industries, if you're not taking advantage of these platforms, you're missing out. So let's have a look at some industries that can capitalize on Facebook. Food and beverage companies, news and media, e-commerce, automobile, and packaged goods. Next time you're on Facebook, take a closer look at your feed. There's a good chance you'll see most of these industries' posts on it. Next up, Instagram. We have industries like fashion, athleisure, cosmetics, automobiles, and food and beverages. I can guarantee that if you take a closer look, you can find all these industries advertising on Instagram. Now let's take a closer look at how Facebook can help with marketing. First off, let's have a look at Facebook business pages. Now these are basically platforms where you can create an online presence for your organization for free. Moreover, they've got some great advantages to offer you as well. First off, your business page can keep your customers or potential customers informed. It can be about a new product launch, a webinar, a live broadcast, a new store opening, anything. Whatever it is, it can go on your Facebook business page. It connects people with your products and services. With your page, you get greater visibility, letting people know about the products and services that you offer. You can offer customer service as well. In fact, according to American Express, 90% of users use customer service as a deciding factor for whether or not they continue to do business with an organization. So customer service is pretty important. Like I mentioned earlier, your business page provides a place where you can offer your followers offers and other advantages. And finally, the page lets you build a community, a highly targeted community that has a higher possibility of buying your products and services. Next, we have Facebook groups. With Facebook groups, you can build a community of like individuals. Some of the advantages that come with this are, it provides a highly targeted audience. I mentioned earlier that business pages provide you with a highly targeted audience. Groups take that to the next level. It enables everyone to learn from one another. With a large community, there's a good chance that some members know things that others don't. Your group will enable them to communicate with each other and learn these new things. You also get honest feedback. Your customers, who are also likely part of the group, will be able to give their feedback on how they liked your product and perhaps even give you tips on how to improve. Now, since your group is filled with a community that's highly interested in your brand, you can also increase engagement in an organic manner. And as an extension of the previous point, you also get more leads and conversions. Next, Facebook has events. With Facebook events, your organization will be able to mobilize your brand and enable online consumer marketing, basically meaning that you have a platform for letting people know about important announcements, not to mention there's also the opportunity to get some free advertising done. Events also help you increase brand awareness. Most people get to know about your brand by attending the event or just seeing the promotion for it. Now let's have a look at Facebook stories for groups and pages. A feature that is available for both groups and pages, it provides you the ability to appropriately represent your brand or business directly from your mobile device or desktop. Now, some of its advantages are that it helps you engage with your audience with stuff other than the usuals, like articles, videos, and other similar posts. This way, you can also vary the kind of content that you post. Moreover, stories can help you humanize your brand. Rather than seeming like you're pandering to your audience or seeing them only as potential leads or customers, stories help your brand show that you're genuinely interested in your audience. You can also reach your appropriate audience with greater frequency. Next, Facebook has Facebook Messenger. With Messenger, you can connect and interact with your audience at a personal level. In the last few years, Messenger has proved itself to be a great marketing tool. It helps acquire more customers. Now, people are more loyal to a brand that genuinely cares about them. And by directly interacting with them through Messenger, their loyalty towards you is certainly set to improve. And as an extension of the previous point, you also get a greater number of transactions. And even if a customer doesn't give you a transaction, 
at least you're increasing your brand awareness. Then we have Facebook Live. Facebook Live gives you a platform to interact with your audience in real time. It can be used to diversify your content, providing your audience with something different from what they've received from your brand initially. Live can also be used to show what happens behind the scenes in your organization, further helping humanize your brand. And finally, you can also provide instant questions and answers to your audience, increasing engagement with them. Next, we have the Facebook Shop. The Facebook Shop is a business page tab application that enables your customers to purchase your products directly from your store. It also has the following advantages. Firstly, you can use the shop to drive new sales. You can give the customers who are on the fence about your product a small push by engaging them. And how can you do that? With deals and promotions. You can also reward advocates of your brand with special benefits to be availed from your store. And finally, you can build brand awareness and recognition. Now let's have a look at Facebook ads. Facebook ads help spread product or brand awareness in the newsfeed of a specific targeted audience on Facebook. Now some of the advantages of Facebook ads are that they help increase brand awareness, they enable you to advertise your products and services to the appropriate audience, and it provides you with greater reach while making you spend lesser amounts of money. It also helps you re-advertise or retarget your products to an existing audience. And finally, it helps increase revenue, sales and leads. If you guys are interested in learning about Facebook ads, you can check out our Facebook ads video. I'll add it in the live chat, so you can check it out if you're interested. Now let's have a look at the final feature Facebook offers to help you with marketing. Facebook Insights I'm sure all of you have heard about Google Analytics. Let's just say this is Facebook's version of that. With Insights, you get information that can help you refine your brand strategy by tracking and measuring results. It can help you determine reach and engagement, actions, people who are viewing your posts, when your fans are online, the type of posts that are working for you, and much, much more. That brings us to the end of the ways Facebook helps you with marketing. Now, let's move on to Instagram. First off, we have Instagram business accounts. Instagram business accounts enable brands to be recognized as businesses. Now, it also has the following benefits to offer. It's only with a business account that you can get Instagram insights. We'll talk about insights in a little more detail in a little bit. You can also add a contact button on your profile, enabling users to connect with you directly. You can also specify what kind of service you offer by adding what industry you belong to in your bio. And finally, you also have the ability to add links to your Instagram stories. Now, I'm sure you've all seen the see more option in your stories. So now you know how that shows up. Now, if you guys are interested in finding out how you can increase followers on Instagram, you can check out our video on the same topic of the same name. I'll add the link in the live chat. Next, let's talk about Instagram stories. With Instagram stories, you have the ability to grow engagement, build brand awareness and to drive sales. You can also use stories to provide recent updates about your brand. Now, some of the advantages of Instagram stories are that they help businesses grow their audience and can enable them to engage with their audience regularly. With stories, you can also drive traffic to other websites like your company's website. It can also help diversify your content, setting it apart from the usual videos and photos. Next up, let's talk about Instagram DMs or direct messages. DMs help you grow your business by interacting with customers at a personal level. It can also help build connections with your users by building a personal connection with your followers, their loyalty towards your brand is improved. Not only that, it helps you make or grow your connections within the industry. And as an extension of the last few points, this leads to easier lead generation and increased sales. Next up, we have IGTV. Now, IGTV is a platform that's gotten really famous recently. It enables your brand to get closer to its audience and enables it to be discovered by new people. Other benefits include greater visibility of your products and services, having the ability to educate and entertain your audience, improved engagement, and greater chances of conversions. 
Finally, it also helps build a community of a highly targeted audience. Next, we have Instagram Live. Instagram Live enables you to communicate with your audience in real time, further improving your discoverability and strengthening your connection with the audience. Moreover, it provides a lot of visibility. Your followers are immediately notified when you go on a live stream. And finally, it helps you interact with your audience in real time. This helps further humanize your brand. Next, we have Instagram ads. Instagram ads provides you with control over advertisements. You decide how they appear and who sees them. Like Facebook, Instagram has a number of different ad types to offer. They are photo ads, video ads, carousel ads, slideshow ads, and stories ads. Next up, Instagram offers an Instagram shop. The shop helps you incorporate your product catalog with your Instagram profile. At some points, even enabling users to access the shop directly from an image showing the same product. One of the major advantages of the Instagram shop is that it provides easy product discoverability. And since it provides visual marketing, it also leads to more sales. And finally, Instagram Insights. Instagram's answer to Facebook Insights and Google Analytics. Insights is an analytical tool that provides data on follower demographics, their actions, and your brand content. It helps determine engagement, impressions and reach, best and worst performing content, profile visits, website clicks, and much more. And there you go, that's every way Facebook and Instagram can help you with marketing. Now we've laid out the facts for you. Keep in mind your requirements and make a wise choice. Hey there learner, Simply Learn brings you postgraduate program in digital marketing created in collaboration with Purdue University and Meta Blueprint. To learn more about this course, you can find the course link in the description box below. Now, before we get into the tips and tricks, let's take a refresher and see what exactly is social media marketing. Social media marketing is one of the most commonly used and lucrative forms of digital marketing. It's a methodology that has brands creating and sharing content on social media. Now, if you've ever been on any form of social media, be it LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram, you've promptly been exposed to some form of social media marketing. Remember that Burger King video advertising their new Whopper? or about a marketing tool that can help you visualize your team's workload better than any other in the market right now? One of these are just some of the many ways that you've been marketed to. And the objective when it comes to social media marketing is to achieve the brand's marketing and branding goals. Now, this could be increased engagement, more clicks, conversions, and so on. So how do they do it? With text and image updates, videos, or any other form of content, they can attract the user's attention and can drive engagement from them. Now, alongside publishing quality content, it also involves analyzing your data and running social media advertisements. Now, some of the more popular social media platforms right now are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. Next, let's talk about some of the advantages of social media marketing. First off, social media marketing provides great brand awareness. Now, with the help of interactions with people on social media, brands are able to build up their reputation as businesses, and with each interaction, each post, each share, the brand is exposed to a larger network of potential customers who might be interested in the products or services offered. Next, it gives you more traffic to your website. Marketing your products or services on social media will also attract customers to your website outside of your usual customer base. Next, it improves your brand's search engine rankings. Now, 
Although this isn't the direct correlation, social media marketing does have a part to play, and it comes in helping your page rank higher up in the search engine rankings. Now, if you start posting high-quality content, people will start liking and sharing it. And this will, in turn, bring it to the attention of influencers within the industry who would be willing to write about your business. And then this gives you backlinks, which, as you know, will help you improve your search engine rankings. Next, it will give you improved conversion rates. And with your brand being much more visible and interactive on social media, every text, image, video, or comment could potentially drive users to your website. Social media also humanizes your brand. Now, this leads to more customers trusting a brand and being more interested in your products and services. And then we have improved customer satisfaction. When your customers interact with your brand on social media, it provides you with an opportunity to show compassion for your customers. Personal messages to customers addressing their concerns will be viewed in a positive light and can go a long way when it comes to humanizing your brand. Social media marketing is also cost-effective. Compared to other forms of digital marketing, social media marketing offers some of the most flexible and relatively low-cost options available. Now, this opens up your budget for more marketing and business expenditures. And if you do get into paid advertising, a good strategy will net you a great return on your investment. And finally, it will help you become thought leaders. With your high-quality posts communicating with your audience, sharing content, and promoting your authority, you can have your followers look up to you. And this will allow you to become a figure of expertise in your industry. Now let's go into the social media marketing tips and tricks. Number one, set up your goals. Now, what good will your actions do if you don't have a goal in mind? The goal of your marketing strategy may be the driving force behind every decision that you make, and this is exactly why setting up goals is very important. Moreover, your marketing efforts have to align with the goals of the organization. And here are some things that you need to keep in mind while setting up your goals. First of all, your goals need to be quantitative. For example, you need to have 1,000 conversions by the end of the quarter, or 5,000 followers on Instagram by the end of the month, and so on. Number two, you need to stick to a consistent deadline. This gives weight for each of your options. And number three, make sure your goals are SMART. Now, SMART refers to specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Now let's go to number four. Like I mentioned earlier, your goals need to be aligned with the marketing strategy. And alongside these goals, there also needs to be the North Star metric. Now, what is the North Star metric? Well, this represents a main goal or a fixed reference point to ensure that your team is on the right course. This North Star metric will also give your team clarity and focus. Now let's have a look at some popular North Stars. There's increased engagement, greater conversion rates, more leads generated, app downloads, and so on. Now let's go to number two, understanding your audience. Social media allows you to interact, engage, and build relationships with your audience. By understanding what they need, want, and desire, you can deliver content in a way that makes your product or service the answer that they're looking for. There are also other ways that you can understand them better. This could be surveys to determine the issues that bother them, the age demographics of their audience, by conversing with them in forums, responding to their comments and blogs and social media, taking up their feedbacks of suggestions into consideration and acting on them, and so on. Now, here's an example of different channels and the audiences that use them. Now, here, well, we've taken a personal example. Here is Simply Learn. Now, Simply Learn's audience is predominantly working professionals and graduates. Unacademy has high school graduates, and Baiju App has high school students as users. Now, let's go to number three, 
determining the right social media platform. Now, when performing social media marketing, choosing the right platform is really important. When selecting them, you need to ask questions like why you're using that particular platform, who you will reach with this platform, what content could work best on the platform, and is there any content that was unique to that platform? Like, for example, YouTube, and then there's the video. Answering these questions will help you zero in on a platform for you. Now, while there are several platforms available for you to choose from, let me tell you about some of the major ones. There's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Now, let's talk about the purpose of each of these platforms. LinkedIn is a professional network that's best suited for B2B audiences. For Facebook, well, just about everyone has an account on it. Content that is related to news or entertainment usually finds success on Facebook. And then we have Instagram. Visual content works best on Instagram. Now, although it works well for static images and short-form video, it doesn't really drive a lot of traffic to your website. And then finally, we have Pinterest. Pinterest is also limited to static images. However, it's highly effective at driving traffic to your blog. Now let's go to number four, setting up a social media calendar. A social media calendar demands the message you want to convey to your audience. It also consists of information regarding the different kinds of content that will go up on the social media platform. Let's have a look at some of the most popular types of posts on social media. First off, we have competitions. Now, I'm sure all of you have seen posts like tag a friend who does this or comment or like to win something and stuff like that. Competitions like these provide great opportunities for engagement with the audience, and they can be used to increase your followers to share your content. It could also be for them to create their own content along with the predefined hashtag. And competitions help grow your presence on social media. Then we have polls and surveys. Polls can help you if you need a collection that also encourages followers to take action and interact. Polls and surveys also provide opportunities through which you can learn from customers to understand what they like about the product or service or what they don't and to receive their feedback. And then we have videos and live streams. Although we'll be covering this in a little more detail further on, visual storytelling, along with videos and live streams, goes a long way to drive engagement among your audience. These will help get your followers' attention, increase trust and credibility, and have a high response rate and has so much more to offer. Live stream, with its live nature, and having a human face alongside your business humanizes your brand and, by extension, helps increase customer loyalty and trust. And then there is infographics, articles, and images. So social media calendars are successful because of their ability to increase collaboration within the team, help understand what works and what doesn't, and in distributing resources in an effective manner. Next up, we have number five, using social media marketing tools. Social media marketing tools align to the goals of your organization. With it, you can create high-quality content, attract new potential customers, and drive engagement. And it also helps you with the planning process. You can plan, create, and schedule posts on your social calendar. Now, some of the more popular social media tools include Buffer, Hootsuite, BuzzSumo, IFTTT, and much more. Now, these tools also help with generating leads, creating email lists, finding a relevant audience to show your content, creating buyer personas, providing you insights on what works and what doesn't, and giving you templates for different kinds of posts. Now for number six, visual storytelling. Visual storytelling involves passing out a lot of information in the simplest of forms visually. Using pictures and videos, your followers are able to grasp the message quickly and remember it for a long time afterwards. Visual storytelling is also not limited by language barriers. 
and this helps it become interesting and entertaining to anyone watching. It can also help your audience stay interested and engaged, grab the attention of potential clients, and so much more. But it also has some other advantages. It helps you build a bond with your audience. Visual storytelling connects with your audience. Methods like live streaming help humanize your brand and help grow customer loyalty and trust. It has the audience quickly grasp the intended message thanks to its simple nature. And finally, most importantly, content like images and videos are what go viral. With visual storytelling, you increase the chance for your content to be seen by more potential customers. So have a look at some of our videos. So here's what is machine learning, data science in five minutes, and AI in five minutes. Now these are some of our most viewed videos on our channel, and now you know why, visual storytelling. If you guys are interested in watching these videos, you can check them out on our channel homepage. And we also have similar videos on blockchain, DevOps, and Six Sigma. But now back to the list. Let's go to number seven paying for advertising. This is a method that helps you find the target and reach your audience with ease. It can greatly help with achieving your organization's marketing goal. And this can help you improve your reach and improve your brand's visibility. It's pay-per-click model and shows cost-effectiveness by providing great results and return on investment. It also helps improve targeting by letting you control who sees your ad. You get to choose from a number of different factors like interests, hobbies, personality types, alongside the basic user demographics like age, location, gender, and so on. Now, since most social media platforms have native analytics, you also get to assess and define the performance of your ad campaigns. Now, as great as it sounds, there are certain pitfalls that come along with peer advertising. First of all, your audience could get exposed to your post too many times and tune out your content, disregarding it in the process. Second, it could get really expensive for small businesses or startups to manage a campaign to its maximum effectiveness. Third, people could pass off your content as irrelevant or unimportant. You also have to deal with a lot of competition. Smaller companies with lesser budgets have more of an uphill battle to deal with than better funded organizations. Next, we have number eight, newsjacking. Newsjacking is a method that involves using current events to promote your own brand's products and services. Now, it's a popular method that's used to improve brand awareness. Newsjacking uses the popularity of current events and drives it to your brand. It helps shine a spotlight on your products. And it also helps you show off that you are up to date with current events in the industry and that your product is relevant. And by extension, it also improves engagement and website traffic. Now for number nine, A-B testing. A-B testing is a popular method for comparing copies, creatives, and CTAs, or call to actions, of the posts that you put on social media. Now, since audiences would react differently depending on the content, A-B testing helps determine which of the variants your audience engaged with the most. A-B testing can also be performed on variations of location, age, gender, education, your audience interests, and so on. And next up, number 10, community and influences. Joining communities helps your brand link up with like-minded people and other companies belonging to your niche. It'll also help you establish your brand as an authority within the industry. Actively participating in these communities can help create your own audience of potential brand advocates to group up with. And on the other hand, Partnering up with influencers helps promote your products or services to a brand new audience. It helps provide an additional layer of authenticity in YouTube, which is also a social media platform if you didn't know. Here are some very, very popular influencers. 
we have Marcus Brownlee, Unbox Therapy, Mr. Who's the Boss, and Linus Tech Tips, each of them with more than 4 million subscribers. And finally, we're at number 11, Measuring and Analyzing Results. Accurately tracking and measuring your marketing efforts are an important part of the process. It ensures that you're making the most out of your campaigns. Now, it's really important that you find key metrics that are crucial for your brand. And these metrics can be tracked weekly, monthly, or on a quarterly basis. And based on these results, appropriate actions can be taken. So on Facebook, you could look out for reach and engagement. On Twitter, you could look out for impressions. Clicks and impressions and interactions on LinkedIn, and likes, comments, and mentions on Instagram, and engagements and impressions on Pinterest. Some of the most popular tools used for this purpose are Sprout Social, Buffer, Hootsuite, Google Analytics, and so on. And there you go. That's our list. Here's your reminder to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell icon to stay updated on tutorials, lab sessions, and the latest technologies. And this was all for today's social media marketing bootcamp. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share, and subscribe. If you have any question, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.